It is on. Welcome to the Dwarven Axe Q2 2022 painting competition. My mic works. Hey, it's good news. All right. It's half the half the battle. So hey. we're up there. All right. That's 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 us. Hi. Very unflattering <laughs> angle. I yeah, love well. it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's gotta happen sometime, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're the you're the dwarf of the group. That's yeah, that's there. what we got. The fat little dwarf in the corner. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the, like I said, the the Q2. Um, this year, we're, or this this quarter, we've got, uh, what was it, 32 entries? Yeah. 32 entries. Look at that. Uh, which is awesome. We've got uh, uh, four amateur and one young blood. Nice. That we're going to start out with. So yeah. uh, just to kind of give everyone the lay of the land and the uh, how we're going to do this here, um, or at least the plan. Never goes according to plan. Yeah, if you lose, we have to kill you. Yeah, that's the new that's, rule. That's Sorry, we just goes. did it last minute. Yeah. Figured Oof. everybody be cool with it. Yeah, if you sign in blood, I apologize. <laughs> um, it's binding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, to start out with, we're going to do young bloods and amateur, and that those categories, the young bloods and amateur, will get feedback, critiques. Um, you know, the the kind of, hey, we want to try and help out, make sure that you know. Um, uh, where your next steps are and what you can do to try and. Uh, try and better yourself and better your painting. Um, but uh, unlike with the professional, we're not going to be as, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say harsh, but we're... Some we're, visceral scathing. Yeah. Uh, for the professional, it's it's much more, um, we're going to tell you, you know, how you can be better, but it's also going to be a lot more critique-based. It's going to be, you're going to start at 100 and, and for points kind of thing, if you want to visualize it, and then you're going to get docked 
points based on what you know what's wrong with the model. We're going to be looking all over. In, in the in the cases of amateur, we're going to be giving the same critiques, uh, but we won't be as I guess as harsh yeah. as as critique like because this is amateur. This is this is for fun. This is this is you're trying to better your uh, your painting skill and your ability. So uh, we want to recognize that and uh, and give you the best feedback we possibly can. So um, and uh, to be honest, I mean these amateur entries they look really good oh yeah too. yeah so. don't don't get us wrong like they all look really solid uh so there's not one in there that i'm like ah, you know mm -hmm. they look so great they look good uh do we want to start out with our only young blood yeah yeah let's kick it off with the young blood and go from there uh if you're tuning in live uh feel free to <laughs> feel free to uh uh toss us a chat we're trying to trying to you know chat as much as possible here Oh man, look at that. Look at that. And we know that a lot of people are going to be joining us after the stream. Yeah. When we're going to be putting this on the Forges YouTube as well. So uh, after everything's said and done, we'll, when it's done recording, we'll put it up uh, on the YouTubes. Yeah, it'll be on the YouTubes. Uh, hi, Chalu hi Ch Chalula. I don't know. I am terrible with names. I apologize. I butcher them. He can't uh, read funny. either. So I can't read either. Right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a college education for you. Um, Troy, hey, uh, it's uh oh, it's Luna. Hey, Luna. Uh, oh, hi, Luna. Troy, hey, hey, you guys. Uh, so we're gonna start out with the the young bloods and and go from there. So we got one young blood from Simon, uh, which is uh, Swarm Lord, and uh, and he's a beefy character. He hits hits like a truck full of trains full of trucks. It's like a, it's a, a more scary Goro. Yeah. Um, so right off the bat, you know, I mean, we're coming, coming swinging. The white is awesome. And I, I don't know how old Simon is, but he's, he's doing a good job. I know we reviewed some of his work before and it was, it was awesome. And it, this has been a huge step up and you can, you can really tell that he's put more time into it. Um, like right off the bat, having a good tabletop view of the, um, just sitting back. And if you're playing this on a table, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be it at all. Disappointed yeah. to see that across from me. It looks like, awesome. Yeah, it looks awesome. His his basing is excellent. Uh, a good cork base never goes wrong. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we've seen Simon now three times. I think it is three yeah. different competitions, and they yeah. and progressively get better and better. Oh yeah. I, I mean, and white. Yeah. I'm guessing that's the monument hobby's white. Yeah. White's Pro always Pro? a white's always a really difficult color to paint because it it just it's a pain to make look good. Yeah. And and he's definitely working it with like. Uh, a dry brush and a stipple, which which helps. Um, it helps white out a lot because you can kind of build up from a from a darker tone over to a, a brighter white, and you know uh, smoothness that you'd get from that comes with time. Troy said, "Yep, Monument Hobby's white." Uh, heck it. yeah, that you stuffs always, that stuff's gold. You can always it's, tell the Pro Curl white. So good. Yeah. It, the The cool thing with Pro Curl white over any other white is it doesn't get chalky. It looks great. It, it's super smooth. It goes through an airbrush super well, and it and it thins out nicely, which is hard to hard to argue with. Troy said that he did it 100 percent himself too. Nice. Yeah. Man, way to go, Simon. This thing's this thing's sick. Yep. Uh, purple's great. If you wanted to really step it up, I'd, I'd say you know adding an extra um, uh, like dry brushing of purple on the back and like solidifying that. The the red does make the purple pop and it yeah. mixes well and that's just that's just that nid uh, paint scheme, but um, adding that extra purple would would help kind of make it. I like the pink in there too because it breaks yeah. it up. Yep, it does. It does. I think yellow would be a too a little too much, but I I'm trying to remember what the uh, the um, uh, craft or not craft world. Wow, uh, brood or hive type this is. So. I forget right off the top of my head what it is, but uh, that's the color scheme, and I love it. Yeah, so, it looks really good. Um, something that you can look out for is around the around the mouth. I noticed um, there's like gaps that you can probably try and fill in a bit, uh, utilizing something like uh, green stuff or um, uh, milliput. Hey, Reaper, um, and uh, like around the face here, it, it does kind of pull away from the model, but that's like the biggest, most egregious point that I would say that mm -hmm. I'm that I'm seeing on it. Uh, otherwise, though, definitely a step up from where he's been. Yeah, so. I would I would say maybe a couple little highlights on the purple. Yeah, yeah. around the 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 tubulars on top, um, yeah. and some of like the the exoskeleton because you did it on the blades and on the head. I'm guessing that's uh, uh, 
more of like a, a blood. Oh, which is, that, yeah, that's a good which point. Is cool. Yeah. Uh, blood for the blood god is always yeah, great blood for, for the that blood god. too. Super Grab, easy. Grabbing like an old brush or like a sponge or something like that and taking some blood for the blood god and like just poking it along the edges of things will help make it pop. Yeah. Um, and doing it in layers. So let, you know, putting a first layer down, letting it dry, doing another layer, it'll it'll look like built up blood. Uh, you don't want to. It, it's better. It is going to sound weird. Less is more with blood. Mm-hmm. If you drench it in blood, all you can see is blood. Uh, if you do it little by little, it'll look great. So, yeah, yeah, man, this looks awesome. This is this is awesome. So, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Simon, for for diving in and uh, and showing us your work, man. This is great. Yeah. So cool. Awesome. Who who do we got next on the on the old on the old list here? Never mind the hands. Hands. Hey, Liam. Thanks for uh, thanks for following us. Might as well go to daddy then right after. Yeah. Yeah, let's get Troy in there. See if we can fit this bad boy on here. Be careful with the base. I think it's I think it's a little loose. Hopefully, uh if this, this thick boy, look at this thing. I gotta, gotta I gotta adjust the camera, I apologize. You're welcome, Simon. Thank you for participating, man. That's you know, it takes a lot of courage to uh, put a piece of art out and have other yeah. people look at it and kind of not necessarily determine if it's good or not, but, you know, give you critique. Well, and give is, you, it's give, hard to take sometimes. Yeah, and give you advice and give you thoughts. And, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll point this out right now at the beginning. Like, you as an artist will always see your worst, the, the worst work that you do, and not everyone will catch it. Um, so This ha- is Necron. Yeah, this is, this is Necron. So, yeah. That's your Silent King, yeah. Yeah, this is the Silent King. Troy. You know how terrifying it is to move that thing around when the, the base is, like, <laughs> right? barely attached? Yeah. It's so crazy. It's a, it's a freaking sweet model. It's so cool. I, I love how just uh, pompous it is, you know? I love the, like, the spirit of the human on the very top. Uh, it's yeah. just, like, that's screaming a... in pain while his soul is being No, no, ripped. that's not a human. What is it? That's a that's a shard of a god. Oh, is it really? That, that they ripped apart because you know Jeez. Necron stuff. <laughs> it's so cool. Looking. It's so cool. Yeah, that's what they do. This they is just, my favorite part about 40k. Is like this. It's you know so I mean? it's so over the top. It's not even the most 40k model. I'd say the it's the so cool. ha, um Helbricht Helbricht model with the dude wiping down the sword as he pulling out of the orc. That oh, that is the yeah. most 40k over the top yeah. model I've ever seen. It's so good. <laughs> Um, right off the bat, I love the uh, the look of the metal. It's it's really well defined and like aged. Uh, so like dry brushing the the brighter metal over the or the brown or the bronze really does make it work. So this this whole uh, scheme that you have here for the metal looks excellent. It, it really does pop, especially on these on these veins here. Um, yeah, uh, I love the blue too. Yeah, the blue like the, this whole palette is really solid. Uh, very Necron. Yeah, very, very Necron. Very, uh, especially the blue is is nice and almost jade like, mm-hmm. stone like, which is really cool. And the different shades of green. Yeah, that's that looks great. I will say that on the back, like on these little nodules back here, and then uh, you know on the side here, it doesn't have the same kind of green hue. That kind of it kind of gets lost, and I don't know if that's just because it's it's a bigger model or these you know these ones are bigger, so you get more it's more noticeable, and these little ones it kind of gets lost in there. Yeah. Um, but pay attention to that in the in the future. You know, you got you, the OSL down on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. This is really cool. Mm-hmm. You can even spread this out a bit more by water you know watering down. I think that's um a tesseract whatever glow effect yeah. stuff what it, that stuff's cool but you can water it down a bit and actually pull it out a bit more too uh if you want to kind of expand that osl look um because light does emanate out quite a quite far uh depending on how bright it is i suppose yeah. but um but i do like that you didn't overdo osl on it mm-hmm. either so i do like how the the, the tips of the pylons here Mm-hmm. are like more silver and yeah. then they get darker and darker. Yep. That's a cool little technique. Yeah, um, I like that. You definitely were like looking at it like, okay, this is where the sun's shining in or this mm-hmm. is where the least amount of dirt's going to go on in yep. time. That yeah, looks good. Or it's been the see. most polished. Yeah. Came through you the definitely. ground first kind of thing. Yeah. Um, with Necron stuff, you can like differentiate too with the with the bronze on more areas to to make it feel a little less. Uh, sometimes Necrons can get lost with their uh, their metallic feel. 
So, yeah, you know, splitting it up a bit. So, yeah. And you did do some, it looks like you painted up on the, the bottom pieces here with some dirt. Mm -hmm. That looks great. Yep. I probably would use like a less paint and more of like a dust effect too. Yep. They have these like dust, like yeah, weathering, powders. And weathering powders and yeah. stuff. Those look always look so good because it's literal powder. So it looks like dirt. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I, that I will critique is, uh, I kind of wish his, and this, this might just be a personal thing. So take it as it is. Um, the, the cloak that he has here, it, it's a, because it's metallic and the rest of it's metallic, it kind of gets lost with it. I agree. Ha having an extra color, even the blue. So you can kind of exemplify yeah. that blue, uh, would go really well. So you're not leaving this palette of color. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can, you can do something else. Uh, but I, I think that that would be really the, the one thing that I'm like, I, I wish that it, it didn't just melt into the rest of the model itself. Um, but that, that's really it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a it's an excellent model. Uh, if this was on the table, it'd be freaking sweet to see yeah. across for me. So yeah. I, I would not, uh, I would take pleasure in shooting at it. Yeah. Um, Some more cork board too. And you got the yep. tufts on there. Yep. The, the tufts win, win yep. events. I yep. mean, you know, we, we discussed that last time in Q1. Thank like, you for painting your rim as well. Yeah, and painting the, the rim is always good. So... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, really exciting to, to see more of this, Troy. Uh, it's awesome. So thank you so much for, for submitting and, and putting in uh, to the amateur category because it, it's awesome. Good job, Troy. All right, let's try not to break this. Yeah, yeah. If the if he breaks it, this is Bert, and he'll uh, he'll commission and fix it. Oh, yeah. That's how it's going to go. I have so much time on my free Yeah, exactly. Right hey, Delamez, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Re Reaper pointed out that uh, uh, his orcs would love he his or her orcs would love to uh, loot that that their uh, silent king. That throne is up for the grabs for orcs. I can definitely see like having a bunch of bunch of bros just uh, with a bunch of uh, machine guns on the side of that thing. That'd be so cool. Yeah, we're gonna do Connors next. Ooh, Connors. All right, one of Connors. I think he's got two. Yep, he's, he's got dead. two in here. In there, yeah. 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 So let's. Get in a little close. See, all right. One of these days we'll have multiple camera angles. Yeah, well, we got two. We're, yeah. we're a step up. We're a step up. All right. So we've got uh, Connors, uh, Black Legion Dreadnought. Right at the top. Excellent work on the decal. Uh, I'm very critical of decal, so you did a really good job there. Yeah. Uh, the crushing skulls underneath is super cool. The basing. This is a really simple base that GW does as well. Uh, which, which is a bummer because it has cool effect, but uh, a ton of different models have it as a as a base. Um, so nice job on making it feel unique. And uh, the the extra work more than just the the paint on this is it really sets it a, on a on a step above. Like the um the the, the top symbol here, the tyranid skull in the front, the skull on the side, um, all of that is really what makes it pop especially like the chain in the back those extra little bits and bobs really set a model apart are you okay is that there's a like, knife yeah there's like crap in the rim of this oh. soda can here i was gonna say it's a pop you just it's got a pop top and you just, <laughs> i just get a little yeah, tiny hole and suck little, it out yeah, it's weird um I, connor my favorite part is you made this model your own yeah you, you yeah destroyed what it was and completely recreated it into something about well, adding the barbed wire on it and you know open up the Citadel skull box and just mm -hmm. like throwing a bunch of cool stuff on there. I love it. I, it's yep. so cool looking. Now what, uh, from the painting aspect, I would say tighten up some of the, some of the metallics on, yep. you know, on the trim. Um, but that just takes time and, and don't be afraid when you have black as a base color to go back with it and, and kind of, um, you know, amateur tight, Luna tight. Yeah. This is amateur still, uh, uh tighten up the, um, tighten up the black and, because the, the, um, the nice thing with black is that it, it kind of acts as an eraser, so you can take back a lot of those, tr a lot of that trim, and make it look really sharp. When even if you don't have a steady hand, that can be a really easy way to just uh, because you can go back and forth, especially with metallics. Um, adding some extra color in there would be good. Uh, you know, you have like um, little parchment on the legs, and uh, and adding some extra little. Uh, uh, some extra color in there might help as well um, because it can get lost with just being silver, black, yep. and then gold. Same with on the ammo too in mm -hmm. the gun. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I did talk to Connor about this, and he com- he took a tool and he erased all the sigils that were on it. And oh, created okay. His own. Yeah, yeah. That that's cool. Yeah, because it's it's a it's a, a blood angel's yep. dreadnought because yep. that the talon claws are specifically uh, uh, blood angels. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Um, so, and then he used the base from the kit. Um, I like to see. I mean, personally, I just like to see homemade bases yeah. for a, a competition. Um, I talked to him about it. I mean, it's a cool base, yeah. uh, but, you know, it's a pre-made base. Yeah, and anything you can do to modify it, because, you know, that that's the same, like I said originally, that, that's the same one that comes with, like, a, a Wraith, uh, Wraith Lord and things like that yeah. is that base, which is cool. Yeah. It gives some extra flavor, but, you know, you did add to it to make it your own. Yeah. You can, you can further add to it, uh, so don't be afraid to expand on the bases, because sometimes bases are, um, are their own kind of... Uh, they're half the model. Yeah, they're part of it. They're, you know, putting them in a scene is definitely what you want to do. Even if it is just a, a dusty scene or, you know, whatnot uh, like that, you, you, you want to add to that effect uh, so that you can put the model in the place that you want it to be. Yeah. Um, and and a, a well-done base will exemplify a model, um, uh, even, even a, um, you know, uh, a low grade or a medium grade kind of model. So yep. it doesn't have to be this glorious looking model to, to really exemplify a base. A base can really pull it up. So, well, and it, you know, you do all this custom work on the model itself. Be cool to see custom work on the base too. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. But it looks great. Yeah. I mean, the base looks awesome. And if you're going to use a pre made base, you got to go kind of above and beyond. Yeah. And really go crazy with it. Maybe use some like, I don't know, resins and stuff like mm-hmm. that and kind of make it, you know, a little bit nuts. Some tufts, some, you know. Tufts and all that. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Some extra tufts. <laughs> some extra. Gotta tufts. have some tufts in there. But yeah. Yeah. I think this is good. So cool. awesome, Connor. Good job, man. Yeah. Nice. Thank and you. I know Connor's got another. Entry yeah, he here, does. So. Yeah, it should be sweet. Should be good times. All right. Next we have Dan. Daniel. Daniel. Dan's coming up. That, yeah, that falls off. <laughs> it, it shocked me too. So. This dragon. This dragon's so cool. You want here? Uh, bam. Look at that. A dragon. Adult Maybe blue next dragon. Time I'll write for Dan, there. <laughs> Dan I'll, I'll fill out your card next time. Oof. Bummer. It's, it's all right. It's just, uh, you had Tony on there or something, Johnny. <laughs> Turned into an adult <laughs> blue dragon. Scribble. <laughs> <laughs> scribble. This is Scribble Adult, the Blue Dragon. Oh, yeah. Back yeah, yeah that's probably, I'm looking at it like, you know, this looks sweet. <laughs> I know, right? Who the hell's running the camera? All right. Um, yeah, who's our camera guy? Trent, get back here. <laughs> it looks it looks great. This is um, cool, man. The, 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 I love the colors and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm guessing you use maybe like a contrast or something on the the clear like lightning bolts coming out of its mouth mm-hmm. or an ink. Yeah, yeah. Something along those lines. Um, I like all of it. The, the one thing that I would probably pick apart here is the same color from the horns and the wings, like the, the leathery wings. And mm-hmm. then you have the same, like the bone horns and all that stuff. Probably would have switched colors for that and maybe did a little bit more, uh, detail in the wings. Yeah. There, there's, uh, you know, I don't. I don't know how far you want us to kind of pick it up, pick it apart. Um, there's a lot of streaks in the wings. Yeah. Um, I probably would have watered my paints down a little bit more. I would say that's probably from the wash. And yeah. Then like a like a dry brush on top of it that that helps kind of, you know, give it some depth. But yeah. that's where the streakiness comes from. Um, but, I mean, overall, it. I, I would agree the. You know the the claws uh, are different from the wings, but they're not, they're different also from the the spikes on the back and then the, and maybe you the just horn. washed yeah both in the same yeah. you know Reichlands or something like that. I like the I, I like the um, the color palette though having the tail a different color than yeah. the um yep the darker the, blue yeah the darker blue uh, and having the purple on the on the spikes on the back wouldn't be a bad plan either, uh, especially being that you did it it just rolled by and with this. The rotation, it's like you kind of miss some things. Um, it looks like you washed part of it right there, yeah, but little parts of it, not oh, all of it, right on there. The, on the back of the knee here, 
is yeah. some of the same kind of material that the that the back's made of. Yeah. So or maybe but, it dripped down or something. Yeah. But it, it it looks cool. Like it's just the same purple under 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 the knee yeah. as like the tail. But yeah. I I think it looks cool. Yeah. I and mean, it's definitely it a step in the right direction for Absolutely. it. Uh, base the base is lacking a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. You could have added a little bit. Maybe a tuft in there would have been nice. Just oh. one. Uh, apparently, it's Army Painted uh, Voltatic Blue Sands Primer on the plastic of the Lightning. That's cool. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I, I think... I will have at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let you have it. Yeah. Um, this on, like, any time that we're looking at these models, uh, just remember that if they're sitting on a D&D table... Uh, they're going to terrify players. Yeah. If they're painted, like, oh, my God. As a, as a D&D player myself, it's like uh, seeing seeing well, or even just basic painted models on the table is awesome. Yeah. It's memorable. Yeah. Uh, same with, like, all the all the models that are in there. If they're showing up onto a game table. Nobody's like, oh, look at the oh, wings. They're the same color as the bone. Oh, <laughs> you know? They're like, they? oh, my God, that's going to kill us all. Yeah, right? Yeah, I'm more worried about the stat block than I am the yeah. paint job. <laughs> um, but all of these, I'll just preface it right now all of these models are are excellent so yep. um yeah the only reason we're saying anything negative is just because that's what i figure you guys want you yeah. want to hear yeah what you, you did wrong rather than you know obviously what you did right too but yeah but you want you want to know how to improve yeah you're so, not getting better if you hear that you're getting better if you hear yeah what, what you could do better on it now what i will say is is there are a couple of youtube videos out there that you can go to um, and, just a couple yeah just a couple <laughs> it's a new site i don't know if you know um but you can uh, there's definitely some ones on like how to improve on wings, like adding small um, lines in there with a with a simple brush uh, that does like a purple or something like that. And then you can always layer up on wings with uh, with simple washes and things. And, to, and don't get me wrong, depth. wings are some of the for oh, me yeah. personally, wings are the hardest thing Ugh. to do. I hate wings. They are so difficult. But if you notice, half like I mean, what ninety percent of my models don't have wings for that reason. Yeah, they're hard to paint. Yeah, they are. And, and to make wings look good, yeah, can it, it can it can swing from oh that looks cool to oh that looks like crap really yep. fast. Yeah. So, um, no, I love it. Having having this thing on the table would be awesome. But I think yeah, improving the base and kind of uh, differentiating some of the color. You're, you're at the step where you've probably washed quite a bit, and and bringing up some of those highlights would really make it pop uh, that much more. Yeah. So, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, Just. I'm, there's some, you know, minor steps that you can, uh, you know, kind of do to fix it and make it a little bit better. Yep. But, but I mean, like yep. you said, it's it's if it's on the table and you're playing D and D, you know, what would you rather have a D twenty sitting there or this? Oh I, man, this would be so sweet this would to be see. So on the table. cool to see. Yeah. Um, all right, Troy, well, Troy, I, I feel that about a lot of my pile of shame. It's like I've got a bunch of these models here that I'm like, oh, <laughs> this look cool. So I'm glad it could it could inspire some uh, some uh, um, inspiration for you. So. Another Dan special. Another yep. Minkus special because he is that guy. And and yeah, Luna, we, we were asking for permission to do so because I don't want to just I don't want to just be that guy that's just mean, you know. Well yeah, and it, and it's like obviously all y'all that are in this competition this time, you were in it last time and you were probably in it the time before. So you know how we're gonna do it. And I, I don't like prefacing like, hey, you know we don't mean anything. You know what I mean? Because that's not we're not trying to be like, you know, you suck it <laughs> out. It's like, hey, I'm hoping that you're in this to hear what we have to say about it. Yeah. To kind of help you out a little bit. Well, it is Mancus, so I don't, I don't, I don't hold back. I know he's such a he's such anyway. a jerk. <laughs> I mean, is he listening? Is he yeah, this is, this is live. <laughs> so uh, again, Dan, same thing. I would say for this model here uh, is it, it, it feels a little washed out uh, for most of the colors color palette. I so, agree, Luna. So it, it, this is definitely going from this like blue and multi-tone yep. and like, you know, good contrast on certain colors to this is very, uh, uh, monotone. Yeah. Yeah. Having some high, so, uh, jumping up after a wash to add in some extra highlight or even making sure that you're over exaggerating the highlight a little bit, um, really can help kind of boost a model, like, especially on these tentacles on the front of his face. Okay. Having some of that be highlighted uh, and dry brushed, or you know, adding an extra layer, even a thin one of of a brighter paint, can really make it pop. Same with the wings. The wings, they're really textured, yeah. so adding in a nice dry brush over top of um, that would really help boost it up. <laughs> Should have judged them backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And the the wings are all one color. 
there's no gradient. There's no between the tatters of the rips and stuff. There should be maybe some like, you know, different, different shades of colors between that. And you have so much detail in those wings. Well, and it looks like on the inner side of the wings, uh, the dry brushing is there. Yeah. But yep. the outer side doesn't have it. And I think that's where it kind of gets lost is the inner side. It really has a lot of texture and detail that, yeah. that really pops out. Um, yeah, the water base does look great. Yeah, though. the water base does look cool. Hey, Dan, did the water base come colored or did you do that? That's a good question. I know that you can use um, uh, Vallejo sells a product. So does Liquitex, I want to say. That you can do like gel based stuff like that. The poop um, monster. <laughs> oh, it does look like the poop oh, monster man. from for a day. Wow, that's a throwback yeah. right there. You're showing your age. <laughs> it's 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 a cool model. It is a cool I've model. seen it. I've seen it before. I think it's. I don't know if it's Reaper. It might be Reaper. It might be Reaper. Um, but it, it's such a cool model. It was clear but hollow. I painted the oh, inside okay. smart. Okay, that is that's smart. a cool that's technique, cool. man. That's yeah, a good, that's yep. a good plan. The, the color looks great. Yeah, I would say be careful because on the on the clear plastic part, you've got some uh, some splotches from the brown, so it, it definitely pops on. It's like right here. Um, and then also make sure that you're doing an extra layer on some of the some of the claws because you can see the original brown coming through like on this one right here. How long did it take you to paint this? Forever. Glazing to create new tones is a super easy way to create variance. It yeah, is. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, a very, what's up, Coco? It is, it is a very easy way to add variance, and it's really easy to do. A lot of people get uh, scared by the word glazing. I'm terrified. And, and it's just adding some extra water into an acrylic paint. Um, and putting and applying that and you can do it thinly. And what's great about doing a glaze or through an airbrush, uh, what's great about doing a glaze is you can, you can add it and then wait, let it dry and then come back and add another layer and you can kind of strengthen that tone, um, with, and do it over already painted surface, uh, and a lighter tone will help kind of accentuate or exemplify. Accentuate. 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 That's um, a good word. Corey, who's uh, post divinity there, he mm -hmm. he uh, brought up a good point too with glazes. The uh, Pro Acryl line of the transparents work as a really good glaze too. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. Read this if you're a cutie. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a cutie. That's how it goes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank thank you, Megas, for, for submitting these. I, I hope that kind of that helps, um, you know, put you on the path to... Uh, um, you know what, what, what What's you can not do allowed? To, what you can do, calling you a cutie. Uh -oh. uh, what, what you can do to kind of, um, you know, next steps that you can do to try and improve upon. So I, yeah. I think this is an excellent starting place, yep. uh, and it can it can only go from there. So adding texture and and extra um, highlights uh, can really pull a model into the next level. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. who's Swirlykins? Is that? What's I've seen the name before, but I don't know off the top of my head. So I apologize. Is it Hunter? Oh, it is Hunter. Oh, it's Hunter. Right. Uh, yeah, it would be. Anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, cool. So, awesome. Yeah, Good job, Dan. Thanks, Mangus. Appreciate it, man. Uh, so next up, we've got... I'm going to go back to the old judges display here. We're, we're going to be uh, going to... Uh, next up will probably be the sci-fi miniature. We've got a couple to, to actually work through. So if you'll just give us a minute to, to prep those, we'll, we'll be right that back. So enjoy the dulcet tones of, uh, some lo-fi beats. <laughs>
Do me a favor too, please, people. Please, for the love of God. Glue the entire model together or <laughs> magnetize it, please. Mancus, your model, every single time I pick it up, it falls off its base. Yeah. Because it's not glued to it, and I think I broke it. Every single time. Well, that's, that's, uh, it wasn't me. I know. Um, I apologize. I had muted us, uh, while we were resetting everything, and I, Hopefully you didn't I, hear what we were I, saying. I, no, uh, <laughs> apparently I was talking to myself, so I apologize. Um, I was saying that, uh, for, oh, so nobody heard all nobody that. Nobody heard all that, yeah. <laughs> I was talking, I was practicing my speech. Nice. Um, uh, for those that are entering into the amateur category, Liam's thank a you. Nerd. Thank you so much for uh, for entering into that category. It, it, it's uh, it's awesome to see. I, I'm hopeful that we can expand out the amateur category because even if you enter something into the professional, you can always enter things into the amateur as like, uh, hey, give me some feedback on this stuff, and we want to give some real feedback because that's what people are after. So if you're entering into this stuff, I understand. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, Luna. I'm I'm just I'm going crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going or <laughs> if I haven't been crazy before. Um, but yes, if we pick up the model and look at it and leaves the the vision here, I apologize. We're we're trying to get a better look at them so that we can kind of give them a, a good judge. But um, you know, we want to make sure that we're we're giving these the best um, kind of attention that we possibly can. So starting off, uh, this is Bobby's sniper Jerry. Uh, it's a really cool Vindicator model. And uh, and so he, he told me that he wanted all the critique on it. All half, the hard Half words. of y'all were like, hit me hard with the critique. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, you guys see that nice side of me. <laughs> <laughs> don't be cussing at people, okay? We don't need you cussing. Uh, there's no no cussies buttons no, in this stream. There, there is. <laughs> I've muted them all, but there is. Uh, so... Um, well, man, because at least it's at least it's not not just uh, Bert that's breaking your models; it's you too. Yeah, right. Uh, All right. So yeah, this yeah. looks this looks great. Uh, there, the you know one of the things that I would probably have done different was not use the basing with the model itself. Um, I see, like, is that part of the model base? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's part of the model base. Is this? this I probably would have made my own. You know, oh, wow. especially into a professional category, I would have probably. You know, I know it goes with the model, but I want my model to stand out amongst the other ones. So if somebody else entered this model, they well, wouldn't look the same, right? And, and it it depends too, because some some of the uh, some of those models having a specific base like this, specifically yeah. this kind of base, um, it to me is okay. He also added on to it, or adding on to a base too can be really helpful, especially if you have a. An original base. Yeah. Um, this is also my personal way I would do it. Yeah. You know, like, uh, I'm not saying you have to do it that way, but that's what I would personally do. I would take as much, I would take the model that I have and take it away from the atmosphere that it was in and create my new story. Because he, when you have a model like this, I feel like he already has a background or he or she already has a background, especially with the the basing that comes with the model. Well, and that, that also depends on what you're after. Maybe he did yeah. want a, a cityscape fight and that's what the rest of his army looks like. If, if it's like, this is on a forest world, it'd be like, yeah, I don't know about a forest world, but it looks cool. You yeah, know? I would put him in another yeah. post-apocalyptic like atmosphere that he's in, but create my own world. Because yep. like I said, if you have two models and both of them have that, that background... It's like okay, well, you just have two of the same model on the on the in the competition. But yeah. if you have one that's like that, and another one that spent more time on the base and built their own base up, I'd probably go more towards the the homemade base, depending on what it looks like. If it looks like yeah. crap. I'm not going to. But well, so getting into the the paint, um, I do like the uh, the gun itself is a different color. It's got uh, black, and then it's got that nice uh, blue highlight on there to differentiate it. Uh, drill your barrels. Drill them barrels out. Um, That's so hard. It is, but it's so freaking. You know, hard. There, there's even a little bit of plastic on the end of this yeah. from from the the sprue itself. So you'll want to be careful with that. Um, the the highlighted parts are really cool. I love the the gray that you have for the for the um, I th man. What do they call it? A body glove. The body glove that it, they they stated as the leather is nice. Um, you can add a little bit more highlighting on the leather to to give it an extra bit of leather uh, worn leather look, because uh, worn leather leather has a a very distinct feel. Um, and so you, I'm gonna you, get a closer look. You might want to yeah grab it off there and and uh, take a look. 
because you know you want to you want to make sure that you're getting the getting the look see yeah and bobby first and foremost looks great dude it looks really good the gun looks fantastic your highlights on there dry brushing whatever you did with it looks awesome i love the color you chose with the bluish like that same thing it's kind of like a jade look to it it's mm -hmm. like a, a light blue oh, yeah. yeah looks great the the one downside is your uh the body itself uh it's very chalky with your uh uh, dry brushing almost maybe maybe that's what you're going for in, in like the rubble and whatnot but it looks like uh, more of a chalky paint on the black itself um luna just to make sure that you know it's a vindicare assassin yeah it's uh, it's from 40k so super cool model yeah. super cool model uh yeah i mean you you definitely stepped it up from your last paint job that mm -hmm, we saw for where sure you cleaned up a lot of your edges you went through and like I mean, you, you the ammo on the uh, the leg there. You have this little skull on the right above the knee. All of your wraps around the leg and arm are clean. The red isn't bleeding over onto the other parts mm -hmm. of the model. The little tassel on top of the knife, the purple looks great. You have highlights, low lights. You have a wash in there. Um, the ones the mask has a little bit of bleed onto the helmet itself. Yep. Um, I like the, the tubing that's coming from the mask to the back. You did little uh, yellow dots on there, and those look great. Yeah, man, this looks killer. Looks yeah. really good. Yeah, and, and just to kind of uh, add on to that too, um, I do like that you added the silver. It's not just a flat black gun. Uh, you added in the silver, but yeah, I I, I agree with uh, Bert in a lot of the a lot of the same regards. Uh, at the top of the basing, there's like this rebar. You can add a little bit of rust effect on that to show that it's been weathered and outside it's it's part of the stone right now um same with the rebar at the bottom um yeah you, you've hit all the big like detail work on this model it's just tightening it up so that you have the uh the extra little parts to it you definitely stepped it up man. yeah yeah you definitely stepped it up so it it feels very um very much so like you you've taken the extra time and effort into it uh, just tightening up those extra little bits um focusing a little bit more on like the the cracks in the um uh in in the basing um hopefully that focuses back up uh and and kind of continue to tighten in on some of the some of the parts so you can you can exemplify some of these areas you can give more highlights you can give extra texture you can do a little bit more you can do a little bit more with that i, I promise i'm not touching it with the pen i, I apologize <laughs> um uh so it you know you can do a little bit more with the with the face so that it has a bit more definition and highlight in there with that gray you can have a uh, a mid-tone gray and then a highlight gray and then maybe darken it out with a bit of uh black too um same with the you know the basing too has that where you have the 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 gold inlay which is really awesome um but having you're, you're telling a story with your basing so what story you're trying to portray with this specific where the vinicure assassin is sitting right now because he's obviously getting ready for for something um so what is he where is he standing? What is he doing? Um, and those kind of, you know, is it mossy? Is it is it an arid environment? Is it a wet environment? It does is there moss on the wall? Is you know how long has this world been vacated for? How long has it been devastated by war? And those kind of questions can really give you, um, even as just a painter, it will help you portray that information to whoever your viewer is when you're looking at the model. Um, so yeah, replace the pen with a loaded paintbrush. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I will get in there. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope that kind of helps, you know, definitely add more uh, highlights. And what I've really found that's helped me personally uh, and, and what a lot of painters have been perfect, uh, have been shifting towards is adding extra texture to a model. And that'll go a long way in in giving you like on the leather especially is something that i've i've run into where adding texture to a model and to an area can really help pull that forward and make it feel more unique so yeah even like stippling and like yeah just adding the the yeah. the idea that there's texture there too yeah yeah absolutely so awesome is there a barrel flare on the end too like the, the no 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 barrel flare okay well he hasn't shot yet so yeah he hasn't shot yet, and he, he needs to drill out his barrel before he can shoot. So I guess that first bullet's going to do a lot of work. 
So thank you, Bobby. Uh, that's an awesome injury. I love it, man. <laughs> yeah, Liam, I'm just going to, you know, if you note right here with the orange paint that I just painted on there, you can really see the highlights well. You know? right. Yeah. These are, uh, these are pink slip based uh, models. So uh, Brandon's uh, Gazgul. This thing's a beast and a half. Get that white balance to work out. Well, she's she's a tired camera. Oh, sorry about that, folks. There we go. Right off the top, I can tell you one thing. It's a universal thing. Drill out those ba barrels, Brandon. You got to get them barrels. Such a cool model. It is such a cool model. I love the Gas Gold model. It's it. This is one of those. This is definitely a 40k model. You know, so uh, loving that. Um. It, it definitely feels orky in the way that uh, none of the paint is truly, um, like, solid. It doesn't have a, a, a solid layer paint, but it's universal throughout the model. So it's definitely a stylistic choice because you can tell from this red up here and on here, like, there's, it's, it's stylized with that kind of rough brush uh, look. Um, and it's universal throughout the, throughout the model itself. Uh, the yellow and and the red too have the edge highlighting uh, that helps kind of you know uh, bring attention to that area without making it over uh, you know layered up kind of look. That's Reaper's model. Reaper just said that's my model. That's oh, Brandon. is that is that's Brandon? Oh, oh, that's Brandon. Ah, I've been picking on the wrong person then. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Loving the the copper yeah. as well. Well, dirty up. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice dirtied up copper. I would have loved to see some difference between the uh, kind of the top. I forget what this is specifically called, but this kind of uh, drilled out hole part that helps try and cool it, um, and the actual copper around it. I, I, I you know having some difference between that, and then kind of watching out for these heavy wash uh, wash pools. Um, and, and especially this one right here. Also, was... don't get it don't get it twisted either. Like, you know, painting a crispy clean model and painting a dirty model, you can paint a dirty model wrong. Like yeah. This this is well painted. Yeah, this is dirty. super well it painted. It looks for dirty, dirty, but that's also not lazy paint job no, either. You know what no, I mean? Like, not. you can paint a Nurgle, and you can tell when somebody paints a Nurgle like a Poxwalker quickly, and somebody who took their time painting a Poxwalker. Yeah, it's all gross and disgusting, but at the same time, it's like, I mean, you, you put a lot of effort into dirtying up those mufflers and you know the yep. all the, the different pipes and stuff and then even the 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 wiring coming around is like yep. frayed and it you know i'm kind of far away from the model it's hard for me to see this far away but from what it looks like from here they look defined i can yep. see the different threads in those those uh wires which yep. looks awesome um the the dirt the dirtification if you will on the red that looks a little uh from here at least it looks a little uh like too much. Um, yeah, there's there's some there's some pooling. Yeah, uh, especially like back like the, here. The teeth looks great. They're like yeah, the radiant. Teeth looks great. Same, same with then like the get, shoulder bit. You get on top of the claw, and yeah. it just seems like it's too much on there. Yeah, it's it, like it can it not can enough can highlights overpower. on the edges and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and like his his toe claws here, they're a little a little too shiny. I would say compared to like his claw even. Yeah, because the claw has a nice like rust to it, and down here these just don't. They don't have the same level. The the checkerboard here and like some of the decals on this guy are awesome. And I know yeah. Brandon pulled me aside yesterday and was telling me that he was really proud of him. And I, I will I will reflect that. That's great. It's awesome. I like the blood on in the inside of the claw, like you were talking yeah. about. Like a little goes a long way. Yeah. That's great. It yeah, looks uh, really good. Uh uh Gaz just likes to keep his toenails clean. He's he's a real he's a real <laughs> uh, hygienic person. <laughs> I do love that one that like eyeball. Yeah, that yeah, is it, awesome. It, just, it pulls so you bright. right in, and I'm really glad that it's a different color because it's this bright orange, and it just so draws your eye right, right to it. And it you, the, normally, like an orc face, you know, when you see a thousand orcs, it's all green with yep. like a wash on it. This it's like screams like I can look right into his face and I see where his eye is. Yep, it looks great. Yeah, uh, the basing is is excellent as well. Yeah, um, it got them tufts. It got them tufts. It's really it really sells the model. Mm -hmm. Um. I do like that you took your your sand and highlighted it more and expanded past the and kind of integrated the plastic parts to it so it feels more universal. I wish that 
the the plastic parts had a bit more of the highlight here. Um, the whole model's kind of missing, uh, like lit highlights. Yeah, yeah. There, there. You got a nice mid tones and even yep. some highlighting here and there. It's just it, it's it's missing those points that your smoke's kinda, got it. Yeah, your smoke and has the it. guns kind of have it there too on mm -hmm. the barrels and stuff. Yeah. Um, the barrels kind of feel washed out because this feels a little bit of the same as like over here, uh, that gray. I'm just, I'm, I'm missing the highlights on that right yeah, there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I can see where the edging is right here and over here is a bit more. Um, but like right in the middle, adding a bit more of the flat highlight would probably go a long way. Oh, he says, so. he says the, the light lights up under black light too. Oh dude, that's Super sick. Cool. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I, I think um, I think you did an excellent job on this. Uh, it's a step in the right direction. Brandon, I've seen you grow as a painter. So a, you know, a, a number of these people I, I know personally at least have, have grown as painters. And this is this is excellent work. It's fantastic. This is, this is a step above where you were uh, even a year ago. So, oh, one thing that I will point out is with uh, bronze, eh, well, Something that I noted here is mold lines and seam lines. Be careful with those, especially on piping, um, because they can uh, you you can kind of lose a a model in that. Um, but adding some adding some patina like in there, blues, yeah, yeah, the little bit of blue and blue green would really help pop this more uh, and give an extra tone. And it doesn't have to be bright. Like I wouldn't even want, I wouldn't even want it to be everywhere. I just want it to be in some areas where you can definitely I feel, like feel you it. Definitely see like the barrel burn on the, on those, like yeah. that muffler. I do want to flip it over. Take a look. Oh, he painted the green on the arm on, on the underside. Nice. Oh, uh -oh. battery on the camera's dying out. So, so remember everything out. we do here, we're learning every time we do it. So sometimes the camera's just going to die <laughs> and then we'll figure it out. We have another battery. Well, we got another so. battery. So, uh, yeah, I was going to say, you, you actually painted a lot of the undersurface, and you actually took the time and worked on it. They call that the taint, by the way. The undersurface is the taint. <laughs> the, the under, well, the backpack. <laughs> uh, uh, I kind of wish that the, there is a, there's a bit, and you might not notice it. It's over here, by the way. Uh, the battery? Yeah. Uh, the, um, like, right in here, there's, like, a leather bit. And if we had, I, I wish that it was a different color, or at least a little bit of leather, so it would pop out a bit more. Um, but... Yeah, that's a that's a, a tough place that you're not going to notice on the tabletop, but but definitely on this. Um, same with this yellow right here; it's a little washed out, so a little bit more tone in there would be good. But Cameras do die. Other, it's very otherwise, sad. otherwise, this is this is awesome. I love this. So, uh, Brandon, we're gonna we're gonna swap batteries here, and then I think we'll move on to the next. All right, here we go. Next one here. Yeah, I, I I work in IT. That doesn't mean jack all when it comes to cameras. Luna, you're not wrong in that I just want it to work. I want to come home and not have to deal with it, you know? Is that right? I don't know. It's your camera. <laughs> Whose camera is that? It's yours. I just work here. I don't know, man. I just work here. God, I hope yeah. that's right. I feel like I... Yeah, that's not. There we go. There it is. It does have a clip. <sighs> you don't use that. There we go. That's it, IT. I'll, I'll bill you later. Oh, hey, look, I just turned Luke? right back on. Hey. All right. And that battery's halfway dead already. No, it's, I charged it yesterday. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we're back. We're back. Uh, so thank you, Brandon, for that entry. Who's who's up next? Who do we got next? Um, let's go with Coco. Coco. Coco Cabana. Corey Alford. Corey Alford with the bike cap Capitan. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Jumping from jumping from a, a red and and gray and all that kind of jazz to a to a nice green is yeah. such a unique jump. Oh, you want to switch the cameras? Oh, yeah, right. You you guys don't want to look at us. You want to look at this. <laughs> you want to look at that. Yeah. Uh, right off the top, loving the uh, the conversion with the shield on top like that. 
Um, from the, the OSL Stormfield. looks yeah. awesome. The OSL, I will say, is a little bit is a little bit too bright in some areas with the same color, especially on the helmet and like over here. They're about the same tone, um, and it's kind of gotten washed out, uh, especially against the backpack here. Like that hump should have a little bit more, and the shoulder pad should have a little bit less. I would say, but I, I like overall, it. it looks really good. Yeah. Looks really cool. Looks good. A yeah. little, it's a like a little chalky. Yeah, it's a little but, chalky. I mean, I yeah, I'm digging it, man. But not bad overall. Yeah, because um, you got it down, you got it down, down into here even. Well, kind of knocked it down onto the shoulder a little bit, even onto the front plating right here. And you're kind of missing this shoulder pad and on the. I mean, it's got it on the back of the hammer, but in some areas where it's like if it's reaching the back of the hammer, it should re reach these mufflers. And that's where it's kind of, it's not as spreading as I think that it should be. If it's going to be that bright, you need to be consistent with it being bright. One way that you can kind of kind of tell with that is you can grab a flashlight or something like that. And you can, you can shine it from the point at which you're going to have that light source and see how bright it is at that point. Um, to really see where you should hit more color than less. Um, and kind of build from that. But, and this is a little bit, orangish when everything else is a little bit yellow so it should be more yellow more bright towards the source of the of the light than uh than dimmer so um the tire needs a little bit more too and you got to drill out these barrels these barrels need these barrels need it they're sad barrels the i like the gradient on the side panels. oh yeah the gradient the goes from light to dark awesome. and you got the nice highlights mm -hmm, on there mm-hmm um, I would have probably liked to see a little bit more. Like I said, I, remember, I'm literally like an over an arm's length away from these models, but um, maybe a little bit of uh, terrain on the tires. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of like debris or dirt or something like that, maybe something like that. I think the tires just need a little bit more in general. They don't feel highlighted enough where um, uh, I, I'd want... You know, I'd want more on them, more gray, more uh, more got them tough. Thing. It's, it's got, got them tough. Toughs. That toughs win, toughs win events. Um, the the metallics are cool. You could add a little bit more, or you could add some um, uh, discoloration on them because they're they're running hot. You know, they're running real hot. Um, the gold on the weapon as it comes around, and the gold on the top needs a little bit more to it as well. It's a little flat for just being a, a simple gold, which is not a bad thing necessarily. But pull the camera back a little bit, and then bring this. Back on. Yeah, there you go. I mean, do what you want. Yeah. Do what you want. It's fine. It's cool. It's so funny because it's it's like literally not that far. It's like a little yeah, bit over yeah. arm swing, but I'm like squinting. I'm yeah, blind. It's not bad. Luna's throwing twenty tufts on tires. That's how you, that's how you do it. And just okay. driving through driving through a, a nonstop tires, uh, uh, tumbleweeds. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is it's really good. Yeah, uh, this this is a um, like this is where I would say a good um, professional model starts is kind of at this level is is what I'd be looking for. It's so clean, that, man. Yeah, it's it's the, really clean. Your 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 panels, that's a lot of open ground with mm -hmm. no lines. Yep. You know what I mean? You, you don't have they they look really crispy. They yep. look really good. Your blending looks awesome. Like I can't really see the gradient looks fantastic. It looks so good. If you wanted to kind of you know, pull in a bit more with you know, the armor looks great. The panels look awesome. Yeah. Like but adding some extra um you could add chipping on this. Yeah. It would, it would really pop it, um, but not too much. Uh, same with having some decals on the side. Probably wouldn't go amiss. I would say some of this trim up here needs to be a little bit cleaner. The shield uh, on top. The shield on top yep. needs it. It would, would be. It kind of seems like the shield is down. just placed on top. Yeah. Um, like some extra chains around it would help kind of bind it to the model itself. Um, oh, yeah. That could, yeah. Uh, same with the cloth on this it's a little bit too samey to the, the bone so adding some extra highlight on the on the cloth that's going to be my new saying um, samey to the bone samey <laughs> to the bone um, but yeah I, I think this has a lot of uh, good aspects yeah. that uh, oh something else the metal right here might not necessarily have glow effect on it because the, the the fire is giving the glow, but not necessarily the metal. So the you might not want to highlight the metal with OSL. Uh, you might want to highlight around it. 
Now, that's getting a little nitpicky. It's getting a little out there, but it's it's soft enough where I'm I'm digging it. Somebody would say Alex is saying to the bone. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm just a little bit low. <laughs> it looks cool, man. Looks really good. Yeah, I love this. This is really cool. Um, so I, I think it it does hit a lot of the points that uh, you know it has a nice mix of contrast in there too. Base could do with a little bit more too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get it. It's not that big of a spot, but there's definitely just uh, you know you threw some texture paint down on there and threw some, a couple tufts. Yeah, tufts go a long way. Yeah, but you, you're trying to convey a story like where is it at? What's it doing? Middle of a um, desertish thing, just cruising. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, yeah, man. I love Good it, man. job, Corey. Excellent work. Loving it. What What do we got next? What do we got next? I think that's it. We're all done. Oh, okay. Cool. That's a. That's been the shortest. Why do we set all this up again for for uh, eight models? Because everyone's awesome. That's why. Connor again. Connor. Connor again. Connor hurt. Connor with hurt. uh with some Huron Blackheart. Ooh. Ooh. Girls. Excellent, excellent conversion. Thanks, Coco. Love you, buddy. Uh, that was really bright on that. Let's see if we can turn that down a bit. Hi, everybody. <laughs> there we go. All right. That white balance just went all out the window. I'm so sorry. All right. Oh, I said it, and then it went away. There we go. Okay. All right. So we got Connors here. Uh, first and foremost, this thing, uh, the, the con switch. Oh, yeah. You guys don't want to see me? You want to see this? Bam. Uh, the... The conversion works awesome because this this base is from <laughs> well, Liam said I'm a big I'm more of a fan of Connor Heel instead of Connor Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the base itself is a is a modification. I want to say that's Bellacor, the 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 marine from Bellacor's base. Oh, is it? Yeah. 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 And then this little like little dude here is super cool. That's so cool. Yeah. This this the base here is really cool. You did a good job um, kind of placing and having some additional aspects to it, because I know here on Blackheart himself is just kind of a, uh, he just comes with a blank 28 millimeter base. This looks great. Yeah, this, this looks, looks really cool. super cool. It's, it's really grungy, yeah. and uh, especially from contrasting from, uh, from Corey's, which is really, really like clean, clean. to this is so unique. Um, so. I'm gonna take a little bit closer. Yeah, he's, he's taking a little closer look. He's grabbing, uh, he's getting grabby. I noticed you used, uh, it looks like glossy null oil on him. And yeah, the space marine on the bottom is, I just love that model. Yeah. Such a cool model. You did really well with the flames um, and having him kind of be in that scene. Uh, the blood effect, if, if you're using blood for the blood god, just be careful that it is a glossy paint. So um, if you hit it with any sort of varnish afterwards, it will kill. Uh, it'll kill everything with that. I don't know if so, you did though. Yeah, but uh, otherwise it might just be a red paint, and you just need to be careful with uh, with just having it be a red paint. Um, uh, the skin is is a little bit. It, it doesn't have a lot of depth to it. It feels kind of meshed in with yep. the rest of the model it all kind of gets lost yeah, together it kind of gets lost together there's no real highlights on it hey how's the sound by the way everybody sound sound okay same with the metals hopefully it sounds fine yeah i sound fine to me yeah so i mean, I mean music's good everybody's yeah. everybody's everybody can hear us that's good news i'm, I'm sure um so yeah i i mean i like the the, the differences in, in, in color uh, choices that you made here with the with the metals, um, they feel in place. Same with the armor. Uh, it being red, you really did a good job getting kind of a red, grungy look. Um, I would say utilizing, um, making the blood look real is, <laughs> making the blood look real is really difficult uh, because you can, um, using just red paint, will not convey as much of the blood that you're wanting. It'll just kind of feel like it's painted red. You just smash through a through a couple spray cans. Um, but something like Blood for the Blood God or um, 
uh, Vallejo sells a couple uh, technical paints that can do it. Uh, having a gloss effect with a, with a bit of um, transparent red can go a long way too. So feel, don't, don't feel like you have to stick to just an acrylic paint. Uh, definitely expand past that to some other technical paints or other lines or other companies. Um, so don't be a, don't be afraid to do that. The, this skull feels weird too. The pink skull? Yeah, the pink skull feels skin-like. Uh, it doesn't feel skull-like, which is weird. It's a skinned head. It's, skin, it's, a, it's a really shrunken skinned head. Yeah, which is weird because this this skull right here is painted, you know, and you have a lot of wash marks on it. So be careful with those wash marks. You want to you wanna tighten up those to get those highlights on there so that you're not just washed out. Um, that's a that's a phrase that I'll use a lot. Washed out. This is an example of like a, a washed out model. It's very is, dark. Is that it darkens it a lot down and wash does a great job filling in those those shadows and giving you uh, some some low lights so that you don't have to add in extra low lights. Yeah. However, you need to build back up from that to at least a mid tone so that it doesn't look like you just slapped wash on it and then left it there. No. Um, because had, it, it the white balance it is pretty pretty bright on the camera, but in person. It's very dark. Yeah, it's very, very dark. Very dark. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe that's what you're going for. But if you're going to do that, you're going to want to highlight a ton of stuff to kind of bring at least it back from that. Yeah, because you want something that the eye can catch hold of. Even like grim, dark stuff that you're utilizing heavy washes and then taking it away. You're taking it away to a point where you can add extra uh, like oil patterns and highlights in oils so that they can, those can do all the heavy lifting for you yeah. um, rather than needing to paint like a, like acrylic, uh, uh, you know, edge highlighting because you don't have to do everything the GW style, um, but you definitely want to still stick with the highlights. You want the eyes to look towards something rather than just kind of getting lost in the muddle of, of uh, a washed out environment. Even the rocks, like, I, I mean, looking at it in, in person, not because I'm basically I'm watching it on my phone because I can get a better view of it. But it, looking at it in person, the rocks are very dark. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no highlights on any of the rocks. So even the boots get lost into the rocks. Yep. Um, I see that you put some skulls on there. It looks great. Yep. And then you put a little creature on there. It looks cool. The pink is a very weird <laughs> choice. I'm guessing you are going for like a skinned. Like, like still f like muscle on there maybe. Fleshy. If you're going to do that, I would add a lot more reds and blood and weird stuff on there. Yep. I love that you use that barbed wire. That razor wire is so cool. You used it in your other model too. Such a cool little like addition. And I'm, I, it's super smart to use that, the dead space marine from the Bellacore model and add it yep. to this base. Very cool idea. I will say that if you want to add uh, the marine to feel a little bit more included in the, in the base itself, uh, because you have a blank area as this swings around, you'll you'll see that there's a blank area next to the marine and under the marine because you have to stick it somewhere. Yep. Is take some texture paint or like uh, like sand that has a a bit more glue on it or something. Bye, Dan. Like oh, take care, Megas. Um, and you'll want to stick that marine in it while it's drying. Uh, a texture paint will do that a lot too, and and you can always paint a texture paint. Don't be afraid to do that, um, but. Uh, it'll help f make it feel like it's more included in the base uh, and in the environment rather than just kind of stuck on. Thankfully, the the model, how the model's situated, it feels like it's somewhat in the in the environment, but you want it to, hey, why is his leg kind of halfway missing there and where's his arm? And, you know, you, you kind of want to have that extra uh, portion of him involved in it. So pressing him or pressing this Marine into a a bit of texture paint will help uh, or texture paint or environment or something like that. Make sure that it's filled in. So it doesn't feel like it's a gap. Yeah. And um, don't, don't use, use a wash as a tool, not as a crutch. So it's like yeah. throwing, throwing a wash over your whole model. It doesn't need, it's not mandatory to, yeah. to be like, Oh, I need to get the low lights and all or the, the shadows and stuff. Just, just use it as a tool, and you can spot wash with it. You can, oh, yeah. you know, Pin use wash. it in different. Yeah. yeah, and you can. There's multiple different colors of washes too. You can make your own. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a ton of YouTube tutorials on how to make those. Otherwise, Citadel has a great wash, yep. you know, line. Um, and, and you know, and then after that wash, go back through with highlights. Yep. At, you know, you Absolutely. dumbed it way down, and you lost a lot of your good paint job underneath that. 
and I know why you did it. You know, I do it too. It's easy. Yep. It's quick. You can you can throw some wash on there and you get your shadows and all that stuff. But then you got to do that extra work and come back through and give the highlights. You, you said dumb down. I think you meant just dialed down. Dumb down. You said dumb down. Yeah. Dumb down. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You ever heard that saying? I have. It's insulting. No, it's you're, not. You're insulting. What? <laughs> Dude, you're, okay. what was it? Was it your Sani? Uh, yeah, my, Damn it, my. Sani. I can't remember now. <laughs> no, dumb down just means like, yeah, doesn't yeah. it just mean like darker down? No. Or like less <laughs> down? No. Oh. <laughs> Typically not. Whatever. He's been insulting people his whole life and he's never known. No, oh, I insult you purposely though. I know. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. All uh, right. Well, I, I, I think that wraps on, on Connors here. That this is, this is. Excellent, though. You did a great job. Great. Now Liam's horribly offended. Yeah, Way Liam, to go. Well, Nobody would have been offended. No one would have been offended. In your right. Now I'm going to get canceled for saying a, yeah, uh, well. a saying. Yeah. Good job, buddy. It does yeah. look great. Less down. Loving it. Who do we got next? Next up. We got Ooh. Miles. Sarah Khan. Yeah, this thing's cool. See if we can raise, if we can raise him up. We can sing a little song about it. Raise right. him up. All right. So first and foremost, white. White is always a difficult color to work with. So excellent job, Miles, on on tackling a, a difficult problem. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna take a picture of how I see these models. Oh god. I'm gonna put it in Discord. Oh no. Uh. Maybe I just have better eyes. No. No. Look at this. So this is my view. It's like between two cameras and a microphone, and I'm like <laughs> trying to see. Just this trying thing. to see it. Yeah, that's fair. I purposely did it. Thank you. You know, um, so <laughs> I, uh, the the highlights on the on the white are really good. You actually have a mid tone on a white, so a nice gray uh, with the pin wash, and then and then uh, edge highlighting for for the actual white. So that's really good. Um, it's a really crisp look. Uh, it definitely feels more. I, w I wouldn't even say cartoonish, but it has that that pin washed feel. You kind of missed it on the back of the back of the leg plate here, um, and just kind of getting into some of the extra detail. Some extra detail on the on the beak for the bird would be good. I like the bird itself for the feathers. The bird looks great. Yeah, the bird looks great. The the claws need a little bit to um, uh, the 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 f fur is a little bit lacking it's got some it's got some highlights but it's not it's not like over the top I, I i wanted a little bit more from the fur same with these skulls up top there's a mold line going across them which is difficult to difficult to clean off i understand but um they need a little bit more they're a little glossy which is fine but they're they're just kind of washed out they they just kind of have that basic tone and then wash on it which is not a bad thing for an army uh, as a consistent, like, universal thing, but when you're doing a, a specific um, turn or, you know, a professional-grade model, you want a little bit more out of it. Um, the skin tone's really nice. It's a, it's a good skin tone. Um, you can definitely add a little bit more um, depth to it, but it has the it has the tone that I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah, it looks you know? good. Yeah. The white, white's so hard to do, too. White's I mean, so hard. It, and that that's what I really focus on when I look at this model is the white. The white is well done and well executed. Yeah, the uh, the red on the on the cloak, um, adding some extra texture to it would be, be helpful, but also making sure that it's not washed out. Same with the inside. The other thing too is, uh, usually when a skull, when you have a skull, it's usually like pretty white, mm -hmm. and I noticed that all the skulls have like Reichland flesh shade as a wash over the top of them. Yep. You don't need to do that. You can do like little bits, and then you know, and then if you do, go back and highlight the brow, yep. and you know the the jaw or like the top of the the teeth there, and then like the the little indentations for the uh, side of the head there, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, it it looks really good. Uh, it, it check in check in Discord if you guys want to see <laughs> what, see what the, he's looking at. Yeah, I put the view, I put the the picture in Discord. Yeah, you can move your mic. It doesn't have to be directly in front of your mouth. But. Because then it's like, over well, there. yeah, okay. And and people want to hear my my beautiful voice. Eh, it's debatable. Um, I mean, I got to take it closer anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, so the one thing I will point out is Miles has stepped up his game entirely. I've seen his previous stuff, and other than utilizing washes a little bit heavily here, uh, he's really stepped up his game, and and I think tackled a 
army and a style that's really difficult. Like I'd be very intimidated by white in general because yeah. making white look good is so so insanely difficult. Um, but uh, this is a great location where if you wanted to go to the next level, it's just adding some extra highlights. It's adding some extra texture. It's not it's not that much more than where he's at right now to have a, a really impressive model that could that could sit as a as a professional grade. I would have went with a little bit more of this like uh, debris on the, yeah. the cape with mm -hmm. more on the bottom of the cape instead yep. of that just like one bunched up yep. area there. Yep. Um, I love that. I love it looks good, but I would add base, more. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. From a base, maybe some. Yeah, it's hard to do on white too to add to the boots. And well, stuff, yeah, and same with the boots. Like adding in that little dust effect can can really sell a model to be where is it standing right now. I love the grass. He, he painted the grass in there too. The short grass. Yeah. So. No tufts. No, tufts. No, no tufts. A little bit but of moss. It's, it's, um, it's the plastic tufts. It's, it's out. <laughs> um, there's, and then like, like Alex was saying earlier, you know, going back through and like, you know, if you're going to paint your model white and then you paint strips red, you can go back through and paint white around it too to like clean up the mm -hmm. edges instead of trying to be super detailed on the red itself. You can get a little messy and then just go back through and clean it up with your white because it's, it's a bigger area to paint. It's going to be easier to clean up. Yep, and with, um, that, with that gray too, you there, can, can kind of correct. There's some spots like right back there. It looks like there's some white on the red. Like mm -hmm. I said, I, I, I got to get closer to look. But Yeah, grab, grab it and take, um, a look. take a gander. It looks, overall, it looks really good. Um, I would did some more highlights on the, uh, the red tassels coming down. Looks like you did a little bit. I already did a little bit more to kind of accentuate that. You there, you need some cleanup on some of the uh, the the brown wraps around his leg going into the white. You got all the detail. You got the highlights. You got it. Looks like you did the wash and you highlighted it. But then you went back through with that contrast paint on top of the wraps and the gun, uh, the the gun holder, and the holster. And then you you left the brown on top of the white. Mm. Um, you so know. just doing some cleanup. Yep, yep, just basic Tight, cleanup. Tightening up. I, you, you need to thin your paints down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I see a lot of brush streaks, um, and it's kind of layered. So it looks like you put a lot of paint on there. Mm. Um, but it, yeah, I like I like how you did it. You basically did like a black. The black is in the corners, and then you went back through with the white on top, and that looks great. But then you did the red on top of that, and then you have the white still underneath it, and you can see uh, the yeah. bleed. So you're there, man. It's just... It's order of operations, right? So yeah. it's you want to like that white should be the final thing on top of everything, so it cleans up all your edges and the corners and everything. Yep. But the hawk looks great, looks awesome. I'd like to see a little bit. Is that like a, it's like a, a device on its eyeball? I'd probably make that pop a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, it looks cool, man. It looks really good. Yeah, I, I I I would agree. I concur. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, just tightening up and, and doing a little bit more um, cleanup would really make this thing sing more yeah. than what it already is. So doing some of those extra little steps in, in doing the cleanup, uh, as opposed to extra highlights, I think just yeah, tightening up those uh, those edges and uh, and your kind of edges. Um, I think I said that twice, but and edges. Don't forget edges. the edges. Don't forget the edges, but. Um, yeah, adding little highlights onto uh, like the glove and uh, this face has a really nice highlight actually where where the skin tone is, but making sure that there's because it was probably primed white, uh, some of the some of the difficulty that you have when you prime something white and, and painting with white especially is that you can lose out on the um, uh, you know cheating and hiding in the shadows uh, that can go away gears. really quick. So yeah, that that can that can be a real bummer. Um, a real stinker. A real stinker. Okay, cool. Thank, thank you, job, Miles. Miles. This is this is awesome, man. Looks great. Yeah. Now I can go back to the judges one. Yay. I don't have a. I don't have a. I, I just have me doing things here with buttons and whatnot, so it makes it difficult sometimes. All right. What do we got next? Chris F. Oh, jeez. F now. is for friends who do stuff together. <laughs> You is for ukulele. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a drill barrel. I will point that out. It's a drill barrel. Camera. Oh. Wait, you know what? He just loves no. to see himself on camera. I just love seeing myself. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, 
so I'm looking at the camera over here, like, man, that's a really cool bottle. Uh, he drilled his barrel. Look at that. He did it. He did it. I'm so proud. Winner. <laughs> and there's uh, a tuft. There is a tuft. He he's listened to the feedback and he knows what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the the thing that jumps out to me, especially with uh, a, a cultist like this, is the skin tone. You really did a good job on the skin tone. Um, it's uh, at the risk of sounding weird. It's creamy. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's got that smoothness to it, where it actually feels like a really high end. Um, I mean, especially on the biceps here, it, it feels like a high end uh, skin. It doesn't. Uh, Sometimes with skin, you can really lose the shadows and it just, everything feels like a highlight or everything feels like a, like a shadow yeah. uh, and, or it'll feel like a mess in between really streaky. And this, this is excellent. I, I really want him. See, there's some, in some ways I want like us to post articles and, uh, and have an article on like how to do skin tone, how to how do certain people do skin tones and, and different effects? Because this, this is a really good example of a good one. Yeah. Um, so it looks great. I'm going to yeah. get a little closer. Look. Yeah. The leather, uh, the leather on the, um, like the bottom side of around the pants. I don't even want to say that it's a, a skirt because I think she's actually wearing pants. It's like a duster. Yeah. A duster. It looks really cool. The it leather does. actually pops nicely. You got the grenade, which there's a ton of nodules on that grenade and they're all highlighted. Yeah. They look great. There's gradient in the highlights. Yeah. I mean, the machine gun itself, like that 50 cal looks awesome. It looks like an old World War II style paint job. You got scratches on it. I mean, it, it looks great. The ammo coming in and out looks awesome. There's different colors in there. There, the, the jeans have a little bit of, um, like a thicker white. I'd rather have seen it like more of a, like a, uh, more of a wash, you know, like a, like a, a glaze. And you kind of just threw white in there and it gave it kind of like a, like paint was just set on there. Mm. Everything else is so like you were using like creamy and mixed together and the gradients look awesome. And then that's just kind of like, you, you added a ton of white to that one spot. Everything's, everything looks separate. You know what I mean? Everything on this model looks it, separate. It's nice. And I can look at the model and be like, all right, there's a, you know, this like, you know, necklace thing hanging off the, the belt. You know, it's got, you know, this like shielding thing on the side. It's got the duster. The boots and the duster are very similar in color, but in the front, the blue jeans break that up. So it looks good. But in the back, you can see there's just like, well, you can't see, but I can't see. Um, <laughs> they kind of blend together. The purple looks good. I probably did a little bit more highlights in the purple on the head, but um, yeah, man, it looks awesome. Good yeah. job. Swirly wants a dedicated Alex Cam next stream, and I, I can't help but agree. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's what the people want. Um, with the, uh, there is a small mold line. There's a small. Uh, There's like a scar on the shoulder, too, or something. That was cool. Like oh, yeah, I like that. Scar. I like that, that paint scar. There, There's a small uh, mold line, like, right under her arm uh, that is popping out. You're fired. Yeah. But otherwise, I, I kind of agree. The, um. You, you were trying to add texture to the jeans. You want to fit you know. a third judge between our fat? I was going to say <laughs> asses, but I didn't. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> uh, the, um, yeah, the, the, I would say the jeans, at, even adding a, a small glaze on top of that to just kind of pull it all together yeah. rather than it feeling like just that white on top, because it is a good, a good amount of texture. It's just, you want to add that a uh, little bit more. Um, the, you really captured it or like the lipstick, is cool. Um, maybe a little bit of highlighting on the on the hair bit on the on the hair bit. Yeah, the purple, adding a little bit of highlight there, especially with everything else that you have is is well highlighted. Some dust on the boots to to kind of give it into that desert lake environment, uh, so you can you can add in um, some extra flavor, some extra uh, you know. Again, placing it in the scene is cool. Yeah. Overall, this is a really excellent, well-executed model. Uh, um, but yeah, I it, it's those small things. A little bit of rust on the like a little bit of rust to add onto the uh, the silver bits uh, for armor would feel really in place too. It would help kind of give uh, a little breaking it up a little bit more, especially over here up on the face. Um, switch it, cameras. Yeah, yeah, and just a just a small amount. Of um, see, I'm trying to pay attention to chat. Why? That's why. 
Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you, you can, uh, there is a, really, a paint competition. Now, <laughs> there's a really co- a couple of good uh, uh, YouTube videos out there on like stippling onto leather to make it look, um, look a lot more worn too. If you want it to have that kind of worn uh, leathery look. Uh, that can go a long way to give that nice texture. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I think this is an excellent step for what your work is. And we've only seen it once before, I want to say. Uh, so yeah, this is this is awesome. Yeah. Um, even some, you know, uh, the cloth on the arm and the cloth on the on the chest are about the same too. You could separate that a bit more. Um, add some pit stains and some some uh, gross bits on the on the shirt uh, to pull that forward and make it feel like oh it's it's been worn it's been used it's, you know it's the been gun in the is middle. very clean yeah the gun is also a really clean post apocalyptic desert yeah I mean this is a cultist make it look kind of grimy and yeah. gross you can add some add some texture and flavor to it flavor looks great though test yeah. I mean, everything, all, all the models that we're yeah. going to look at today are ex- excellent looking. Like, they're all super good, so. Yeah, except for Hunters. Yeah. Which is next. Oh, that's why we're pointing it out? Okay. That makes that makes more sense. Okay. All right, I'm going to not forget that. Okay, Hunters, Hunters is, oh, this is, okay, so there's a note on this one that states, give more, give lots of criticism with three exclamation points. So, Hunter, we're going to do exactly that. Yeah. It looks really good. <laughs> you, uh, we were just talking about the dust on the boots. Yeah. And you, you did a great job with that. Yeah. This, it looks this like he lives in his environment. Yeah. This, this is a good example of like having something that feels but like that's it's it. part that's of its environment. It is, is these boots specifically make it feel like it's part of the part of the world that, that it's inhabiting. Um, so that in and of itself is kind of what, what we're talking about. Um, the gray pants. Awesome. Uh, you have a couple of different separations of gray there that make it highlight and pop. You could you could add a bit more if you wanted to. Toss in a little blue even or purple uh, to add to that gray and make it feel it, it not strong, just very subtle. Um, separating out some of the colors and tones, tightening, tightening it up. You did a really good job with the green to make it pop, but uh, these leather parts, you'll definitely want to um, add some highlights and add some separation between you know, down here it feels really, it feels very similar to the gray, um, so it, it doesn't have a lot of separation. And, and like up on the chest plate too, uh, skin tone, uh, you'll definitely want to um, kind of give, uh, giving your pause something. You did, you did you did something with it? Servo AF. Oh, you probably hit the autofocus is off now. There you go. Got it. Um, How'd so, you mess with the white balance? No, oh, it's right here. Turn it down a bit. There we go. Um, so the um, the skin tone, uh, you'll definitely want to clean up as opposed to what we saw uh, with um, Chris's. Uh, this is a good example of like you're you're right in the middle stages of what you want for a uh, a skin tone um, because it's. It's giving the impression of of like a uh, I want to say a, an Asian or a, a yellowish skin tone that has kind of a nice amount of color with that, uh, which is different than like um, a Caucasian skin tone. And I, I think that I really wish that GW would come out with a good. What are you seeing? The skin display. tone on the model? Yeah, the skin tone on the model. Because it feels like those are arms. Tone. Oh, is that like a shirt? Oh, yep, yep. He's got oh, a shirt. Oh, okay. That's. That's one thing, Hunter, I would definitely do. There is a ton of detail on this model, and I would really like to see some highlights on a lot of this stuff. Yeah. You, you, these, by the way, shout out to Kill Wager. This is a Kill Wager model. Mm. Um, they do, he does, he does a great job with the detail on this stuff, but there, that's also a huge pain in the butt for, for painting this model, because there is a ton of detail. Yeah. There's straps and pouches on the entire pants. Um, I would like to see some more definition between that. Um, the green looks good. You got some highlight on there. Maybe more of a highlight on the green. Mm-hmm. The gun is black, uh, which is fine, but do some highlights. You know what I mean? Same with the the where the the uh, the clip is. The clip is just a, a just one color, and it's you know I would have added more color to that, more definition to it. With you know? the with the um, uh, uh, specifically with the 
the leathers, having several different kinds of leather, you can run into this with a D&D model too, or a fantasy model is that you'll have a model that has a billion different kinds of leather, you know, leather shirt, leather jacket, leather, you know, pouches and whatnot. Yeah. Um, having separation between those is really important and specifying that. So making sure that uh, you as the viewer can see that there's several different kinds. So maybe painting one with a bit more gray, maybe painting one with a bit more red or one that is like more of a tan and, and a sandy color. Uh, working out of those leathers can help uh, define the model a bit better and than I, if you were to uh, to just stick with all one color. I see what you're doing with the helmet and the shoulder piece too. You mm. want them to kind of tie together, but realistically, that seems like a very futuristic helmet. Yeah. I don't know what the shoulder pad is. And I love, why. The, sh I love the shoulder pad. Though. But I don't know why they'd be the same color. You know uh, what I mean? Might so, be unit cohesion or something or other. Who but knows? I, I mean, it's like part of his armor, I guess. And then you yeah. have like a helmet that's obviously super futuristic. You can see through it and all that stuff. It's probably the green for a reason. And then you have the shoulder pad. It just seems like you're trying to tie it in, which is fine. I but Yeah, I think it ties in pretty well because it's also on the gloves. Sure. Too. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, let's say you have a helmet that's like, because I'm guessing it's extremely like, you know, uh, electronic in yeah. there and all that stuff. You, you know, you can see through, can't see through it. It wouldn't be the same color as the shoulder pad, which is probably a piece of uh, material like... Like yeah, cloth that, or something like that. And then it, that green on that helmet is for a reason. You wouldn't have the cloth being the same color and the gloves being the same color. It also gets into texture. I think that uh, a texture, texture on yeah. that would would help. So a bit of stippling on the shoulder pad or even on the helmet to give it a different texture might and, help separate that. And I'm guessing the that helmet is probably glass or some type of like you know material like that, like a like almost like an entire motorcycle helmet. So mm -hmm. there'd been nice to see some glare in that maybe. Yeah. Something like that along that. And it, the shoulders or the uh, the shirt really blends all together. Yep. The the you use that mustard yellowish like cream or like a, a like that like that yellow with the the tan dark tan kind of like uh, armor, like body armor, and it kind of just blends really 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 just it kind of just all goes together yeah that that's why i was saying well, that's why i was saying like uh, that's why i felt like it was skin tone because it felt like it was skin but yeah. if it's a jacket you definitely want to differentiate and, and even doing a different gray like even if you want to stick with a gray for cloth having cl uh gray on the on the pants and then having a different gray a lighter gray or a darker gray on the shirt wouldn't be a bad idea either so that you can kind of tie those uh those colors together that that texture together so that you can go oh all the cloth all of the canvas all of that kind of stuff is all the kind of similar also um, if you're going to go with a custom decal you really got to put some effort into it uh it looks like you're trying to do something on his front yeah yeah there well, that was that was a that's freehand i know yeah, yeah. but you got to do more you got to do more on that because it, it's not bad no. but it's i mean if you really get up close and personal there's not a lot of detail to it. It's a good start, I would say. Tightening it up would be good, too. Look, uh, I mean, if you want us to pull our punches, I definitely will. But what you wrote <laughs> on there is you want us to be, you want us to criticize this this miniature. That's fair. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I would, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have even done that. I would have done something else on there. If you're going to do that custom decal work and, like, really, like, put that on there, it's a pain in the butt, and it's hard. And it, if you don't do it right, it'll be a negative towards your model rather than a positive. Because even if you put that effort into it and it doesn't look perfect, hey, and <laughs> it, it's definitely like a deterrent almost. Yeah, you you, you want to keep it clean and crisp. Excellent uh, uh, job on running with it. Yeah. Actually painting it freehand. Good, yeah, free good on you for difficult. trying it. It's awesome. It's difficult. It's hard as hell. That's why you yeah. don't see it too often. Yeah. Um, so practice does make perfect. So, so you know, keep uh, keep working at it because it can, it can get you a long way. But yeah, uh, uh, definitely having a... A defined uh, symbol, it, it'll go a long way. Instead of having, uh, I will say, a defined symbol that, uh, ooh, there we go. Having a defined symbol that is a simple symbol or simple shape will get you further than having a complex shape that is out of focus and, and not as crisp. Yep. And then work your way towards improving um, would be my... Uh, my advice towards that. I, I think this is an excellent start and one that you're definitely going to want to pull forward the highlights and... Uh, it is a kill wager model. Yeah, do yeah. do a lot of cleaning with it um, rather than, uh, you know, I, I don't... 
this is not by no means like the end product, I would say. This is definitely, I would say, beginning stages. Looks good. Yeah. But uh, there's just, there's a lot of, like you're saying, you, you're trying to learn here. You said you want to, you said try and, trying to step on my painting, yeah, yeah. go hard on me. Yep. And, and, you know, that's what I would do. There's so much detail that's missed on this model yep. because it's the pants are black. The, the shirt is, is that mustardish yellow. And then you have the, the gear on him is all the same color. Yep. And then that's it. That's you did. You did all of that. And then there should be highlights on all of those pockets on his legs. Maybe more dirt on the gun. Maybe the dirt. You know, like just something more to break up yep. the the cohesive. It's not even cohesive. It's just like kind of like everything's melted together. Yeah. Uh, so there is one thing that I'll point out. Being that this is probably part of a unit and part of an army overall, you're you're dedicating a certain amount of time to each model for uh, execution and working with it. If you're going to be doing a, if you want to improve your painting, taking a single model and putting in the same amount of time that you put into a unit uh, will get you further results on on teaching you kind of more of the professional. Because if you're like, okay, I hit a point where I'm like, all right, I feel pretty good about this, but I've only put in an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, now you got nine hours to really focus in on what more can I do with it? Uh, how can I further improve on it? And so it, that would be what my biggest advice towards you is, is take a, a single model, say a kill wager model, um, and uh, take that model and work on it for 10 hours and really put in the time. What can you do in 10 hours? Uh, what can you improve on? How can you learn new things? Uh, how can I do highlighting? How can I do texturing? How can I do weathering? How can I do, you know, what can I improve on and push yourself towards saying, all right, I'm going to take the single 28 millimeter model and I'm going to put 10 hours into it. Yeah. What does that look like? If if I was painting this model, this is where I would start. What yeah. you have right here is a great this start. Is an awesome start. Now you do the details. Mm -hmm. Now you do the highlights. Mm -hmm. Now you start breaking it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I love the green helmet. I yeah, love that. Yeah, this that is like it's it's so cool. emerald looking color is so beautiful. Yeah. Um and, and your base looks great too. For just being very basic, it's uh, you know, muddy, you know, I, I, dusty. Yeah, Middle Eastern look to the ground because that's kind of where Kill Wager takes place. Oh, okay. Um it looks great. And the dust on the boots up the jeans looks awesome. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's it that, really does that look pushes good. it apart for me. And if this was on the table with me, I, I would this is great. This is great. It would fit right in with, with the motif of like, you know, downtown Baghdad. Yeah. Um yeah. which is for where sure. it's set in. So it's like it looks well futuristic, but yeah. Yeah. Um it looks great. But there's definitely, you know, you pull it up to your face because you play three feet away. You know what I mean? It's this is this is table ready. Um parade ready would be adding those extra details, yeah, those extra so, things. So here, I'll, I'll kind of give a visualization for that for, for folks, is if you're holding it out here, this is one level. If you're holding it out, you know, at arm's length, this is about tabletop quality. You hold it up to about halfway, okay, now I've got a little bit better. You know, this is this is something that you want to focus on. This is a, a model that should take a lot more effort, a, an HQ or something along those lines, Some, something that's really gonna stand out on the table. Now, if you're bringing it up to here and looking at it from here, uh, you know, at, a, at less than a foot, and you're really noticing all the details and points of, uh, you know, all the armaments and all of that. Now you're really thinking, okay, at, I need to be at this level for a single model to really focus on it rather than out here. And remember, take that last hour and clean it up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, what I've noticed on all the models so far, for the most part, is there's that, that, that overspray, the, the, you have paint on your model that doesn't belong there. Yeah. And all it takes is 10 minutes to go through with the colors that you have and just cleaning up those lines, cleaning yep. up those little pieces. And it, and it makes, it's night and day when you get close. Because everybody's used to having their model three feet away. Yep. It's like you have it down on the table, looks great, awesome. And then you pull it up close and you're like, oh, there's, there's literal paint not belonging on that model. Yep. Now this one, I think, has lack of paint. This needs more detail, more more of that kind of stuff. And yep. Hunter, I'm not, you know, I'm not being a, a, a jerk or anything like that. Mm. You know, you asked us to go a little bit hard. I'm gonna go ham. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Hunter. I think Hunter's like, I, thank you for the feedback. Can you can we can we go to the can next we, one, please? Next one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hundred percent. Rob is still Liam. <laughs> <laughs> I am a parade. Uh, I think we've got our last one, right? Old Rob Seeley. Old Rob Seeley. Mr. Seeley. I'm going to pick on this one. 
Oh yeah. Oh, it's so so cool. So we got our crying right now. So, so we got ourselves. <laughs> Good. Mix it with some brown and make a wash. And yeah. It. This is uh, this is titled Wah. 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 Um, yeah. So uh, where to start with this one? So Sealy has a great uh, effect on his bronze over here. His kind of copperish bronze with some extra patina. It's not overdone. It's not. Uh, it's definitely not over the top. Same with his uh, effects up on top. Uh, with you know, he's definitely drawing the eye towards the face, um, so he's building it towards that. And like on the back, you can see it's not as highlighted back here as it is on the face, uh, which is drawing the eye towards it, which is really cool. Um, I love how the claw is two toned. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's yep. so smart. That's a really cool. That's so freaking really smart. cool effect. And it's so simple. It yep. takes a second to be like, all right, well, I don't want this whole thing to look exactly the same. Let me take a second and, and paint the top part something different and yep. then the jaw something different. Yep. Uh, I will God, say the that dragon, the, 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 the dragon scale is oh, so cool. You did a really good job. So I will good, I will pick on the the tusks over here and over here and actually all across the back aren't nearly as, as like defined as some of these front ones. Yeah. Like the front ones are really well defined and pretty well. They could even be a little bit more defined, uh, but they're not to a level that I would say is is kind of the same. This feels like it's kind of they blend in between. In really well. Yeah, they, they blend in really well, but this they're not highlighted hardly at all. No, that's they what I mean. They, they blend in with oh, the armor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they don't they don't have more. any differentiation. See, and it's now remember we're looking at this in real life on camera. If you look at it on camera, it does. They oh, like pop geez, more. Yeah. That's in real life. Yeah, they, it's they a lot more gray. Yeah, it is a lot more gray. Maybe that'll help. God, I, you need to be a cinematographer, man. I know. Make everything look uh, I'll add it to my skill list. Yeah. Um, the, the piping, these, these wires, awesome. Having, yeah. having that, uh, that hazard striping is so cool. Um, it does feel a little samey with the, the armor being met, uh, metal. Uh, and like this tooth, you could have added a little bit of differentiation, a little bit more rust on some of these areas. It feels a little, they're not quite washed out. They're weathered, but it feels a little bit too much of the same kind of weathering universal over the over the course of it. There's no scratches. There's no extra little added uh, parts that would make it pop. Um, he's got a you know the pooling wash around the areas that I'd want to have the rust effect popping up are really there and pronounced. But they're you know like up on the shoulder pad up here, it definitely does pop up where you have a little bit more of a highlight, but the rest of it doesn't. Uh, and that that's kind of the struggle for me. Um, very muted. Yeah, it's it's muted more than anything. Same with the gun up here. It's the same kind of effect that you have on the, the armor for the rest of it. The uh, orc flesh looks great. The orc flesh looks awesome. The pants and the leather. I love amazing. The, the dusting effect on yeah. the boots and stuff yep. looks great. He, he added it into the environment, so it feels like he's part of that kind of dusty, desolate area. Um, the, the lips. The lips are weird. I, I am creeped out by the lips in the best way possible. They they look like They're very pink. chapped. Yeah, very chapped. The chappiest it's very lips. dry out there. Yeah, it's very dry out there on the... But look at it, look at around those bolts and stuff. He's yep. got, like, the rust and a little bit of wear behind... It looks great. Yep. They, he makes it so they don't blend in. Yep. I would have wanted a little more differentiation between these these kind of teeth and these, yeah. you know, extra little bits uh, for, for an orc. Uh, it feels a little too samey, if that makes sense. The I love eye, that you use The eye on this squig is so good. It's just dried out yeah. completely. It's great. Um, the base looks great too. Yeah, the base looks great. This this is a this is a good example of something that's really awesome. Uh, that that does stand in its environment. You can definitely feel like the orc is there. If he added a little more weathering powders throughout, so yeah. it felt like there was a little bit more dust that was kicked up onto areas, and even like it the could boot be in, really like feels like it's cemented into yeah. the base too. It should probably have a little definition. Yep, it, it does. Uh, I was gonna say up in like the the eyes and the crevices, you can yeah. add a little bit of dust so that it, it feels like it's a little bit more part of the environment. Same on the on the cloak. Um, That's the other thing. Your model, I mean, depending on the storyline, and you have a storyline, I'm guessing most models aren't just popped down onto a base. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like they've been trudging through this, you know, dusty wasteland. The blood is on one side of the claw, but not on the upper side of the claw. Same with the blade. The oh. blade has it too, where it's it's just not, it. you know, he kind of dragged it around in the blood a little bit, but didn't really kill anyone with it. Um, <laughs> I was like, I did it, I did it. I, I did it, I did it, boss. Poser it's blood. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the blood effect could be a little bit more pronounced on some of the areas. I, I like the streaking on this too. It feels realistic in that area, like you crush something. Yeah. But it doesn't. It doesn't portray it on the top, which I would imagine that if you were cutting something in half, you would get blood on both sides. Yeah. Um, same with the blade. A little bit more streaking on the blade, I think, would would really help. The uh, face. The face push looks it up. great. Yeah. The it fa- pops so well. It doesn't. It's not just green. Yep. There's green and low lights and highlights and all that. It looks great. And like like I was saying, the hair looks too, good too. It it pulls like all of this detail here pulls you into the face and and sits you on the face. So you get that that nice detail look right in that area where your eye wants to go. So excellent job on that. Um, yeah, I mean uh, I think other than some of the muted tones and and some of the extra effect work, this is. Uh, you know that that's what I would have to say with it. And some of the extra metal bits on here, yeah. But yeah, excellent that's work, good. Rob. Um, I want to go back real quick. Oh, 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 geez. Where are we going with this? What are we doing? There was one thing on hunters. You're upsetting this. The whole I process. To see, if you look down the sight on hunters, it's hard to see right there, but right down in the sight there. Mm-hmm. Oh, he painted the 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 site. That's hard to do. That's awesome. That's really hard really to do. Good job. It's super difficult to oh, see. Man. But you see right down the site yeah, okay. here, there's a little red dot. Yeah. And I forgot to mention it when we were looking at it earlier. That's but awesome. It looks really good. Oh, wait. Can you pull that back up? I was on the wrong camera because that's me. <laughs> Everybody's looking at her face going, oh, it's really cool. Uh, focus, 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 focus. Oh, you can yeah, see you that. Yeah, you can see it. That's That's awesome. Yeah. Dang, man. You did a great job. There it is. A little bit, but you can see it. <laughs> yeah. Excellent work. All right. We're going to swap to the next thing, which will be uh, probably fantasy singles. And uh, and go from there. We have a total of, let me pull it up on the sheet. How many fantasy singles do we have? All the single ladies. Uh, we have three entries. For fantasy singles, so this should go oh by really quick. God. So we'll be right back we with that. <laughs> oh, and I apologize. I don't know why the the chat on the left hand side isn't working. Apparently, that plugin is not functioning well. So I apologize. I it was working a little bit. Oh, it was working a little bit. Oh, of course. Yeah. All right, and we're back. Back again. Guess who's back? Tell a friend. Tell a friend. We got a shroom. At shroomf. this speed, I bet the professional will air today. We are doing professional. Yeah, this is, yeah. Well, There was we'll, only four amateur entries and a young blood. Yeah, so I, uh, I miscalculated. I thought that we'd have a lot more amateurs, but everybody really wants that professional grade uh, harassment. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just really wanting to uh, just get beat the crap out of it. Uh, so it happens. 
Uh, I think it works. It just disappeared. Oh, the chat. Oh. Yeah. Well, don't would. be shy, it says. Yeah, don't be shy. Oh, hey, look, it does work. Hey, look at oh, that. my God. Oh, it, I don't know what the heck it says. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. I didn't submit anything in Q3. Yeah, yeah, you got to enter into Q3. By the way, uh, Q3 is happening in August. Is that Renegade? So, no. When's Renegade? November? Q4. That's November. Yeah. November, okay. Yeah, it will always this event will always be on the uh, second month of the quarter, third weekend. Okay, I think that's how it works. So, yeah, that's at least the plan. Who knows if we actually stick to the? plan. I don't like having a camera on us because I'm always like, <laughs> like yawning and leaning back and stuff, and everybody's like, "Oh, this guy." Oh, All right. Guys. All right, well, let's let's get a little more professional here. <coughs> Sorry, right, let's here look at Brittany's. This is Brittany Pearson's. She she was really wanting to have some feedback on the pro. Yeah. On the pro uh, level. So we're putting uh, in fantasy. She's pissed at Trent. Yeah. I, I would Trent. I would be too. He's a, he's a jerk. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I love the the style of this model. It's so... It's like a jellyfish yeah, mushroom. Yeah, it's shroom. Or it's, um, oh, you're going to say a word and I'm not going to know what it means. It's a D&D monster, I want to say. It's a shroom. Sure. I think that's what it's oh, like. Yeah, well, that's what the entry name is. Yeah. Um, from from the get go, the the blending between the tentacles or the the frilly bits, we'll say, um, are really good. I like the uh, the coverage that you have on them. A little more definition between the individual strands would be a really good thing to have. Um, the wash that's you know it's it's a subtle wash, which I think is a really good benefit for you. Uh, however much you watered it down, I think doing, uh, you can still see the, the wash line. So blending between them, either by adding in another layer of that, uh, of that watered down wash or even a further watered down and kind of go further down the, you know, going from all the way down, uh, can help define and give, you don't get that wash line. That's throughout. what, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, I don't think it's that great for the, the wash itself. Cause there's. You, I see you try to do like a shadow underneath and you did yeah. just a line across yeah. and then you wash to here and there's a line across. Yep. So when you're doing a gradient, you don't want to see those lines. You want it to see it just kind of blend down. And like you're saying, there is zero definition between the tentacles in themselves individually, yeah. which is kind of upsetting just to see it. You want, they kind of, it's almost like you made spaghetti and they didn't split apart like they're supposed yeah. to. They kind of just stuck together and at the tips, at the very ends, you need to do some detail work. Yep, you know, the, what are those stocks? Are those eye stocks? Are those legs? Are they, what are they? They're floating. I'd like to see some detail in there. Now, that being said, the red with the white dots on top. Oh, yeah. Crispy Crisp, clean. Crispy clean. Now, that's also very monotone. Yep. There's no, there's no like additional anything on top, which is, you know, it looks great. It's clean. But I would like to see a little bit more of like something maybe around the edges yep. or something like that to kind of like. A, a different tone. You can even yeah. do a two tone or a three tone kind of yep. red to, to make it pop. Or I, I would say highlight, low light. Um, but it's it's a smooth surface. So the doing, grading on the, bl on the eye stocks looks yeah, good. Yeah, the, the grading on the eye stocks looks good. It is a solid blue and then a lighter blue yeah. up here. Uh, oh, Troy, I believe this is a D&D &D model. So um, I believe it's a, it's not a Reaper. Uh, Whiz kids, Whiz kids. Whiz kids. Uh, so yeah, and, and then doing something with the eye stocks so that you can have a like a uh, a little bit more of a blended dark blue, and then having the little eye stock up here be a different color is a good idea. And maybe like um, a dot in there to be yeah, like that's an eyeball. If you or want something. it to be an eyeball, or else if it's like if you just want to leave it like that, it's at ears. Yeah. So and maybe a bit more of a definition on this mouth because there's not a lot of definition. I'm getting oh, is that a what it natural is? highlighter, whatever it is. It's a yeah. opening orifice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a gaping maw. Uh, when I said, when I mean like, oh, that's what that is. I, I, I don't know this model. So when, when we're looking at it and I'm like, oh, okay. I see. Cause I yeah. see this little like indentation, but there's zero paint in there. It's literally, yeah. it's just, uh, let's see. Uh, maybe, it's, it's yeah. just the, the shadow, the natural shadows there, but there's no shadow inside yeah. it at all is what I'm saying. Yeah. So I, I agree with that. I, I concur. I'm concurring. Indubitably. Indubitably, sir. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is an excellent start. Uh, same with the base. Adding, adding, either adding a base, like a larger plastic base, and then and then attaching it to it so that you can add a bit more uh, uh, ground onto it or painting it. Uh, I like that you have like a, 
like a green patch, almost like a. This actually feels really mossy. Yeah, like it looks you like did a, a cave good job. Or yeah, something. yeah, it actually lo- feels like a moss. The colors are there. Yeah, but having a little bit more definition and uh, having a small base, I I really dislike when Wiz Kids. This is not nothing against it. you. Uh, this is Wiz Kids and Reaper loves doing it, where they give these like just built-in bases, built-in that bases just, that are trash. Yeah, normally your model uh, doesn't even sit up straight. You got to like boil it yeah. and then bend it so it works right. You have yeah. to craft it in the night. Now, uh, granted, under a full moon. <laughs> granted, most of those models are like three dollars a piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, I'm like, asking a lot of a three dollar model. I get, <laughs> but but still, I I I love the white. I love the red. It's very classic. Yeah, the the, 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 the model, blue is a little out of place. I but like it's a the monster. Blue. It's, so it's what a, the hell am I talking? about? I like you know? the blue because it's a nice contrast to the red tone, and it's not all the same blue. Yeah, and it's not all, you know. So it. I don't it think it's bad. No. I don't. I just don't. I, it's it looks a little out of place to me. But like I said, it's a fantasy mod. It's a fantasy monster. Yeah. So, you know, maybe maybe more blue in the model than just the eye stocks. Maybe like on yeah, the underneath in the in the eye stocks under or the the leg stocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The leg something to kind of tie blue. that back yeah. in. Yeah, that'd be nice. So or I even could, you could you could highlight a or like edge edge uh, edge highlight around the circles with maybe blue or something like that mm. uh, underneath it. Have some blue, something yeah. to just kind of tie that in together. Maybe so, something to help. Uh, yeah, tie it in, I think, would be a good plan. But I, I like this. It's a, it's a great start. Uh, and if this is, like, one of your first models, fantastic. Work. Good job. So, yeah. And way to go into the pro. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, that's the only way you're going to learn is if you, you know, amateur is great, too. You know, the Young Bloods is awesome to learn. Yep. But, you know, if you want if you want that little bit of extra. Yep. You know, you and we're, we're giving, we want to give feedback to all. Yeah, so. absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So, that's that's where we're at. Good job, Brittany. Brittany, nice work. All right, who's next? What are we doing? What do we got? Another. Ooh, another flomp for, I think they're called flomps. Are they flomps? What the? This one's got all sorts of curled out ones. Flumpf. A flumpf. This is uh, a flumpf. Flumpf the flomp. Oh, whatever. Uh, Frederick. Frederick the flumpf. Frederick. Frederick the flumpf. What a guy. I, I like this coloration a lot. Yeah. Now, we were just talking about all this stuff with the previous model. But I mean, now these these two are entered together; they're friends, so I feel like we can kind of talk about it like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, if you look at if you look at Frederick, if you look at Kelsey's, you can see that she did exactly what we were talking about. She did the the leg stocks have that like cap at the bottom with the with mm-hmm. the purple. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the colors match together. That you know, it's good. Probably would have did something with the the cap on top. Yeah, uh, you know, add some of those like circles or add something. Just some more definition. It's very bland on top. Yep. But you did paint inside the mouth. Well, and and the uh, the blue is different than like the leg stocks or eye stocks or whatever yeah. they are. Where it's it's a it's a blended turquoise blue. So it has some nice definition between them. Um, you can see between the in- individual stocks. I and and I think that you should exemplify that more. Having more of the uh, the definition between the eye stocks, either by having a, a watered down pin wash. Or something along those lines, and then cleaning up those those colors around it would would really define it well. Um, and then having the little purple bits at the end of them helps define and give definition to where the eye stock or leg stock or whatever they are end. Mm-hmm. And it, it gives you the ability to really look at that model and have a nice definition to it. And with this um, many legs or this many stocks, you you have to put the work in and you have to highlight each one. Yeah. You, I mean, I know it's a pain in the butt. Nobody even, wants to, but even a single to. small glaze yep. helps make it pop that much more. So. But you did paint inside the mouth and now looking at your model, I can see the eye stocks and the mouth. It makes sense to be like, Oh, that is a, that's the face Yep. on the, uh, on the other one with the mushroom top. It's an angry shroom. It's very angry. And the eyes definitely going back to it. The eyes definitely don't match well with that model because I didn't know that that's what it was until I saw this one where they were cohesive. That, together. That's fair. Um, but uh, yeah, still great job. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I love great this. Models are just need a little bit extra. Same with the basing. I mean, that that's just you know either added on a larger base or something like that. But you did a good job making it feel like it was kind of a mossy environment. So you really, yeah, I, I feel like you did that well. So. Oh, Troy, thank you, Troy. It's a Pokemon. It's a Tentacruel. That does. That's, that's not it. A tentacruel. That's the Tentacruel. Thank that's you, not, Troy. That's not a Absolutely, it is. Why did I not see that? <laughs> Alex is gonna have a freaking aneurysm over here. Gonna, this is why I drink. <laughs> uh, no, this is this is cool. So. Yeah, it looks great. Good job. Um, but yeah, overall, I would add 
more to the cap to, yep. to give it something extra. Yep. Highlight each individual stock on the bottom. Highlight the tops of the stocks on top for the yeah. eyes. Give the eyes a pupil, maybe. Um, and then inside here as well, you know, if yep. you have the, the, I'm guessing there's something in there. I, again, I, I'm getting the feeling that these are, these are beginner painters or at least ones that haven't, you know, been painting that long. And a lot of times having those, uh, that time where it's like, okay, how much time am I spending on a model? Yeah. Um, because there's no definitive time that you can say, oh yeah, we're going to, you know, you should put in three or 10 or 30 hours into a single model. It's whenever it's done. Um, and always push yourself to do a bit more with a model than less, especially if it's a single standalone model, you definitely want to have that extra little bit, yep. um, to make it pop because you want to define that model by, um, by the time spent and the effort taken on it, especially. So, um, It's always difficult. For this thing. Okay. And and Brittany and Kelsey, they they look good, yeah. but there's definitely there just needs that extra, that little bit extra. It looks like you yeah. you and I may be incorrect with this, but it looks like you painted them pretty quick, and um, and you kind of settled, mm -hmm. and your talent is obviously there. Push yourself to a limit. Yep. You know what I mean. Push yep. yourself to the limit that you, and go beyond that, because you have the talent. You're there. You just kind of stopped. And, uh, and which goes for a lot of the models that we're going to see that there's the, the talent is there. It just feels like a lot of people cap themselves and they're yep. like, I don't know if I should go any farther. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially on a three to $4 model, you wreck it. You can get another one. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, I think you have the talent, you have, you have the skill. You just got to push yourself harder and go farther and yep. spend more time. That's the thing in painting is what is it the 10,000 hours or whatever it is yeah. like you have to spend time on your hobby to get good at it it's not going to happen overnight i mean i've watched luna when our first paint stream <laughs> that we did and luna's sitting out there uh, yeah. asking me questions and i'm like i've never seen you here before yeah. and now luna's here every single week painting yep. non-stop always painting hunter as well you know byron i haven't seen byron that often but Hunter and Luna are constantly painting and they're, it's, it's a, it's turned into a lifestyle. It's part of their life. And if you want to get that good, if you want to get better, that's what it is. It yep, takes, that's, it takes that's the time dedication. That to, that's the time you have to do. Heck, I just got done doing my monthly for the monthly painting competition here at the forge. And, uh, and I hit a point where I'm like, I, I need to be done with this model. Yeah. I'm satisfied with it. Could I have pushed further? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I spent probably 15, 20 hours on that model, I want to yeah. say. Um, uh, trying out new techniques, trying out new things, uh, making sure that I'm pushing myself as a, as a miniature, especially for a com uh, competition painting thing. Now, I'm satisfied that I'm proud of that model. Yeah. And, and I think that if you're going to be entering into a uh, painting competition uh, specifically, definitely push yourself and, and try new things. But, um, but, but lazy. I, yeah. Tell me about it. You yeah. know, I painted 60 pox walkers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks. All right. Sorry. Got Sorry. Uh, we, we put this, we put this. All right. Model so Corey's Corey. done. Let's Corey's uh, done. Yeah, move on to the next one. Great. <laughs> Take the time. Uh, Corey, the, yeah, I would have to agree uh, with Troy. The, the backpack is amazing. It looks so good. It looks, it looks like a nice leather. The same with the, the rock or the, uh, the entire rucksack is really well done. On mm. the side, there's a little bit of little bit of pooling for a little bit uh, too much like shade. Um, having some of the texture that you have on the back on the side, even if you have to add it in yourself, uh, goes a long way. And and I was thinking more about the the, the cream tones. Uh, you have some of the some of the mid tone brown, but adding in like a dot or two of that cream will help help kind of make it pop. Um, the skin tone feels gross because it is a zombie. Yep. Uh, this is Hank, the bag carrier. He's doing a great job holding that bag. I'm guessing it's 3D printed because that base is broken, and that's happened to me multiple times, 3D printing it, stuff. It might be. It or it might just be a 3D way. printed base, too. Yeah, it, it looks 3D printed or at least close to it. It might be a zombicide model or something crazy like that. I'm going to look a little bit closer yeah. here. I love the hair. The hair is really cool. Um, definitely, definitely got some good... So there's a chunk missing out of the skull, uh, and you can see the red, and then you can see the skull. Uh, so that's cool. That's that's cool, that's cool that's, detail that's awesome. that you put on there. Nice. 
Uh, you have the ripped jeans. You can see the skin underneath the ripped jeans. Mm. Uh, you can see the ribs. Eyes need a little work there, Coco, and the mouth needs a little bit of work. Uh, but, I mean, I think that's the model. The model's face is kind of rough. And I know yeah, this is your D&D model. That's so. the difficulty with a uh, – with Anytime they get a 3D print is sometimes it's it's a crapshoot with uh, with how eyes look or faces look and it's kind of doing the best you possibly can. Oh, he's got a collar. No, oh, no, nice. That's awesome. Is this like a is this the tag along for a D and D character? This is, they, yeah, this they, is his bag carrier. Oh, okay. So you, bef- you be- it, it never fails. Every D and D group's like I bef- we befriended a goblin or a kobold or something yeah. along those lines, and they're they're you know the the main love interest for everyone in that group. They just love that character. Corey, if you're still there, uh, I don't know if you remember Hug Hug, our Hug Hug. Yeah, we, we had a... F's in chat for Hug Hug. <laughs> I, know, I know we have, in one of our D&D groups, a, uh, a kobold that we befriended, and he was captured. Yeah. And, and we dropped 10 grand gold on yeah. the table of this guy to buy his billet, because I'm like, I don't, I don't think you understand how much we want this character. Yeah. We... <laughs> uh, Oh. We uh, yep yep Corey's like we killed we killed Hug Hug. Uh, oh, Hug, Hug, was, Hug Hug We found him in like a cave or a dungeon, Ooh. and we befriended him, and then we took him along to the end, and we needed to get blood into a cup, and we slaughtered Hug Hug, and all he did was love us, and we completely <laughs> d- disassembled him and used every part of his blood, and at the end Corey's like you only needed like a drop of blood. <laughs> So I kept Hug Hug's head just in case that we could reanimate him later. It never could. So wow. we, we we were gonna go to our graves with that that, <laughs> <laughs> that massacre, but you, uh, it's pretty rough. Hug Hug was so sweet too. It hurt to do you're, it. You're bad. You're bad and you feel bad. <laughs> You'll never forget that though. No, never. Hug oh, hug man. that hurt. <laughs> That's painful. He was a good character. The the skin tone is really is really solid, but it needs more. Uh, it, it needs more definition. And you have a good amount of definition and even the bones showing through the the skin itself. But it, it's it's you have a highlight and then a, a shadow and a little bit of blending, but it's not as uh, it's not as crisp as you probably want it to be, or creamy. Um, it is a zombie. If you wanted to add a bit more texture to it, to the skin, to make it look kind of rotten, you can add like nice little purples and blues and, yeah. and reds and things. That's like, what I, I'm looking at it too. I'm like, what's it missing? Yeah, it's yeah, missing like the the, the bruising blotch, and yeah, the blood the pooling. And, and yeah, um, definitely a classic zombie look. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, I mean, it, you know, the base. You know, there's not a lot to the base. There's not a lot to the to base. Something a little bit more. Adding a little bit of little bit of uh, texture to the base. Adding a little bit of line work. Um, maybe, the base is obviously broken. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe adding in a um, uh, um, like pools of water or something like that because it doesn't really fit for like tufts. But you can add like um, uh, little pebbles or um, uh, I, I always like to use leaf litter to cheat in this way where it's like a city's going to have trees and the trees are going to have let go of leaves and they're not going to clean up everything. And it maybe one got stuck to him and stuck to the ground and that yeah. kind of thing. Um, as well with a, with any competition model while the base is broken, that, that can't be, that can't be necessarily helped all <laughs> the time. I'm guessing Corey, you but knew that. Yeah. These, um, <laughs> going in. I mean, the broken base is not what necessarily gets me. It's these little nodules on the side. Make sure, sure that you clean up your models and your bases if uh, for that because it will, you know, that helps kind of uh, set the model in and you want to try and remove as much of that as possible. Yeah. Um, but you did a good job defining and giving definition texture to the rest of the, like, the clothing. Uh, the, the rucksack just really gets me. It's awesome. So It wasn't when you brought it there? The base wasn't cracked? It hasn't left the case. I know it hasn't left the case. It hasn't left the now. case since the day you and I put it in the case together. I'm betting it was Trent. Trent was playing God with it. it. Trent. <laughs> he was jumping around, you know, doing his Trent thing. Uh, but yeah, Corey, I, I think this is an excellent model. Um, it it has, you know, don't be afraid to to play with uh, skin tones are really difficult and also really scary. Uh, as a person that's just dipping my toe into skin tones, it, it can be very uh intimidating to go into skin tones and especially a zombie flesh can be really difficult to capture because you don't have a real life kind of unless you want to google dead bodies but that's i mean yeah i've done that before yeah i mean i've written books so i know hey man i know what i know <laughs> well, yeah yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> um so 
Well, Corey, it looks great, man. Yeah, I love it. This is this is really cool. Uh, like but it. yeah, I think the little bit of blues and purples would have been mm-hmm. gone a long way with the skin. Um, I mean, really watered down. You don't want it to be like super well defined. You just want that. Extra I would have painted him entire blue. Just yeah. blue. Skin tones are the worst. They really are. And this is why he's a judge and not a participant. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, that is it for the single or for the singles categories. We're gonna go to I don't know what do we want to do next? Do we want to do monsters and vehicles? Uh, we're waiting on. I know Sealy's got some. He's using his units out there. Uh, maybe oh, we can. We open the case and there's, people there's just here. people. Yeah, it's always fun. Hey, um, if uh, I think we might move on to monsters, we can see about monsters. So we will be right back, folks.
All right. We are changing things up a bit from what we had before. Uh, we are going to do a unit because one of the one of these units is being used in a tournament that's happening outside of our door. So we want to try and get through them as quickly as possible so that uh, we can get them back to, uh, well, Mr. Seeley's using these right now. I was going to say, yeah, there you go. Ugh. All right, so first up, we have Mr. Seeley's. Oh, yeah, Troy, you're ready for professional. Like, yeah. Yeah. Your Silent King looked great, dude. Yeah, no kidding. I agree. All right, so this is Rob Seeley's uh, Seer Group. I, do we have the tag with it for what it's what it's labeled as? Uh, war Council. War Council. This is the War Council. I believe it's the War Council. I believe this is the War <laughs> Council. So uh, Rob does a really good job of um, of capturing that. Uh, the the texture of like a lot of the leathers that we had um, we had been talking about originally like these pouches look really good um, they have nice definition some good shadows and highlights um, they look like they've been used and worn uh, nicely he's got a lot of non metallics on the on the weapons themselves so and all of these I believe are non metallics so this is this is his bread and butter uh, uh, I know from his past experience at, and and past uh, entries that he does non-metallics really, really well so um so i would say that his uh the the blues and the uh the blues on the helmet and the armor are all really well done they're executed well um the blades between them all have kind of a they're they're different in their execution uh and and their paints um but they're all executed well i would say that uh, Oddly enough, the, the Eldrad model doesn't mesh well with the rest of them uh, as a kind of a cohesive unit. Uh, not to say that the Eldrad model for his um, uh, coloring is really that bad, but uh, just just in and of itself uh, doesn't mesh well with the rest, especially for the design of the blue on, on this guy's uh, spear. Um, overall, looks really, really excellent. Uh, everything kind of meshes well. The basing for Eldrad is a bit different than the than the texture and color on the rest of them. Uh, and a as this is a unit, they should feel really cohesive uh, as a as a grouping. Um, so that that can kind of pull things down a bit. I do like the texture on the blue itself. And Rob uh, uh, Bert had to run away, so I apologize. Um, there is on these kind of feathered out areas there, there's a bit more separation uh and like over here there's a there's a difference in tone right here there's a there's a difference in tone that separates between them this feels a little bit uh less so separated and more it, it just it doesn't have a nice separation between them so there's no definitive difference between the the tones that you're getting there there's no um you know white or gray and then black um so there is that uh that that kind of leaves that wanting um overall though there there's an excellent uh amount of paint on these guys that, that really does shine well um there's a little bit on the on the cloaks they they don't have a lot going on with them other than they're they're blended really nicely but there's not a lot with them there's no extra um you know decals or uh or um, freehand that might have been added to them that that could have pushed them up a bit more. Uh, same with the grays. There there might be a little bit more highlighting that could be happening with it rather than just uh, um, the purple. Uh, you know, kind of that that <laughs> mid tone purple. So in, into, Bob Rossi when I yeah. come in here, he's like, and the uh, mid tones and, and the, the mid tones. <laughs> I'm just putting everyone to sleep right now. <laughs> this is ASMR style. Um, <laughs> this unit does look incredible. Yeah, Rob does a great job. Uh, his, his Oh, sorry, not Rob. Yeah, Rob's. Rob. This is Rob. This is um, his whites and purples look great. Uh, they're not like they're not dusty. They look good. They're blended really well. The armor that they that they're wearing looks so good. The non-metallic metal style looks mm -hmm. awesome. Um, the headdresses look great with their highlights and stuff. Really brought the highlights on the swords. 
to give them that like crystal esque look to them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, everything looks great. The bases look good. You know, and he painted the rims with a different color than black. It looks like a grayish to match more of the the motif around his models. It looks like. I was pointing out that the the sand tone on like Eldrad does not mix or mesh with the the rest of them. The the purple on the cloaks, it, while they are uh, nicely highlighted. Wait, one more time. What doesn't? Uh, Eldrad sand does oh. not match the rest of the. Of the different tones, I know that Eldred was painted at a different time than the rest of these guys because these are new. These are the newer Eldar. Oh, models. you're saying this so, base to yeah, this base, this base to this base. Gotcha. Um, is the, there snow on there too? Is that snow on the back there? There, um, no. It, it, this is like dry brush. Oh, this has a little bit of yeah. snow right there. Yeah. So having a little bit of snow to tie them all together would have been great. Um, but like the the purple, while it's really good and nicely highlighted, it's kind of it, it's got that simple flare it doesn't have anything extra to it it's just a little bit of highlight a little bit of dry brush highlight on it but it doesn't it it doesn't have anything more it's just softly blended um, it would it would have been right nice here. to see like some of the dirt or snow on the yeah. bottom of the capes is what you're saying well, and that and like a little bit more of the depth and shadow between folds betwixt it'd be, it'd be twixt because like eldrad eldrad has that he has more shadow inside the fold sure. than on the top. And there's a larger gradient between him for that than, say, uh, the the purple guy here. The this, purple this, guy. Uh, that's an autark. And then this warlock here. So it it's just a, a small critique on that. And especially, like, in this crevice here, you can add a little bit more uh, depth to it. But, yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to overstate just how beautiful these models are. Yeah. They're excellently... They're, they're well executed. They're excellently done. Um, this orange feels weird. It, it, I was just looking at that. I, it looks out of place. With everything look, else, there's no orange on anything else. Yeah, it, it, it does look out of place, and that's what that's what gets me on <laughs> that model specifically. This, too, right here on the bases, how it's, like, painted up onto the pieces, mm-hmm, the gray. Mm-hmm. I, it's, it's hard because... These are really painted really, really well. Yeah, they are. So when you see something, it's glaring almost because yeah. everything is painted so well. So it's it's almost at a disadvantage mm-hmm. because it's like that that I probably wouldn't have noticed that on another base, but seeing it on these because they're so crisp and clean coming around right here, this one, you yep. can see it's painted up. Yep. He, it's he up ma- and up. painted up on top of there. Something that I did notice was the um, like this bone right here, really well done. Yeah. This bone right here is kind of lacking. It's very it, it flat. It's very flat. It doesn't have the definition. Like the rest of the, even the non-metallic golds have a lot of sharp uh, sharpness to them, but the that bone does not. Yeah. Um, so a bit more, a bit more to that would be excellent. Um, but overall, I, I would say this is this is really excellent work. He's done a good job at making it feel uh, cohesive to. Uh, especially on a tabletop, this would be excellent yeah. to see. I just, yeah. uh, his army overall looks awesome, too. The, so. the highlights on this, like, uh, quaff, mm-hmm. if you will, looks really great. You got the, the, the light shining onto that one piece, yep. and the rest of it's kind of in the shadow. It looks good. And I was pointing out that the like this quaff right here yeah. is really well-defined and different, but this one right here is not. It's a little dark. It's a little dark, but it doesn't have definition. It, it has... Uh, that Autar kind of loses its definition uh, overall. But so. now the big challenge is, can you spell Quaff? Start with a C? It's a Q. Is it a Q? I okay. have no idea. No, you're helpful. I'm sure <laughs> Google can help me out with that one. The The staff with this one, too, is kind of, it kind of blends in with Eldred's cloak a bit too much. Yeah. I wish that, that was a little bit more defined, but overall, yeah, it, it's these are an They're excellent impressive. unit, yeah, yeah. so... Um, unit's going to be a tough one. There's some yeah, really there's good some, entries. Yeah, all the all the entries for unit are really good. Yeah. So it's it's tough to tough to make a call for that. But yeah, the orange just really. I mean, I get that it's contrasting and it, it's popping because of the contrast, but it feels just out of place. Yeah, it feels really like an odd choice for it. He's fired. Um, yeah, Rob, Sorry, if you're man. listening to this, I just I can't believe it. <laughs> Super disappointed. So, all right. Well, that brings us to at least we can return these to its rightful owner uh, yeah. and then go from there. So, um, next up, what do we got? What We're we, going to do another Coco. Another Coco? Coco Cabana? Coco Cabana. All right. Cool stuff. Right. Uh, 
set these up the best I can. Now remember with unit, uh, we're looking for, you know, cohesion between the individual models as well as the models themselves to look really impressive. So it's kind of a difficult, uh, difficult grouping to do because you, you have to capture all parts. You know, everything has to feel cohesive, but it also has to feel um, coffee. Coffee. That'll be the word for the day is quaff. <laughs> All right, here are your models. This is Corey a uh, Altford. Alfred. Alfred. Corey Alfred. Coco. <laughs> uh, with lucky number seven. They look good. They look really cool. Uh, the skin tones, especially with a uh, um, anything Nurgle, can get real rough real fast. Yeah. You can lose it. It can get really muddled down. Uh, you know, so I, I love that there's def definition with the sores uh, and there is a color around the sores, especially, you know, the the inlaid sores as well as the, the pustules and things of that nature. There's highlighting around Well, them. and he did the thing that he didn't do with the zombie. Yeah. He added the bruising. He added the bruising. It looks the, yeah. awesome. And the there's there's multiple layers to the skin that actually help. So having those extra highlights and, and building up from that kind of green, washed green can really, it really does shine in this case. Uh, definition of the um, uh, the skin tones be, or different layers of skin tone have different uh, different highlights. Yep. So um, something though, this one like this guy's butt? shoulder has a bit more paint to it than than it's blended, so it doesn't look nearly as blended as some of the other ones. Um, the blades themselves, and especially the horns, too, feel a little same. They don't have the same kind of. The faces on some of these are kind of really blended in. You can, you can see that you did a thousand of these. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm sure you did. And that's you know same thing. You get you get tired. You know. Yeah. You're you're painting the same model over and over. But the eyeball on this guy is not defined at all. Mm. The trunk, his like snout. There's like a. It's not black in there or anything. Mm. It's just the same green. A lot of mold lines. Um, the, the basing looks great, though, man. The basing looks awesome. Yep. It's static grass. I'm guessing it's Luke's APS uh, uh, basing materials, which is awesome line. Uh, but it's like static grass with some, you know, uh, rocks and stuff in there. And grungy stuff. Yeah, and, and then you got the little bit of resin. Yeah. It looks great. It looks awesome. Yeah, I, li I like them. They're, they're really cool. Uh, they have nice definition. Uh, and these are a step above what I would consider to be even tabletop. Uh so you know, yeah, they, these they look feel great. they feel really really gross. But like the fly eyes on these, you can see they just blend in. And like I said, I'm yeah, guessing yep. you got to the point of just like yeah, they look good. Let's get them on the table. Yep. Yep. Um, some extra definition on some of the guts would help too. Even yeah. a little bit of a, a purple or red. And um, Corey, you know this. I mean, I, I, you know so. what I mean. I know you know this stuff too. We're yep. just kind of telling you what you know, but. Yep. Um, Adding in a little bit of bone on the back too wouldn't be bad to define their kind of their um, their spines and whatnot. Even might help. Might a, help. A little bit of blood for the blood god. A little bit of blood for the blood god. Don't go ham on it. Uh, again, I know, right? Yeah, Liam said the only time uh, Nurgle. The only time this model looks disgusting is a compliment. Yep. <laughs> this is this is absolutely horrific. Yeah. I can't. Well, believe and it's it. nice because the bases are kind of serene. Yeah. It's not that normal, like, trudging through snot. It's yep. like, there is there is that gross, toxic-ish green, but it's also almost like a serene, like, you know, pasture. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. It's cool. Yeah, it's it's nice swamp, kind of that swamp meadow. Yeah. Yeah. So I I like it for that. It, it feels, it, it, it's cohesive, and they feel like they're in their environment. Oh, yeah. Which is great. A so. lot, lot of mold lines, though. Yeah. Which, you know, that's the way yep. it is. You got to clean up, especially with, with, uh, with, um, I want to say poxwalkers with plague bears. I always want to call them poxwalkers too. Um, is that they're just they they have a lot of mold lines that kind of hide in places that you want. Yeah, the dry brushing will pick up. I I do like the blades though. They're like black with that. It's almost they are, necron. They are. They I I wish there was a little more highlighting on them to make them pop a bit more because sure. right now they kind of blend into the skin tone and they can kind of get lost in uh, in against the skin tone, especially like this middle guy here. Um, just because of the same kind of wash as you, fella. Yeah, the the buggy, pe the buggy, buggy pe boy, <laughs> buggy boy. So, yeah, but I I think an excellent, excellent uh, uh, unit. Yeah. So great cohesion. Yeah, great cohesion. 
Good job, Coco. All right. Up next, what do we? Who do we got? What are we doing? Uh, we got? I think we're gonna do Miles. Miles. All right. Miles has got his White Scar Intercessors. The uh, the crispiest boys. Also for unit, if you have yeah extra points, if you have a uh, a, a, a movement tray, because <laughs> it just made it that much easier to move a whole a whole bunch of models. You get ten points to Gryffindor. I'm a Slytherin. Well, it can't all be perfect. I'm just a I'm not, Mel, I'm not a fanboy. I'm not a I'm not a, a Gryffindor either. <laughs> My best friend is. Yeah, best I hate friend. J.K. Rowling though. That's no, too bad. Let's not get that twisted. Yeah. yeah. All right, so more of the same. I, I have to say, more of the same. I'm going to brighten this up a bit. More of the same with these models for the um, uh, that we looked at with Khan is it. These ones feel a little more gritty. I think it's because the um, the panel lining is a little bit looser on these than the other one. They look greasy. They, yeah, they look greasy. They yeah. look grimy, yeah. which which is helpful. Yeah. Uh, to, to them overhaul because I think overall they all feel kind of grimy and greasy yep. a little bit a little bit cartoony a little bit yeah like panels yeah they got that cell shade look which is really cool paint um, those jetpack holes there yeah 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 so uh, having uh some good definition has helped you out right here you know uh but same thing as before having some of those extra cleanup is really going to help you out. Also, these are all 3D printed like aftermarket helmets that are really cool. Cool. Like samurai style? Yeah. yeah those are cool. Drilling out your barrels, of course, is going to step you up. These are third-party shoulder pads too. Uh, so kind of having that cool definition of the 3D effect. So you captured it well with the edges uh, to make them pop. Uh, and you did a really good job with that, Miles. Uh, but having that extra cleanup effort on them too is really going to help sell those lines. That's the one. So here's my here's my stance on the whole heavy metal style that GW loves to loves to do, and they yeah. that, that is their style. Is edge highlighting is hard. Edge highlighting takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort yeah. to do, and executing it well when it's done well is amazing. Yeah, but it's not the only way to paint, and that's I think what frustrates me with with the heavy metal style that they they love to you know, beat on that horse because it is their style. It sells their line, the whole yeah. thing like that it is people sometimes will feel like they have to do it in that style. And you don't, Yeah, you absolutely don't have to. There's, there's grim dark style. There's uh, super saturated styles. There's the helmets uh, are very cool. Yeah. There's, there's dry brushing. There's all sorts of cool things that you can do um, that you don't have to, you don't have to stick with their, their heavy metal, metal style. More power to you if you do. Yeah. Like, you know, um, the, the free hand on the, the shin guards and the knees is well done. Um, a little bit more definition would be helpful. I think that's overall when I come to miles work is that, that it's just a little bit more definition, a little bit help. of cleanup yep. yeah, from here. Cleanup, I'm three feet away and I can see that they need a little bit of cleanup in mm -hmm. some, some spots, but it's the same issue that you had with your other one. Yep. Um, same deal. You, you, you did a great job. It's just a little bit of cleanup. Yeah, a little, little bit, bit of cleanup. Cleanup on the on the helmets uh, would be helpful too, yeah. because they they have like this cool skull effect inside that uh, that would really benefit from having some uh, some definition in there uh, to make them pop out. Um, but overall, you're really leaning into the cell shade style, and I love that. Yeah, it's cool. Um, if you're going to continue with the cell shade style, though, continue on to like the leather packs. Uh, so you know. Because you have it on the on the red and on you know with the black and the and the white, um, so do it on you know more on the yellow, uh, and then um, you know define some of your extra edges and then the leather too. So, um, but yeah, like I, I love the addition of the third party bits with this. I think the sword that this guy is holding on to also, yeah, it's uh, huge. has he's he's definitely cool. he's definitely gonna gonna lob some heads samurai style but i think that is i, I think that is a third party bit so they're, they're really awesome so i i, I really love them uh, yeah. i think I, again adding on to the previous statement just a little bit of cleanup 
would go a long way with these guys. And and having that heavier style with the cell shade is not going to be a bad thing. But yeah. definitely make it. Uh, you want to you want to make them crisp. Uh, and if you can't make them crisp, you make them look kind of. Uh, if you're going to go that route, you have to go. You yeah, have to you commit. Have, yeah, you, you have, have to, commit. to commit to it. If you can't make them crisp, look at like something like um, Borderlands. Yeah. Because you can add a little, uh, little, oh, I can't make that crisp. Cool. I'll add another line uh, of black on top of it. and it looks Which like may be a, more work, yeah, but it'll look but better. But it'll look way better. So um, you can you can look at, like, Borderlands for that style of, of um, cell shading. Yep. And that, that that's like a two-tone uh, with heavy lines, like comic book style, and it executes it so well. So. Very cool. Yeah, man. And the basing. And the basing. I, w- I would do a little bit extra. The yep. Basing. Yep. Um, I don't see any tufts. I mean, no, that's. Uh, but there, there is some <laughs> painting that needs to be done on some of the basing and yep. the... adding some more detail to it would yep. be nice. Yeah, the, it it definitely feels cohesive with uh, with like Khan, uh, with his previous model. Mm-hmm. Um, so army wide, it's probably got that same feel. Yeah. But adding in a bit more to help, uh you know, put your models in where they're standing or at least giving them, you know, maybe putting a little bit of uh, uh, texture onto their boots so that it feels like, Oh, they're on a moonscape or they're, they're in more of a uh, urban dusty terrain where they got a, you know, like concrete dust is kicking up. Well, not only that, remember you're, you're in a paint competition. You know, I know these are models in your army. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's, I base those because I had to base a thousand models. Yes. But if you're going to base a, or if you're going to put a unit in paint competition, you got to go above and beyond. Yeah. You got to, you got to really set it apart, which could be said about like Sealy's too. Uh, Rob's models, they're, they're based for an army, which is cool. That's great. But you, you know, you need them to stand, uh, each one of them needs to stand apart from each other. Yeah. In, but they also need to feel cohesive in their in their basing, so you need to. That's why I like that. Corey's a lot. Yeah, because there, there's a lot of detail and a lot of effort went into yep. those bases. They weren't just like, oh, I have to do 50 models. Yeah, I have to do 50 models, and the bases have to look co- cohesive, and they have to tell and a story. And they have to tell a story. Yeah, it's, and, and like Rob's, Rob's has that too, but yep. but to kind of a middle ground uh, degree, it, it tells a story and it has that kind of icy landscape, but it doesn't have. You know, it, it's still somewhat plain, in especially for a uh, a professional grade painting competition. So there's that. Yeah. So, so you're cool. Fired. Yeah. All right. Next Thank you, Miles. Up. I'll give Rob a hug later. He'll he'll forgive me. I think maybe. Who do we got next? We got we got two we more. Chris F. Yeah, we could do Chris and then and then have uh, Mr. Nichols for last. That works. Trade you. Yeah. Here you are. Not my reach. Switch cameras so you're not just looking at my hand the entire time. Yeah, it's, I know. A lot of bros. A lot of Canadians. Me? Ooh, lots of Canadian veterans there, don't you know? Why do I like make noises getting up and out of the chair? Am I already that old You're or old. fat? Yep. It's just like, ugh. I feel it too. You got two kids, so that's how uh, it goes. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can get a little bit of focus. Boomer. Yeah, well, yeah, well you, know, you know, whatever, dude. It happens. I am what I am. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is Chris's unit. All right. And these are. Beautifully done. Yeah. Uh, it's hard. Hey, it's, something happened. No, so, something did something with the whatnot. I heard a noise. Yeah. Someone, uh, first time chat. First time chatter. Hey, Acidic Horizon. Gamer. Gamer. I don't know. Are you calling me a gamer? Because I'm. I'm a gamer. I play Elden Ring. <laughs> Do cool. you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate myself. Come on. That much. You know what? Nobody's seen the Batman, and it's really upsetting me. I wish somebody would see the Batman so I can talk server. to somebody about it. I don't. I haven't watched it. It's so good. It's so good. Anyway, yeah. this is this is a this is a painting competition. Oh, are we still doing yeah, that? Yeah, we're still doing that. Oh, all right, all right, cool. So we got some Canadian <laughs> veterans Canadian straight from Canada. From Canada, <laughs> where uh, where uh, Abaddon oh. the destroyer, uh, despoiler, <laughs> just decided to eat a planet-sized thing into another planet because he was angry. He has anger issues. And he's salty about it. 
Yeah, but that's not what the Cadians did. No, the planet broke before the uh, before the guard did. So just remember that when we look at these models, because they're beautiful. They are. So yeah, they they're really cool. Um, Chris, I'm looking at a lot of the like the trench coats that they have, and they're really well done. I wish that you had more definition. You have the the shadows uh, excellently like knocked out of the park, and you have the mid tones to kind of frame them in nicely. But adding in a little bit more highlight would help exemplify some of those edges, um, especially on like these guys. This guy right here, he's got almost pooling in some areas of where that wash would be, and it's nice and thinned, so it doesn't feel like it's it's super pooled wash. But some extra definition would go a long way. Um, the the plasma being having that yellow glow, the yellow and orange glow against the green is a nice contrast. It really helps push that that visual appeal on the guns or the tufts on the guns the guns are awesome the guns that, are awesome and, like. and and i appreciate that you didn't try and do uh you didn't try and like push it with osl yeah. so sometimes having that crisp look without having the glow is not a bad thing uh sometimes i feel like people think they need to do uh osl because they have something that glows and not mm -hmm. always don't don't always feel that you have to do it um these guys feel like they, they're they're ready to get into the mud and into the muck. Um, but saying that, there are also not a lot of highlights on these models. And not a lot of highlights. No, they they have a lot of uh, shadows and mid tones. Like you went back in and you filled back mm -hmm. in a lot of the a lot of the shadows so that you defined the shadows and then you stopped. You did a good job painting the models. They're painted really well. Yeah, they are. But then they're not highlighted at all. Oh, uh, but you got the you got the teeth the shadow and the underneath eyes. the shoulder pads. Yeah. yeah. You did you did yeah, a you really did. good job. Yeah, it, you you drilled the barrels. Oh my god. Hold on. Uh, just one of them. No, nope, no. Nope. The last the last guns are not. Oh. The last guns don't have any. The the overpowered flashlights. <laughs> uh Yeah, like uh, a little more definition on on the uh on the metal bits. And when, uh, when I say when I say way. there's no highlights, I don't I don't mean like there's none at all. There's just if you look at it, their uh, their coats are painted really well, but they're flat. Yeah. There's not a yeah. lot of uh, you know, like there's no dust or debris on their coats. Maybe it's dry, maybe there isn't happening, but there's, there's not, not but there's not like edges there's to nothing it. There's, there. there's nothing that uh, that pushes up where okay, so you have the mid tone, but where's the highlight? Yep. Where's the where's the extra where's the light falling that's the brightest? Because you have the shadows where the, the light is not falling, yeah. but where's the high, you know, the points at which light is falling the most on it. And some um, of these cat jackets are in the dirt. Yeah. And it would be nice to see that weathering up, yep, that up extra the boots, bit. on the jackets. Yep. Um, I do like that you added the pink to the tufts. It's kind of weird. Those those are uh, those are actual tufts that come that way. Oh, are they They're like really? an alien landscape? Yeah, and I, I like that it, it kind of gives a nice pop. It does. It, it does. looks it, it weird, adds, but it's cool. Yeah, it, it's kind of weird in that alien kind of aspect. Yeah. Um, God, you could just as easily paint those. Yeah. I do. Uh, so in opposition to uh, to Rob's like non-metallic metal, you did a really good job in capturing metallics, um, especially the bronze and, and kind of gold because they're, they're kind of washed down. Uh, don't be afraid to do a little bit extra highlighting on them uh, to push them up. So, because you wanted to have that glint, same same thing with the same thing that you have with the jackets too. It's like you you have the the low light and the middle light. Give me the highlights. Yeah, um, you're just that's what you're missing. Everything man, else yeah. is spot on. Everything man. else is spot on. The detail on on this guy's like book. Yeah, is the writing in the book. The uh, hats are even yep. so well painted, but there's no highlight on the hats. They're oh, so muted. Yeah, the the eyes. You did all of the eyes. They all have uh, uh, pupils that point in the same direction. Like they all look like they're looking at someone. It's great. Yeah. Uh, so a actually, a really good advice that I had for eyes came from uh, uh, Miniac. Yeah. So he said, uh, so a lot of these look like they were using a, a micron pen. <laughs> uh, a micron pen, mm -hmm. and so you you dot the eyes, which is a great great technique yeah. um, because it makes it easy. However, his advice was always put the dot on the inner part of the eye towards the nose because no matter where they're looking, you'll you'll never have like the the them facing out like this because you, when you're trying to angle it in to to, to poke the the eye in, you'll always hit like some weird direction and it'll be directionalized at where, whatever <laughs> angle you came in. 
So if you, <coughs> if you put it towards the inner part of the eye, yeah. you'll always have them looking exa- like towards something. Sure. They'll always be pointed like across, toward, their yeah, eyes across their eyes at a, at a focal point. Yeah. And if you have that, then they look straight on. Yeah. And I'll be honest, it's the best technique that I've run into for doing eyes simple, quick, and easy. Yeah. It's, it l- makes them look so good. Corey was the one that uh, post divinity. The guy in the chat here. Well, I, I guess you guys can't see chat, so they can all, see chat. Can they, they see they chat? They can read chat. No, they're, you can't. They're typing chat. Yeah, I know. I went out and looked on the TV. The chat's empty. Oh well, they can see it. They can't see it on this stream. They can see it when they're talking to each other. Oh, on Twitch. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the chat bot is broken, but the actual chat on the side of the screen works. Oh, oh gotcha. Yeah, so it's yeah, not on the so, screen, but yeah, it's yeah, over yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're talking to no Well, Post now. Divinity, uh, uh, Corey, he was the one that was talking about using the, those Micron pens. Yep. And I was, because he did Thousand Suns and he did a ton of Thousand Suns. I'm like, how did you detail all that? And he's like, Micron pen. I'm like, yep. that's genius. Yep. You can do a lot of, uh, like, for, for miles too, uh, with a Micron pen, you can, you can cheat through a ton of, uh, or like, doing all that cell shading with a Micron pen. Yeah. You seal it nicely with a nice varnish, let it dry for the love of God, let it dry. Yeah. And then, and then go through and do a Micron pen yeah. and you can, you can just knock them all out. Yeah. It's really cool. Super because smart. You'll, you'll have that control. I mean, it's cheating. If you do it, you're a cheater. No, it's not. It's, <laughs> I will say kidding. this. It's not cheating. Some people say that like airbrushing is cheating. No, or, it's a tool. It's a tool. Yeah. yeah. If it works, if it works, it's not stupid. Cheating. When it's yeah. Well, yeah, those are pretentious <laughs> painters who, who have no right holding a holding a paintbrush, and I will state that to one of those pretentious painters that don't deserve holding a paintbrush. Yeah. As nothing is cheating. Nothing is cheating. Everything is permissible. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be something cheating, right? Something's got to be. I guess you've unless unless you somebody to paint for you. Yeah, and then you claim that it's your own. That's cheating. Yep, you're a cheater, Troy. That that's cheating. Come on, Troy. Try harder, man. Everything is cheating. <laughs> Whenever, <laughs> Nothing oh, is cheating. When everything, when is, everything cheating. is cheating? Nothing <laughs> is cheating. All right. All right. I believe the last one, that is truly, I mean, it is only cheating if you get caught. That 100%. is absolutely 100% true. All right. Well, thank you, Chris, for entering in these absolutely beautiful, <laughs> they look great, beautifully man. painted uh, Canadians. Chris, Canadians. F is for friends. Yeah. I, I love this. They're, they're really cool. So you did a great job. But we'll know they're there. We will. <laughs> it's going to hurt me. Break your break your heart. You'll start judging them based, on, <laughs> judging Ryan's based on on Chris's. Yeah. If you just had the There's highlights on that green, yeah, models. man, what's going on? You're playing with that that contrast a lot. Yep, it's on a movement tray. Extra extra points for movement trays. And the tufts. All right. <laughs> So this is Mr. Nichols Stone Guard. Yeah, if you don't mix your own pigments, you're cheating. Yeah. Unless you pull the pigments up from the ground and crush them uh, yourself. You're, you're doing it wrong. You're, you're cheating every time. Are those hand drawn decals on there? Uh some of them are. So okay. like so like these ones back here and up top are uh eh, they no, not all of them are. Like these ones are the ones back on this cloak over here are all decals, but they're excellently placed. Capes are looking great. The capes they are looking are great. They are spicy. They, they, in my eyes, especially as a unit, they look cohesive. Like mm-hmm. everything overall looks cohesive. I would say that they need a, a bit more highlighting. I could see uh, that, especially against the the white itself. The white needs a little bit. White more highlighting. needs something. Yeah, the white needs something like right here. You can tell that the, it has a bit of wash on it that has been um, pulled up and off, uh, and and I like that. It looks good. Like it looks really excellent, um, but it it needs an extra little bit of highlighting. Um, the weapons are beautiful. Yeah, the, like they the, feel the unique. The gradient between yeah. the yellow and, and orange looks really great. Yep, and then the the difference between the yellow and orange, and then like the the hammer yeah. ends look really cool. Um, I would say that the uh, the definition between the armor panels and like their the padded bits need a bit more. Uh, maybe need a different definition, but like on this guy's shoulder pad, it looks really crisp. Yeah. So um, maybe it's just some of them versus all of them. Um, but and you did a lot of gloss on the. Uh, mm-hmm. the what are those? Is, it, is that like a blade? It, I think it's a like a hammer pike blade. or something like that. It's really uh, cool. This guy's hair is like the faces are gorgeous, yeah. but this hair is really flat. It doesn't have a lot to it that that really sets it apart. 
which is a which is a bummer because I, I feel like it could be a really nice defining feature for it. The gems are well done. I like this kind of um, almost uh, Robin's Turquoise. yeah Robin's yeah. egg blue kind of style. The bases the bases are excellent. A lot of toughs. A lot of toughs. A tough tough sell. But like mm -hmm. there's like a, a thing of wheat on one side or like grown grass uh, that's well painted, <coughs> and then the rocks to feel they they add to the environment themselves. Yeah. Um, I will say that, that like a lot of the other ones that we've seen, adding some extra little, uh, you know, the environment to the models themselves, uh, you know, that needs a little bit more to it because, you know, they might be walking through dirt, but there'll still be some dirt on the bottom of their clothes. Those, yeah, those cloaks are far too low to the ground to not have any dirt on yeah. them at all. They, they don't really pop out with anything to them. So, oh, there is a there is some definition between the the cloaks and the armor themselves. It's subtle, um, but it, it I, I feel like the highlighting is really well done. It adds to it, um, but having a little bit more definition wouldn't be a bad thing. Yeah. Ooh, now, that uh, this uh, this pike has been broken before. He fixed it. Nice. All right. <laughs> Gotta love that. Um, you know, in in, in Opposition between like non-metallic metals and metallic metals because I feel like non-metallic has started to take off recently as as a, like a you need to do yeah you have to do non-metallic metal to make it look good you don't you you really can there's there's a lot of really good techniques to make something look or have a, a true metallic but you can't just um a lot of times people will will just drop down a single dry brush or color of whatever it might be, whatever metallic color it might be, and then stop there. They won't go further than that. They won't add a highlighting. And I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. So I'm not gonna claim that I'm like, uh, I'm super high and mighty. You should take a look at my knights. They look pretty plain Jane when it comes to that. So adding in some extra definition and using metallic paint as another paint that you still need to, you still need to define. You still need to have highlights and lowlights. You still need to make sure that you are um, placing it in the environment that it's in. You need to make sure that you're not just uh, settling in on a wash and then leaving it alone. Yeah. And and that as a whole, I think, if you treat a metallic paint as uh, as just a flat paint, uh, you know, a lot of people will do that and say, well, it's true true metal and, and yeah. I can't the I light can't will take care of the rest yeah the light will take care of the rest no you need to help the light along to give you that that aspect the thing that I notice in here I'd like to see this a different color inside there you yeah. know what I mean just to break up all the white now that's an artistic choice and, and so the I blue, can't say that it has to be that way but I think something just needs to break up it needs it needs that little pop now I, I will say between the whites because one of these whites is more blue and the other one is more like a, of a black base sure so it, it pops a bit more in that way and the separation of whites is really well done here um but yeah I would agree it that's why I'm like the highlights feel really good uh, and they're they're nice and well defined but the tone it is you kind of get lost in it. Everything's yeah, the every, same. Everything's color. kind of the same. Now he did differentiate between the whites, which is cool, but and there's different kinds of whites. But again, it's I think the highlight that you're looking for is is not as defined as well as you want yeah, it to go a little bit more. Yeah, and and in some of the areas, like on the shoulder pads, there's a nice amount of definition. There's a nice amount of highlighting, but like on the on the cloaks themselves or the robes, there's not nearly as much. And I think that's where you're getting lost, maybe. So, but I, I could be high. I, I think know. you are. That, that happens. Um, all right. Well, it is 2 p.m. This is the last unit. Do we want to... How many more um, uh, uh, models? Yeah. Entries. I don't know. I was going to say, we, we should take a small break. Yeah, because we got vehicle. We have vehicle, monster. vehicle, monster, Titanic, and open. Okay. So we have we have three more categories. Um, should we take a break for like grab some food? Sure. And uh, then we can come back to it. Yeah. So have a couple beers. Yeah. Cool. A couple shots of whiskey. <laughs> Fun. I got some. All right, everyone. Uh, we will be back. Grab some food. Shortly. Yeah. We'll grab some food and then we'll be back with a vehicle what, and monster. Thirty minutes, hour or what? 
let's do uh, let's do thirty minutes. So we'll be back at two thirty. Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna let I'm gonna uh, we can leave someone's model on there, or uh, or put the door of an axe. We'll put the door of an axe to spin around. You guys can enjoy these uh, sultry sounds of some lo-fi. So, <laughs> so we'll see you back at two thirty, gentlemen. See you then, gentlemen and ladies and folks.
right, before you unmute us, we've got to really talk about all these paint oh, jobs. okay. All right. <laughs> well, dang. Because we're unmuted. Oh, we're here. shoot. Oh, no. All right. Uh, hopefully, everyone hasn't, uh, hasn't fallen asleep or died. Um, that would be bad. We lose most of our viewership on, uh, on that. Our sponsorships, no. All of our sponsorships, <laughs> All our are, sponsorships gone. are gone. No. Uh, so, welcome back. We uh, shoved McDonald's down our gullets, and it was delicious, delicious. in the worst way possible. So, uh, I feel crappy. The, the battery died on this. Oh, did it? Yeah, so I had to swap it out. <laughs> so, that was. Well, that actually that was worked cool. perfect right yeah, there. There, 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 there. There you go. There you go. Uh, so yeah, it, it worked out perfectly for timing. Nice. So that's good. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Welcome back. We're going to be doing the vehicle and monster category right now. Uh, starting out strong. We're, we're starting with, I'm going to turn down some of the white on that. There we go. Uh, this is David Filger, Filger, Flager. I actually don't know. Filger. I've never, I've never met this man in my life. Me neither. Oh. Uh, I probably have. I just don't That's know. That's cool. Yeah, That's you might not cool. want to say that too loudly. I can get away with it because I don't. Oh, I probably uh, met David. Yeah. I mean, I'm, one probably of us has. With him. Took it, yeah, we took his model in. He, he, uh, he, you know, you're a godfather to his kid. Yeah, I do so a lot of know. drugs. <laughs> 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 that makes a lot of sense. Uh, cool. <laughs> uh, this repulsor, uh, just, uh, it it instantly popped out to me when I was yeah. looking at it in the uh, in the case. It was just so cool. Uh, it's well done, well executed for the edging. Um, yeah. Iron hands. Uh, again, black, it's interesting because black and white are those two colors that you think, oh, this will be easy. It'll yeah. be super simple. Like, you just, uh, it's black's a color. It's like, what do you do? Uh, it's super difficult to, yeah. to execute black really well. So, um, the edge know. highlighting is so good. Yeah, the edge highlighting is really good. Uh, the blues, it, it's a little dusty. It's a little... Uh, uh, it, it's dry brushed on, but it's dry brushed on in such a way that it doesn't like, uh, it doesn't impede the flat areas. It definitely catches the the edges, so that's really cool. Um, it, it's more of the same with, I hate to say more of the same with it, but it's it's the kind of the the continuation of the of the trend we've seen where it's it's um you know shadows have been captured, mid tones have been captured, but there's no highlights. So like on these. On these cases right here, there's yeah. some edging. There's some edging. Like you put back the uh, the mid tone, which is great because it, it because it actually looks like it pops out a bit more. But having some extra highlights on these cases right here, he actually has some. And on these lights, it's it's more mid tone back because it's been washed down and then it's been mid toned back up. Um, but there's nothing more than that. Also, the the stubber barrel isn't drilled out, but everything else is. And the 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 backside, the rocket propulsion kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's very there's there's no highlighting at all on any of that yep. the metal. Yep. And you'd think there'd be some like I don't know like soot or something mm -hmm. from back there. Maybe it looks little, very clean. Yeah, and maybe a little bit of color variation between the yeah. metallics that you have on them, like on these front skids uh, or the same with this, this whole side. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have a lot of flat panels that don't have a lot of things on them. They're a great area to put decals on. And, and I can tell that you do decals because you have them on, like, the shoulder pad up there. You got them on the front. So you definitely are not afraid to get your hands dirty with decals. So having some on the sides here would be really cool. On the doors, on the sides. Even doing a little freehand writing uh, would be really good. You can use the, the Micron pen idea and just do... Um, uh, I've done scribble writing where because at this scale, you... I mean, you can get some letters, so I'll do like a major letter in a in a bright like uh, red. Okay. A and then I'll do uh, with an off white. I'll do like <clears throat> little scribbles uh, uh, to use my brush uh, without getting any words. But that way, I can like write out a a paragraph without it looking weird. Yeah. Uh, and it and it executes really nicely. So. Um, you have well defined edges and well defined groupings. Uh, of like the model overall, so like you didn't skimp on the the antenna up here. Uh, you know, there's there's bits and bobs that have different colors on them. The lights in the front uh, all have like a yellow. Um, the eyes painted in. Um, all the little uh, reticules are all 
all painted. So, and, and it's not like you painted this entire thing a metallic, like you didn't paint the, the chain gun a metallic color only. So it tells me that you actually have a, a, a good amount of uh, focus on detail, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but it, it just needs that extra step, I think. Of it's very highlight. flat. Yeah, it it's needs that extra areas. highlight areas, and I think it needs an extra, uh, it needs some, yeah, something to break up that flatness, something to break up that, that uh, sameness that flows throughout the model. Yeah. Um, it's so, really clean. It is super clean. But also, that, there's basing, which is great. Yeah. There's actual basing down here. There's rocks. There's tufts. There's tufts. Um, you know, so it, it's definitely in its environment. It's it's you know trimmed around. But so, there's no dirt on the machine. There's nope. no there's no debris weathering. Yep. There, it's just too clean. It is it's really clean. so clean. Which it's like I, it, it just came off the ship and it's just like set down. Yep. It just set down. I, I will say that some folks. Not me. Love yeah. to do a very clean, uh, clean look to their models, and and I'm not going to disagree with that because I think it's a technique and a style that that a lot of people have of their own volition. They want that, yeah. and I'm not going to take that away from anyone and say, oh, it should be weathered because blah. I I feel for me it it uh, cracking that beer. Yeah. There we go. I hold up here. <laughs> uh, I feel that weathering adds an extra something to a model. Uh, that you don't get if it's just if it's just purely clean. Yeah. Um, well, in how, a paint competition, I guess your your model's telling a story, right? Yep. So yeah, it's like exactly. having that weathering is part of the, and not necessarily weathering as in like mud the whole friggin' thing up, but like you know the the ports of the guns, the gun barrels, the you know different things. They've I'm guessing they've fired around or they've you know yeah. blasted out energy out the back of these things, which has heated things up and like created you know some type of discoloration or soot or something other than just like oh it's plopped down right here on the ground it yep. just came off the ship it's like which is fine um but a, in a situation like this where there is ground there is a base there should be something that brings the base and the model together instead yep. of the base and the model separate yeah and 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 that comes back again to the clean, uh, clean factor. And again, you, like you said, you can have a clean model, but have it be in its environment, yeah. so without it just being kind of plopped on top of it. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that that really covers the kind of the breadth and width that we we're going for. There, there is something about this top gun. It's though. so pristine. It, it's, it doesn't. There's it's not pristine. missing something. Yeah, but it, like the casing up here needs something to break it up. Yeah. I feel. It's like the last thing you painted, and you were like, "All right, I'm done." Yep. Oh God, I've I've done that a thousand. The times. number, the yeah, the number of things that I've just been like, "Finally, it's done. I can, it's I, I can ship it." Kind hey, of is every is there anybody in chat still? Like, message message in chat if you're there. Can you give a Can you give a shout out? Yeah, because no, I'm yeah. I'm looking, I'm seeing, and I can't see anybody in chat. There's anymore. there's ten viewers. We yeah. we have currently ten viewers, so it's something. People are there. They're just very shy. Me, Ryan, Trent, you, Alex. Yeah. Yep. It's five of us. But I'm not a viewer. <laughs> I am. You're always a viewer. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, David, thank you so much. It looks great, dude. This looks, this looks fantastic. But it's it's kind of like the reoccurring theme of today is go a little above and beyond. Push yourself yep. a little bit harder and you'll come up with something beautiful. You know, I mean, this is clean. This is super clean. Oh, yeah. But it's missing its environment. It's missing its. If you if you you know look at reference photos. You know look at a pull up a gun, <clears throat> and look at reference photos, and you know pull up a tank. Now I know it's not you know a hovercraft of some sort or a pulser, but it's you know look at like what it looks like. Even a clean tank that just landed on the ground and it's been going for just a couple of feet is going to get debris on its yeah. you know tracks. It's going to get debris on the machine itself, and which is. You know, I feel like part of the whole competition is that story you're telling. Me. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, and 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 this is uh, technically the third time that we've done this event. But I would say, as kind of a takeaway for a lot of folks, having a story being told is the biggest thing that you can tell a, a viewer or a judge or someone else. Is what are you trying to portray? Yeah. <clears throat> what story are you telling? And that that will. Even to yourself, it'll make painting it that much easier. Yeah. Uh, well, if, I was just talking to two uh, two people outside that had a couple of their entries, and they they were. I was telling them like, "Oh yeah, you saw the you saw the video," and they're like, "Yeah, we saw it." And and those are 
they were trying to explain to me what was on the model itself. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that because the model didn't convey that. So yeah. that's, that's kind of where if you're going to be judged for what you have, you have to convey exactly what you're trying <clears throat> to do and using tools outside of your comfort level. Like this person said that they used a, a different version of their brush that they didn't even know that the brush did that. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's so smart. Yeah. But then go above and beyond with that extra little part that I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that was that, yeah. you know? And, yeah. and, you know, I talked to them and I, hopefully they gained some information out of it, but. Well, and, and uh, it'd be really cool if eventually we could open up a, almost a diorama category where you could have a write up next to it and have like, what is happening in this scene specifically? and have that information being able to be portrayed to the judge or the viewer because then you get a lot more information out of it. I, I know um, I had a bust in here recently to, to go on a, uh, um, a tirade or a whatever. Um, but the, the bust, I, I had... Troy's back. Yeah. I had, I had labeled it uh, as the last party member. And I was, I was painting, and I'm like, what is the motivation for this old... Uh, I also misread the type of model. I thought that it was a, it was a fighter. It was actually old farmer. Retired oh. farmer, so I had that completely wrong. But it got me thinking, like, this is a retired fighter, and he's the he's the last party member. He's the last one of his D&D party. Yeah. So what does that look like? How do I portray emotion on his face? How do I give him that feeling of... He's watched all of his <laughs> friends die. Yeah. yeah, and I had it, like, I had built a whole story around it where he was looking up at the sky as he was camping somewhere, and a flash of light goes across, and it's a it's another star in the sky. And he remembers back to when a goddess had promised him and his party that they would be eternalized in the stars. Yeah. And so he's slowly watched every star pop into existence in this constellation, knowing that his last friend from that group had died. Uh, and it's like, that's I, cool. It, it was really, it, it was really weighty when I was making this bust, and no one but me knows that because I had, you know, I wrote it yeah. up. But I appreciated the the conceptualizing of, like, what story am I telling myself or trying to convey to the person that's looking at this and seeing the tears in his eyes, the the, the, the weariness on his face. You he's know, the how, final. Yeah, ever. he's the final one. So it's like, how do you portray that? No, honestly, you don't. That's very That's heavy very deep. And very deep and very creative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, but you don't have to have that, no. that hardcore one. I mean, this guy, you know, they could have just gotten off the ship <laughs> and they're ready to kick some ass yeah, and take some names battle. like that. You yeah, know, like, whatever it is. Know? As um, long as you're in the headspace of that marine and where that yeah. uh, repulsor is, yeah, because you you want to take that and, Hello. and run with it. Oh, this so. is his model. This is uh, oh, Mendel 2022. Heck yeah! This no, is this is sweet. This is great, man. This is a great model, and I hope you heard everything we, we said. If not, it's recorded and yeah. we're gonna put yeah. it on YouTube. Yeah, I'm waxing poetic over here. Um, um, but, yeah, but yeah, I mean, just to kind of rehash real quick. Uh, very clean, very, very clean. Could use a little bit of uh, environmental work where, you know, where are you? What's going on? Um, why is it on this planet? Why is it Why is yep. it here? And yep. obviously you don't have to go that deep with it, but just kind of that like, oh, cool. It's been riding around. You yep. know what I mean? Like yep. I see add, where it's been. Add some feel to it. And, you know, it might even be really cool if it was, uh, if you had this with a display board or something like that where you had um, them coming off of a ship. Yeah onto a planet and then you could kind of portray that by showing it on the display board. Sometimes I feel like display boards do a really good idea, a really good concept of like giving you space with a bunch of individual models sure. in a in whole. So it would have been nice if it would have came with a hundred dollar bill too. You know, yeah, you know, really nice we accept bribes of all kinds. <laughs> um, booze, uh, money, <coughs> food, food's good. Well, David, it looks great, man. Yeah, David, this is We're excellent. Move on man. to the next one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do we got? What are we doing? What exactly... <clears throat> Rob Seeley's another themed? another Seely special. Oh, sweet Mahler fiend or Forge fiend. I'm sorry, it's a Forge fiend. <clears throat> oh boy! Hey, boy! All right, awesome. You're gonna have a blast with weathering. As, oh God! As and clean as your model I, is, dirtying it up is so much fun. See when you when you. Uh, when you weather something, uh, it, it it you have to clean or you have to paint something super clean first before you weather it. Yeah. Because if you try and do it in between, it does not work. Yeah. Because you need it to be at a uh, the the best advice that I got for weathering something was actually from Adam Savage. Uh, he was doing his um like one day creation things and he had a he had an airsoft gun. Yeah. 
he had an airsoft gun that he wanted to weather up. And he goes, you have to have it clean and then dirty it. Mm-hmm. And then try and clean it. He's like it. a master weatherer. <clears throat> yeah. But he goes, the, the best way to weather something naturally, to make it feel natural, is to have something be clean, throw a ton of dirt at it, and then clean it off. Yeah. And then do it again. And then do it again. Because that you'll never get all of the dirt off of something ever. And so having it's kind of it's kind of deep and philosophical, but uh, <laughs> you'll never be able to get it completely clean again. So you can um, you can always like add to it, yeah, and then try and take some of it away and make it feel like okay, what would it look like if it was completely clean? Yep. And then you know what dirt, what grime, what you know engine grease and things are going to be left on there because it's just not not what happens. Well, time happens. The yeah, time happens. Um, we have not done uh, Scarbrand yet, so you have not missed and that yet. The Repulsor was right before this, and then this is the Forge Fiend. This is a Forge Fiend from Rob Seeley. He did a really good job doing. Speaking of solid weathering, he he did that here, where it's it's uh, not overtly weathered. Uh, it definitely have has its points. Um, you can see where things have pooled up for uh, for grime and things. Um, especially over here, but there's a little. It, it's a. Uh, it's pulled up heavily along some of the shoulder pads. He did a really good job with the, the hazard stripes. Yeah, those look really for good. sure. They're placed. Unless are they painted on? Yeah, they're, yeah, painted, they're painted. Yeah, they look really good. Yeah, they look really good. Um, the glow effect is a little, a uh, little lacking. Yeah, the OSL looks uh, a little different. Yeah, it's so it, weird. And it and it's it's not like it's not super hot, which is okay because it's only portraying past the skulls a little bit, but it's not catching up on the on the armor plating that's above it. Uh, as well, there's a lot of mold lines, a lot of seam lines around it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is excellent work from, from Rob, especially for table. Like, on table, this this would, thing would be terrifying to run through. Um, but, yeah, it, it's got... I'm noticing that there are some areas, especially looking at, like, his, um, his Eldar. Yeah. Uh, there's a definite step up from this. Which it feels kind of dirty and and uh, I don't want to say haphazardly gone through, but but in that regard, yeah. it has that it has that sense of um, it hasn't been it's been executed on, but it wasn't like thoroughly thought out. Yeah. So uh, it's got that kind of vibe to it. But well, um, I mean, Rob does really good work. Mm-hmm. So seeing this and seeing that. You know the the OSL that isn't there, mm-hmm. and how weird that looks. I'm wondering why he left it in. Yeah, it, and and didn't like clean this up yeah. along the way. It yeah, just I it looks know. very dirty. Yeah, it looks it looks like really muddy. dirty, really muddy in that area. Um, I'm I'm going to venture guess that this is one of Rob's earlier models. Okay. Um, this is one of his earlier paint jobs, which still looks looks great. Yeah, it looks great. Um, but it, it definitely has its sense. So here here's a good example. Of um, we went from the um, the the really pristine unit that Rob did of Eldar, and you can see a progression from his, this model, which I'm assuming I would assume that this is an earlier model, and going to that unit, you can see the progression that someone can make from uh, a high end professional stance where they go from something that's that's good. But it's a little dirty. It's a little. It's not as tight. It's not as tuned. It's not yeah. as practiced. It's you know. It, it's early paint style. Kind what of if thing. he's like I did this yesterday? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if he did this yesterday, I'd be shocked. <laughs> be like Rob, what are you doing? Um, but you can see the progression that's made, uh, in that I'm I'm trying to point out that anyone with enough practice and time really does do step ups in their in their ability and skill from learning and practicing more. Base Watching, is cool. Yeah, watching videos, uh, reading articles, that kind of stuff. Yeah, the base is cool. It's a, it's a little, it, the the flock is cool. The but water's it, weird. The water is weird. It 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 looks like it's a resin or like it's not quite a resin. But pour, it's but not it's like, like it's like it's 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 like like somebody opened a fire hydrant and it's just like yeah, pouring. It's not yeah. like a river. Yeah, it doesn't have that river esque feel. The the uh, flocking also feels kind of just flat. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have that. It doesn't stick up. So, I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> How dare you? Um, no, but overall, the the weathering on this thing looks really cool. Yeah, the patina look. And mm-hmm. 
oxidization looks great. Yep, and especially with patina, less is more mm -hmm. because it it shines in like these areas that that it's just barely there. Yeah. Where it's actually it's funny that you mentioned this this gun because right here, this patina is awesome. Yeah. You know, this feels really this natural. Feels weird. Yeah, They're that's like what bright yeah. hole in his mouth. Yeah, same with the gun hands. Yeah. They're just bright holes that don't really make a lot of sense. So, and I know the fortune. This is supposed to be like a plasma gun because you know chaos and all that kind of yeah. jazz. So, but uh, having some OSL there to kind of explain that bloom would be nice. Brightening that area with a bit of an airbrush push or a or a dry brushing would be helpful. Where's his um, head? That is his head. And it's a plasma gun too. Yeah, hmm. because chaos, yo. Yeah, it's crazy. Because more gun is better. Yeah, there should be an orc riding it. I was gonna say, there's, <laughs> something's got to be controlling it. Its head is plasma. There's, there's probably a demon inside that's doing things. Make this you know? real to me. I want to feel it. <laughs> What's the story it's trying to portray? Yeah, where's the plasma coming where's from? Where's the plasma coming from? All right, Rob, good job, man. Yeah, I like picking on Rob. He's a, he's an excellent painter. Uh, I, I've harassed him for a long time, on, uh, on things. Yeah, he's a wonderful husband. Uh, yeah, I like to cuddle him. What happens at Renegade stays at Renegade. <laughs> Uh, this one is Obi. This is John. Uh, I, I am not even going to try to pronounce your last name, Obi. I can't. I can't do it. Ombanish. <laughs> Bassinish. Obi. Um, switch camera. Oh, no. I do don't. You want, do you want to switch camera? No, I don't. <laughs> this big beefy boy. Oh, boy. I can't even hardly see hardly any of them. Oh, boy. All right. A little bit of brightness up in her. So the new Avatar of Kane model. Uh, I know I I had talked with Obi about this in that he was trying, he really wanted to do the green flames. Very bright. And he was trying to figure out what metal to do with it. And he was tossing around the idea of doing uh, gold. Okay. Or even a silver. Yeah. And I remember a couple of us pitching it to him being like, dude, you should do like a, a worn bronze. Yeah. And it looks so cool. It does. There's a lot of... Um, uh, similar like there's no breakup mm -hmm. on on the bronze itself like all of the emblems are the same bronze color there's mm -hmm. no you know even on the shoulder the back of the helmet everything is the same bronze it looks like yeah but it's it's weathered differently too and you can tell that there's highlights on like the feet and the but, shoes but not really the top that much no not the top as much like up here no which i would have wanted a little bit more of like what his kneecap and yep. leg right here is yep. doing like up here exactly more. you know his headdress has it his glove even has it but yeah the shoulder pads the and shoulder the sigils pads on the and shoulder the sigils, pads yeah. are kind of very flat yeah they're a little flat this one has it a little more and it might just be the angle that we're at but I, I i can see what you mean where it is um the the plume off the top too is a little messy. Isn't it is a little yellow? messy. Yep. I think it's I think it's more of the washed out look. Yeah. Because it's it's uh you know trying to get that balance of like wash. Um it would be almost better if it was layered a bit more instead of washed. Uh kind of a peculiar color choices too. You got the green, the bronze, and then the blue yellow. Like yeah. uh it's just uh kind of feels kind of like all over a little bit. I do so if I may. Yeah. Uh, I the, love the green, the green with the bronze. So the green and the blue and yellow. Blue and yellow make green. Okay. So you kind of got that as as the, you know, um, as primary colors and then a secondary color. Uh, the red. I feel like they don't complement themselves, though. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. It, it does. It's striking. If nothing else, it's very striking. Yeah. It's very... Um, High school colors, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, it's, it's yeah. like high school band. Yep, yep, very, um, very contrasting, grabbing your eyes. I think the skin needs more. The skin kind of gets lost. It needs more highlights. Yeah, the skin gets lost with the with the flames. green, yeah, you know, with the flames, because it doesn't have as much jump, you know, it doesn't have as much pop to it. Because I get that you're trying to do like a black coal kind of look, but adding some highlights and, and almost texture to it would probably be beneficial. Yeah. Um, the plume definitely needs more love because that's such yeah. a huge focal point. Yeah, it's it is. such a big piece of it, and it seems like it was kind of very secondary. So here's a good example of, like, solid freehand. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. The, the That, like, codpiece cloak area there mm -hmm. looks... I mean, 
painted, it's great. I don't know yep. about the color choice, but the paint, like how you, the execution is yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, the, ex- the execution is phenomenal. I mean, the, the the freehand on it is amazing. Yeah, it's probably the highlights look great. It's and, probably some of the best freehand that we've seen. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So it could use more highlights, more like yep, a it, light, it could, light blue on some of the creases on the top. And I think that's more about the plume than this. But yeah, this is more mid tone. There's like right up here, right next to the the cod piece. Uh, it has the proper amount of highlighting, and then the rest of it doesn't as much. See, I think the opposite. Really, okay. like right next to the the junk area there. Mm-hmm. I feel like it could be brighter because it kind of blends in with the black and like. Yeah, that could be too. It's not as bright. I do like this though for some reason. I yep. Still wish it was a little bit brighter in some areas. Yep. But um, I, I mean that's the story. That, that's the, the whole the day, bloody, right? The, Is yeah, the, the, the everything's bloody. kind of muted a little bit. Yep. A little they bit muted. Need a little bit more highlight. This would be really cool if it had a little bit of blood for the blood god in it. Yeah. Because then it's you know it's the bloody hand. Do you like the spear shaft? Those cool. Are those are those those ruins? are runes. Those that's are runes awesome. on it. Those are cool. Those are highlighted. I think that they need more glow. Yeah. So they're, they're a little, little, bit more little flat. Uh, so yeah, a little pop there. I do like the red on the blade though. Yes. Like this as this needs a little more pop along with the runes, I feel. I feel like it's cool, right though. now as it sits, if you highlight it with a like a brighter red on the inside sure. of the runes, all you'd have to do is add another layer inside yeah. and have it. Um Yeah. Uh oh, and then one thing that I noted that was kind of odd was the gems. There's like a red gem, a green gem, a blue gem, a yellow gem. Like there's a, a sky blue gem. They're all over the place. They're really well done. Yeah, but they're they all like the kind of different. on them. They look good. Yeah, they're all they're all slightly different. Yeah. So you can definitely tell that it was a style choice of like I want to choose a bunch right of different there, colors. Green, blue, and yep. red. Yep. Um. I'm gonna. Take a guess, then it's because the avatar can go between any sort of force, so it's kind of like all the different soul gem. Colors. I like it, yeah. I, like I think it it's too. cool. I, I like cool. I like having a bunch of different styles of gems because it breaks it up too, and you're like, yep. it's cool. Yeah, he even got the one that's like in the blood, yeah. So it's, it's like it's, the green one, yeah, in there? the one that's under the blood, so it's not like he skimped on it either. Oh. So yeah. it's very cool, yeah. It's a sweet model, yeah. I would that that would be my two, two things is. If, if you're going to go with that that yellow and blue, uh, personally, I think it's a very uh, unflattering combo. But if you did do it, it's got to be executed so perfectly. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of kind of... Uh, clash. Clash inside there. And there's a lot of muddling with the colors. They kind of, you know, obviously there's yeah. there's blue in the yellow there. And, mm-hmm. and you, there's no highlights on there, really, like yeah, brighter there's highlights. There's not as much, yeah. It needs to be... It needs to pop. Yeah. And I think uh, when you're pointing that out, too, it's like against the green, like the green is well executed overall. Yeah. You know, it could use a little bit brighter. Like a line. Bright yeah, I, I think I think it needs a bit more brightness. And, and maybe that's just the overall feeling that I'm getting, too, along with you, is that like the, the plume is kind of muddled. The flames are muddled. Um, I think the armor could use a little bit more highlighting, but not much. But I think if you brought up the plume and the the cod piece or the the loincloth and like the flames, it would really sing well. I think that would get rid of a lot of the why does it feel like it's clashing? Because yeah. you're adding highlight and you can you can focus on each area with a bit more highlight. Yeah, maybe if you drew more yellow into the flames. Yeah, that might have helped. That might help. Bring yeah, because up the yellow on top. actually, that's not a bad idea because if you were to have the green pulling in blue, then you tie those colors together, and then the yellow is the only thing that's a, that that's kind of the opposition, and you don't have to get all fancy with the yellows, or have the yellows there, and then going to green. That's not a bad plan either. So, e- either way, I think it's got a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of gumption. Oh, Troy said the Infinity Stones? Yeah, no. That's cool. I would not want the, the Avatar of Kane to snap. <laughs> That'd be bad. <coughs> Awesome, cool, man. You well, thought Thanos good. snapping half the half of the known life in the universe Looks was like bad? He's about to snap. Yeah, well, this guy would wreck everything. Is he because, that guy? No, he's the embodiment of war. Yeah. What do we got? This so we is a changer. Yeah, we we changed this one. We changed this one, um, and I kind of got a little bit of background from from Kelsey. Um, apparently. Ooh. This is like the gargantuan size for whiz kids. Oh. So Jim put this into the Titanic category and we moved it to the vehicles monsters category because it fits more with that for size and scale. 
Um, so that that's kind of why it's in this. Uh, so Jim, if you're watching, I, I apologize yet. Uh, Jacob, we have not done Scarbrand. I promise I'll shout it from the rooftops. We'll do we'll do Scarbrand next. Actually, oh, we, we already did Scarbrand. Oh, we did. <laughs> we I missed did it yesterday. I'm, oh, okay. <laughs> it's now tucked away in a box. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, the the Frost Giant Skeleton. This thing's cool. Again, it's another D and D model that if I saw this on the other side of the table from my character, you yeah. know, my little mini yeah. uh, standing there, I'd be terrified. It's another one of those weird bases though that Wiz Kids does. Yeah, it is. Though the execution of uh, of using yeah. snow flock and then having the, it's on him, it's around him, yeah. it's kind of gathered in areas, blood on there. and then there's blood on the ground, there's blood on the axe. Yeah. This is a good portrayal of having a. Okay, good. I had it on model display. I got panic for a second. <laughs> um, it, this is a good portrayal of having uh, a model in its environment and it's telling a story. Yeah, you know, it, yep. it's it's telling me that it's it's cold. It's brutal. You know, uh, this came out and it's out for blood. And yeah. there's something that just got hit. It just cleaves something in half and it's moving forward. Like, it, it really does portray and give that out. Um, so, and and the leathers and the and the furs are all separate. Yeah. They're all different. Because, yeah. like, the, the you know, the um, bracers. bracers and the boots are different from the, the kind of the chest armor area leathers from the belt and the helmet too and the helmet too so they're all you know mostly different and and that portrays it um i love the axe is broken mm -hmm. and he utilized that by putting like the blood on the other either side of yep. it and he even highlighted up there too what did to, he, to indicate that how did he paint that it's so sh it looks like polished like old polished axe head it's weird yeah it's like a gloss on there yeah well it's blood well, I mean, the over enemies. the whole, <laughs> over the whole axe head, it looks really cool. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a nice sheen to it. Same with the helmet. Yeah, I'm wondering if it might be the, um, it looks like it's uh, uh, nolan oil, so I'm wondering if it's nolan oil gloss. It's, we it, it doesn't Could look be. like nolan oil. It yeah. looks like, I don't know. It yeah. looks cool, man. Um, it's a good effect. Yeah, I mean, you've you've really captured a lot of the the bone, and and the. Like I said, the leathers, which are the big components yeah. of this model. I would say probably, uh, like, the bone is very chalky. Um, it doesn't have a smooth base to build from. So having a smoother base to build from and then uh, work, uh, I'm, I'm going to venture a guess and say that it's probably uh, either a gray prime or might be uh, team no prime for Sammy. Um <laughs> But it she didn't or, enter or, this year. No, she didn't enter. Yeah, or this she, quarter. She didn't enter this quarter. Um, it, but it, it could be very well that that this is like uh, uh, a base primed of like a gray or a black, and then it's yeah. trying to build one color, just yeah. that one bone color up. And uh, honestly, you need to layer with various colors on top. So uh, you know, building from a, a black, build to a dark brown. And then to a medium tone brown, and then towards uh, like a, a medium cream, and then dry brush or hit it with a try and layer with your bone and give it because paint is inherently somewhat transparent to light. When you're looking at it, you're going to see multiple layers behind it, and it's not going to be that one color overall. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, it looks like very spawn color for bone. Like if you look at like a spawn character, yeah, it's like it. The color is very much on par of that like '90s spawn oh, yeah. action figure. That's a color. that's a good point. That's kind of how it I, feels. I kept looking at it, I'm like, what does it remind me of? It totally reminds me of that. Mm -hmm. um, I like the red eyes. I would have oh, yeah. put a little bit more white in the beard, maybe. I would put a little more. Uh, being that I can I can see that you have a blood effect at least. Uh, adding a little more blood for the blood god in. He's got it in the beard. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Yeah. But he's got blood for the, you know, like the blood effect in the beard, which is cool. Um, and I would say lean into that a bit more. Yeah. You know, do that a bit more than what you had before. I like the artillery, like arterial spray on the ground mm -hmm. from the blood. Mm -hmm. It's very gruesome. Yeah, like he raised up his, his sword, you know. He hits me in the jugular yeah. and it's like. Yeah, it's skir skirting all over, yeah. squirting all over. Very yeah. cool. No, I like it. It's very cool. It has, it. I think if you... If you take it from here and you 
you added some extra layers for the bone to give it some more depth yeah. uh, and tighten that up and then also tighten up some of the some of the leathers because the leathers and the furs look really good and they're all separate but adding a bit more highlight to them more than just what you have even just pinpoints yeah. or a simple couple lines will sell it more the belt has a lot of detail too that it's missing yep just because of the lack of paint on it same with the bracers the bracers also yeah. have something similar to that too so I mean, you have some edge highlighting on, on the bracers, it looks like, maybe there. So it's like, you know what you're doing with that. Yeah. You just got to add a little bit more. I feel like it's getting there. Like Because you did it in the helmet with yeah. the skulls. Oh, good point. Yeah. So it's, you, it's most of the way there. Yeah. But it looks cool. Yeah. It yeah. definitely tells a story. Yeah, 100%. It, it definitely You see definitely where it's does. going. So, awesome. loving that. Good job, Thank, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. All right. I guess we'll we'll do Scar Brand next. It's been uh, it's been voted as most most popular. Wanting to see it, the raving fans have been screaming for it. You guys can't hear it, but here in the in the uh, in the store, they're screaming for Scarbrand, desperate. Hey, look there he is! Look at him, Marlboro Man himself. He finally came to the show. I'm gonna tone down that white. Huh? Yeah, turn it up a bit. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, your basing looks Scar great, brand. man. Yep. You do a good job with that resin. Yeah, that that uh, crackle effect and then the resin on top of it is awesome. Uh, yep. Loving that. Um, I love the the skulls embedded in the in the resin. Um, I'm trying to. You, you asked about the lava effect, and I think that the the effect that you have down below, and and it's not really captured well on camera. Let me see if I can try and like show what that looks like because it's it's really unique. Um, I, I like it. It's it, the question that I have is more, what is the what is the resin supposed to indicate? You know, because it's it's a clear liquid. Like, yeah. is it is it lava that's kind of cracking under water? Is it just a cool like alien or demonic effect that we don't know about? Um, so I, I like that where it's it's leaving me to ask questions more than get answers from. Okay, but he can he can kind of you know he can settle like the skulls inside of it. Um, but. Yeah, yeah, because like the the Nurgle one that you did, I think you did great and clean one last time. I think it was. Yeah, that was a, that was a was. pussy soupy resin. Yeah, it was gross. And I think I think Alex is on this one on this the same thing on this is like, but it, what is this? It yep. looks like water. Yeah, and he he just said it's it's water with lava under. Um, in that case, you might want to add bubbles. Bubbles are always cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I I am I am I will admit that I'm a little lackluster on my resin. Uh, got a, it's got tufts on there. It's got tufts on there, though. It's got some blood things. for blood got yeah. in there. Yep. The biggest thing about this model, edge highlighting. Highlight, yep. highlight, highlight, highlight. You need more highlights on this yep. thing. It's and so muted, and there's so much red with no, like, it's it's red with wash. Yep. And and that, I know, is what you were, uh, uh, just so everyone knows, uh, Jake, he, he actually came up to me and was, telling me that this is like the first time that he's painted red or really worked with red. Yeah. So that was, that was a big thing. Um, he actually asked the group uh, on the discord, like what he could do to uh, make the wings pop more. And, and I said dry brushing, and I think you could even stand to dry brush them more, but he actually um, added the metallic here, like adding uh, a bit of patina or uh, highlighting on the metals would do a lot. Um, you know, same with a lot of the other things that we reviewed, having those, um, that kind of washed outlook, you want to have a differentiation between your bone and your claws and kind of make them feel more unique so they don't just kind of fall into well, the, into each other. Even same with the chain with yep. like the tattered wings. Yep. They've blend together really well, which is not good for the model. You want to have that yeah. differentiation between those. And when you get close and look at them, you've definitely painted the the chains metallic, but it's very you, similar. It's, with it's the very other similar. It's very subtle. And and in this case, you don't necessarily want to just go with subtle. Yeah. Uh, adding some extra highlights are definitely going to going to pop it more. All of the hair, yep. bone, anything that's on the model itself is all red with a null oil yeah. or whatever kind of wash you did. Which I would love to see in the hair a different color. Yep. Um, you did on top. It looks like the hair is a little bit different color on top there. The back, mm -hmm. those spines. I mean, you see the back of his leg here. 
same color red. Yep. These spines, his tail, everything is the same color red. Yep. And then on all that, bu- the muscle, you should have some like highlights on there to kind of give it that like pop that it needs. Some extra dry brushing on this guy would really help. If you want to speed it along, dry brushing with that would just, it goes super fast. And, and, and all those bones and too all need, those, need yeah. highlighting. Uh, if you want to highlight something really, really fast, dry brushing is the way to go. Yep. Um, because you can do it fast and quick and get immediate results. Yeah. It won't be the best. Like um, You're going to get a lot of overbrush. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of overbrush that you have to correct. However, you can make some amazing techniques work. and Very quickly. <laughs> yeah, and, and um, I've seen I've seen beginners and pros use it alike. And, and uh, I think the greatest disservice to anyone is to say that something is, is too basic to use. Dry brushing is a technique that is fantastic for application of texture, for getting something to look really worn or used. It catches highlights that you'll never be able to really capture well with a, with a single line of a brush, yeah. too. So don't be afraid to use those techniques. Um, but correct. But but yeah. If there's over, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I would definitely, I would definitely, you know, you you can definitely you capture did, this. You kind of did it right there. Like that yep. bone is a little yep. bit different color than the rest of his bones yeah. and his wings. But then the other one isn't. Yep. The other one's the same color as the bone on the wings. Same yep. with these over here. They're yeah, two different absolutely. colors. Um, yeah. There's there's just a lot of little details on this guy that that need to be exemplified. Yep. And and you're most of the way there on it. But Jake, it, you're a good painter. Yeah. I think you kind of sped through this one. I yep. think you kind of... You, well, it, and I remember you being excited about it, too. You, you like, have... Right here is a perfect jazzed. example. Different color, different color. Mm-hmm. So it, you you did it on one side, but you didn't do it on the other. And now that happens. Forgetting happens. I forget stuff all the time when it comes to a miniature. I'm like, God dang it, I was supposed to go back and do that, and I totally forgot. Yep. But um, in a competition, you can't forget. You have to yep. you have to do that extra mile. Take your time. You know, take an extra day when you're like, all right, I'm going to enter it in tomorrow. It's like, nope, I'm going to take one more day and just stare at my model and see what I'm missing. Yep. Taking the time and really sitting with the model. There, there's a piece of advice that I would give, and that's sometimes putting down the brushes and looking at it and just let it sit on your let, let it sit on your desk for a couple days. Yeah. There's no harm in that. Put it underneath your pillow. Sleep yeah. on it. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> uh, leave it on your desk and look at it. Walk by it every once in a while. See things that you may have not seen before because you're catching in a different light or a different time or a different space, head space, things of that nature. Come to it in the morning before you leave for work and pick it up and look at it. Yeah. I've done that to plenty of models where I will, um, uh, I'll come back in the morning, the day after, because something was drying overnight and I'll pick it up and look at it. It's like, okay, now I know what I need to do. Uh-huh. You know, and I didn't see that yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, You've, you've definitely improved from where you were, and you'll just keep working at it. Yeah, right? you're going in the right direction. Yeah, you're going in the direct right the direction. The other thing, too, I would do, buddy, is cast a light mm-hmm. down on top mm-hmm. of your model mm-hmm. and see where those shadows are. He's leaning so far forward that the underbelly of him would have that a different color than the top part. Yeah. And he is one full hot tamale color. So so here, I got, I got a flashlight here. I'll do this. So look at that. See, look at that. Uh, let's see if it shows up. There you go. Now look at the shadows. Yeah. You can see all the wings would be brighter yep. on the top. Uh, especially up here. Yeah. Up on the top. The, the wings underneath would be a little bit darker, a little mm-hmm. bit more muted. You can see exactly where the light is shining and casting shadows onto your model. Yep. And this is the best way to do it. Now, you don't sit there and do that. You take a picture of it. Yep. And then now you have a picture from all 360 sides. And then you, you, you can take a look at that while you're painting it. And you use that, and and as an opposition, like you could shine it from below. Yeah, and this is this wherever is, the light know, source is, is coming extreme. from. I, I know that I'm, this is I'm a great way. This, this is what Alex was talking about earlier with OSL. Take a flashlight, shine it where you think there's the OSL. Now you could do pinpoint lighting. You don't have to do such a broad, like huge shot, and it'll create that OSL for you. It, it's I mean it's cheating. You know what I mean? You're able to see it right then and there, and then you could paint. Try and replicate that with the paint. Oh, look at it! Just busted the white balance. Yeah, it just broke the white balance. <laughs> I love doing that. But Jake, it looks great, man. Yeah, you this... always have fun and creative bases, which are awesome. I'm so proud of you for using that much resin. Mm-hmm. That is scary. That can melt your base. That can melt your model by just not mixing it correctly. You can melt your entire plastic uh, base. I'll, I'll admit, he's done more resin work than I ever have. Oh my god, he, his great unclean one. I remember. I remember me and him practicing at the old shop mm. with resin. I mean, you know. It, it's it's super cool to see how far you come with it and yeah, and you know sure. using the crackle paint and using 
that's this right here is innovation when it comes to you know basing yeah you're stepping way above and beyond okay. now are you taking your basing maybe a little bit farther than your model maybe maybe take your time with your model a little bit more like you do with your base you know you have everything kind of staged correctly on your base you know take your time with your model too because your model is your focal point and your yep. base is secondary but it yep. has to tell that story yep you're telling a good story you just gotta gotta keep practicing and honing that craft for sure it looks good man you did yep. a really good job and i'm proud oh, of yeah. you you've been working your butt off on this thing i've been seeing it too so and keep asking questions especially utilize that discord like you have it's been good uh and if anybody's interested the forge does have a discord yeah if if none of y'all are a part of that you definitely should be because yep. all the dwarven axe stuff is on there too yep. all of our hobby anything any competitions we do yep. we do one hour paint competition once a month we do our monthly punk comp paint competition you know and then we do the dwarven axe stuff so it's like hop on there and if you can't get it a link to it just send us a message anywhere or ask us and yeah we'll give you a link. jump jump into the uh i'm sure liam is furiously typing right now he better be <laughs> or he's napping he's a, Him he's and Troy a are napping. terrible admin Terrible happen. Awesome. Well, All right, what do job, we got, buddy? What do we got next? Right. What do we got? We got. What are we doing? Skaven. Ooh, is this Luna? Oh. I know. I saw it in there. No. Like, Wait, Luna, you didn't enter a Skaven model? What is going on? What is this world? Oh, this is Miles. Oh, okay. Different different vibe, different take. Very cool. Very cool. I have to use the oh, men's room. He's got to use a little men's room. Nobody nobody know. Nobody ask. So look at this thing. Beautiful. I'm gonna adjust some weight balance here. This is what we do. Alright. So I gotta say, right off the top. Um, the metals here are really well done. They're nicely executed. They have some good highlights on them. They feel worn and used. The skin is really cool. It, it could use a bit more of a highlight in some areas. Um, skin is also really difficult. I've been, I've been experimenting and working on skin myself. Um, a really good product to work off of, like, skin tones in general is um, Plague Bear Flesh. It's a, a Citadel contrast paint. And paint that uh, as a base, like, if you're doing over a gray or a white uh, prime thing or, like, Xenthanol highlighting, adding that, um, that green helps skin because skin has a natural amount of green and, like, red on it. And if you paint that initial color of... of um, uh, flesh tone for flesh tone um, it gives a nice base to the rest of the of the skin and then add like a wash of red over uh, over a couple layers of the skin tone um, and it'll help really pop it out it gives a lot more depth than you might think but um, the the armor is really cool for the blue uh, it's it's got a, a hefty amount of wash on it but it's it's it doesn't look like it's been pooled up there's a couple areas small areas of like freehand with a lighter blue on top of it that's really subtle um the flames are nice in their kind of glow effect i wish there was a bit more glow effect inside of these metal pieces where it's holding on to those uh warp stones but it's a it's a sweet feel um you know the the guy riding on top uh, you, you, Miles, you did a great job with him. Uh, he's super unique feeling. He or she is super unique feeling. Um, like I said, the the metals are weathered really well. I would be careful with mold lines and like seam lines and filling those in as needed, because if you don't have those filled in, it'll it'll cause issues where you see them very prominently going down here. Um, and then it causes a, a fair bit of, of trouble in the future whenever you're painting because you don't necessarily notice them when you're priming, but you might notice them when you're painting. And they're definitely apparent after you get done with them, which is the, the real bummer. Um, yeah, I, I'd love to get uh, Bert's kind of thoughts on this, um, but your highlighting on the, on the leg here with the metal is really cool. It's really well done. Um, you're missing some of the of the highlighting on the on the plate 
foot there. Um, but that that's really it that I'm like noticing. Other than that, it's like it's it's adding that extra little bits to to make the model pop. So like some rust effects and um, on some of the areas, um, some of the um, you know a bit more patina on or ad adding actual patina onto the copper bits um, because if they're worn and I know from knowing a little bit about Skaven, they they have they're kind of haphazardly thrown together in a in a you know sewers and filthy areas with a bit of warpstone love. So having that patinaed on copper can really push that copper up from where it, it kind of sits. Um, and have you know it's like how do I add depth to a copper metal? And that can really do it alongside of like having different layers and levels of that copper tone. And you've done a good job with the copper tone overall because it doesn't feel flat. It's not like you just took copper and let it sit. You you washed it, you dry brushed it, you added highlights, you you know left the low lights where they needed to be. Um, a little but, bit extra on that armor though, right? Yeah. Did you say that? Yeah, I did. I said it, it looked good and he's got some, he's got freehand in like one area, but the yeah. the armor does need a little bit extra extra love. The flesh color is pretty good. Yep. And you got the little pinks where the scars and stuff would be. Yep. And Looks I pointed cool. out that, that it could use a little more depth, a little more highlighting. I do like um, the gray and the, in the green though, to give yep. it that like smoke wispiness. Looks cool. Yep. Yep. Mentioned that. I mentioned that inside here, it needed a bit more too. Yeah. The tail looks good. Mm hmm yeah, overall looks pretty good. The guy riding on top is awesome. Yeah, that's the this highlight. Is probably, on the this cape is probably one of the one of the best models, I think. Uh, you know that that Miles you have submitted yeah. is this guy up here is awesome. Oh, Miles, I think personally this is your best one. Mm -hmm. I like this yeah, a lot by far, by far. This is really good. You did a you you executed a lot of things correctly. Mm -hmm. The highlights on like the. On the stitching down the, it's down such the a different trees. It's style. So, than so his, good, yeah. It's it's than, such than a your, different style. Your so, other guys. Such a different feel. So, but it has a lot of the same rhymes. You can definitely tell that the things rhyme. Like, look at the fur. Yeah. The fur is the same style that that Khan had. Yeah. On, on his cloak. Yeah. You know. Uh, but that cell shading isn't here. No, it's not. It's definitely which not. is it's good. Much more I, I think. Yeah, I think this looks really really well mm -hmm. and the cell shading might have been way too much on this yep. yeah it would have but it looks cool man mm -hmm. looks really good um the basing needs a little bit more yeah yeah i could see like it feels like oh it's a yeah, a quarry or a quarry yeah. or well a, the rock is if you look underneath the rock is like elevated oh, yeah it's not blended down into the base itself yep if you're doing this because it looks like you applied it afterwards because i can see where you didn't you didn't quite get under the foot with the glue. Make sure that oh, yeah. you, you you put glue up against the rocks so that they feel like they're in world. Uh, otherwise, sometimes you can have that happen where you'll get that elevated like lip, uh, and it yeah. won't it won't work nearly as well uh, for what you're after. Nice. But it looks good though. Yeah, yeah. These are these are cool. these are good problems to have because these are very easy fixes. Yeah, uh, the I would say that from like this was definitely. At the risk of not knowing necessarily, this feels like this was more of a passion project, and the other ones were part of an army as well. Overall, I can like, see like that. I have to yeah. execute on an army. This is one that I want to paint. Yeah, you yeah. know, and, or I might want to build this over the course of time, and and this is just a passion project. Or his I wife know. painted this one, or like yeah, and he's, he's submitting one. it. He's <laughs> submitting <laughs> it as hers. He's like, know. damn it, I thought mine was better. Oh dang! <laughs> you well, know, it you know, looks cool, man. I really like the uh, the the guns on it. How they mm -hmm. look like tapped. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what yep. I mean? Like pots. Yep. I mean, that's part of the model, but you painted it right. You know, yep. it looks good. Yep. Um, and I said a little patina would go a long way on this model. Yes, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Because that copper just screams for a little patina. The to, blue to needs just, some highlights. Yeah. The, the, like the armor. Yeah, I think I think that's the biggest thing. The mold looking line on that. Yeah, the seam line is something yeah. that I mentioned too. So, yeah. yeah. I like the, the red. The red isn't overdone. It's subtle. I like it. Yeah, it's very subtle. It's perfect for it. I'd yeah, say. I wish you would did that with the blues. Yeah, give it that like light yep. blue highlight over all yep. of it. Around he's the got edges. some of it, but it's like I don't know if it got I, lost. I know. Or something. As I say, I saw it right there only. Yeah. And then he's got this like that that uh, a sigil. For yeah, a yeah. The the si or the it's Skaven, Skaven signal. The Skaven symbol right there. Yeah, it's like I wish that was other places. Yeah, it looked really cool. But awesome, man. Yeah. Well, good job. Nice. Nice. 
one of those judges. Ooh. All right, what are we doing? What do we got? We got... Scarbrand. Where did this go? Ah, we'll do Scarbrand again. Rip on part again. A second time. I think we got two left. Two? Oh, we got the Werebat, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Kelsey's watching this, and I know for sure. I know. Um, (laughs) Oh, no. It's a plane. Chris, F is for friends who do stuff together. U is is for uranium. Bombs. I need to scoot this back. In the pipe, five by five. (laughs) Shanks. Get in the pit and try to love someone. <laughs> oh, you know what I really like? <laughs> I really like that. Is that a decal? Is that painted? Nope, that's painted. Holy that's shit, awesome. that looks yeah, good. Yeah, no, all all of the uh, all of the the lenses and like uh, I looked at this earlier. All this the lenses is a are awesome. Good model, yeah, this Chris. Is excellent, excellent. Oh, you got the work. little pink tufts on there now. Yeah, see, it's cohesive. I, I know he said that uh, that like uh, this took less time to do than. The, the entire unit of Cadians. He said this entire thing took less time. Weird. Yeah. No, no, I, I get it. I can knock out a knight in no time. Give me 10 models. And I'm, I'm just like, oh, my opposite. God. Oh. I, I can knock out a 1,000 models so much faster than a big model. Oh, man. I, 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 I get so far in my head on a big model that I'm like, ah, oh, that could be different. That should be different. On miniatures, I'm like, oh, whatever. I just got oh. you, pro- you guys probably want to see this. Oh, there you yeah. go. That's what you get. Yay. See, Chad didn't tell me that I was doing it wrong. Um, this looks really good. Yep. Uh, the other than, so some of the edges are a little bit rough. Yeah. Some of them are a little rougher than others. Some of them are missing a bit more than others. Uh, you so edge highlighted. You edge highlighted. Everything. Yeah. Looking at it from like three, five feet away, this thing is freaking sweet. Um, I will say you have an edge highlight on the red here, but not on the cross. Oh uh, yeah. Or it's lost on the cross. And that's. I was trying to see it. You have it between the wings. Very crispy cross. Yeah, but there's no like edge on the cross to give me that extra bit of of highlight, which is odd, being that it was it's elsewhere, the same, just not on the freehand. It's only between the panels, which is consistent, I suppose. But it's not. It's not as like. I would want it on the edges of the cross to give me that extra little bit of little that, bit pop. It blows me away. Yeah, the, the lens the, glares. The lens glares are oh so good. Oh my god! Also, the uh, you have you have the las cannon as being used, like it's actually been used and it's been fired and all that kind of jazz. Uh, I love that that this door is closed and the other one has a gun hanging out of it. Yeah, you know, though this gun, I you drilled the barrel, thank God for that, but it doesn't have the same kind of wear. As uh, as your last cannon does, so it doesn't have that same kind of. The other thing too is the back side of the propulsion here. Same thing. Yeah. It's very clean. Mm-hmm. And this thing has definitely been used. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, it's you just got in there and did lead belcher or, or whatever it was, and probably did a. I don't even know if you did a wash in there. Yeah, it looks like there's a wash, especially I did over the over something. the copper up here. No, it, in inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. get, I get what you're saying. I would, I would have did much darker. Maybe some like soot or yeah, something. So it would work really just well. Just to give more. All the I, rocket pods are, are really well done. Are all these painted? All the rivets? Are all yeah. these painted black? Those look yeah, great. That looks are, great. Those are really good. That really makes I, it pop. I actually really like that the, the rivets are painted black and not like a silver. Yeah. It makes it look, it contrasts really well. Yeah, it contrasts really them. well. Also, the, also, all the inset uh, highlight, or I wouldn't say highlight, but uh, everything's painted inside. You as like the barrel this, burn too. Yep. I pointed that out. I said oh, did this, you? Yeah, I said this gun doesn't have. Oh, I, saw, it, so. I thought you said weathered. I didn't oh, see that in here. Though. Okay, but yeah, all the all the um, insides are are uh, there's a term for it. It's slipping my mind. Dang it! Uh, it's all really well Painted? defined. <laughs> uh, did you see the the barrel burn on here too? Really? <laughs> Go on, tell me more. Uh, also, the guys on the ground, really cool. Yeah. Uh, so I like that. I like this. Yeah, it's like I, a red cross. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? This like is coming another to one where it's, it's telling you a story. Yeah. This um, is cool. Especially like this kit, this bag right here. Yeah. It's like popping open. It's super good. I feel like you kind of threw that skull on there just to have yeah, a skull on there. Yeah. I was going to point that out too. It doesn't feel like it's integrated into the, like if it was sank into the mud, Yeah. I would feel a little more like, oh, okay. Same you with, know? same with tufts. I feel like a lot of people throw tufts on their 
base to have a tuft on their base. Mm -hmm. It's not really sunk in the mud. It's it's kind of just placed on the base last minute, and yeah. then you have a skull now. And a lot of times you can look at nature for this too. Tufts don't typically have tufts of like grass or or especially in a in a more barren environment, they'll hang around a rock. Or yeah. they'll hang around a yes, group of rocks yeah. or in a divot or um, a gully or something like that. You'll see you'll see grasses and, and tufts of like a hardier plant hanging yeah. next to something that would hold moisture. Yeah. So um that's yeah. typically where I stick tufts now is like in a crevice. Sure. Or like, you know, filling in that area and it feels a little more natural. I, I do like it. It's not bad, but yeah. you know, especially with like these guys and the and the space Canadians. Oh, super cool. Um quick question. Is this guy gonna survive on the ground here? Is it just uh, a arm wound? It looks like a arm wound. Maybe torso shot too? Yeah. Uh it looks like there's a little blood for the blood guy over here. Yep. So it's all fresh. It looks good, man. It looks really good. I mean, you know, it's all right. I would <laughs> I would probably do some more dirt or weathering on the yep. leg stands. Yep. Because I'm sure this thing sits down, too, to pick those guys up. Yep. It's but, really clean. Like those Cadians, it's really clean. Yeah. And it looks really good as really clean. But if you want it to feel like it's part of its environment, adding a little bit of du you know, dirt. You're, you're missing weathering on the entire model. Yeah. Even so, like... I know that up on these areas of the wings, you can actually do a little bit of soot going back because uh, uh, airplane wings uh, will leak oil in some spots that you wouldn't think that there's oil or hydraulic fluid, yeah. and it'll streak backwards as it's flying, yeah. and it'll kind of appear in that area as as weathering. Same with uh, around the around the engines, back here would get a, a little bit of soot too, depending on where it was. So you can you can kind of play around with okay, if this was flying at massive speeds. What would that look like if it was burning hot? Are those rivets? Are we missing black on those rivets then? Oh, we are. That is, there and, and, and actually on the door, on the panel, and on the panel right there. Yep. So here too. Oh. Maybe that's maybe that's maybe a design that, maybe choice. Maybe that's a design choice. You know, it does break up the monotony of things because it's it's here. But like, you'll note that it's it's along here. Yeah. But that it's not on here. Maybe they're different. Maybe so because yeah, it feels like it feels like those were choices. Yeah, they're yeah because 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 there's there's rivets right here and then there's rivets right next to it that aren't. Yeah. So I don't know. I it, would say design choice because yeah. they're mirrored. Yeah. Because the, yeah, it, it's definitely intentional in that mm -hmm. way. So that looks good, dude. It does. It's really good. I kind of for the copper up here though, a little patina. Absolutely. Uh, but like just a little bit of something to make it make it pop a little more. Uh, mm -hmm. Some engine grease. So so Vallejo actually makes this product that that'll go on. And it's like engine grease or engine grime. And you can just kind of paint it on and then try and wipe it away. Oh, cool. And it'll, it'll stick in there and it's kind of greasy looking and gross looking. But it works really well for tanks yeah. and, and vehicles. Oh, yeah. you, you just apply it directly from the bottom. It works great. You know what I don't ever see? What's I haven't that? seen anything is rust. I haven't seen rust on any of these models. Rust uh, is such a cool concept. Yeah. It's so fun to do. It's very rust. hard to do. It, do it correctly. But it's it pays off in the long run. I mean, yep. you have repulsors, you have uh, you know, even the forge fiend. You have different stuff that could have rust on it. But I thought we saw something with rust earlier today, but maybe I've not. I've only seen patina. I haven't seen. Man, people. This just looks take, great. This looks this looks excellent, Chris. So thank you so much for submitting it. It will I now uh, it will now fly. It will now fly for the first time. The last time. <laughs> I just saw screen, like, <laughs> oh no. Sorry, I got a crick in my neck. It's just like, oh man. You're sitting here judging all day. Just judging people. <laughs> so high and mighty. On my mom's chair. told me not to judge people. Here I am. Thanks, Chris. A wear bat from Kelsey. Oh, it's been nice looking at this one. I'm gonna put it away now. And right, then we'll never job, we'll man. never speak of it again. I almost fell and died. No. Oh. We don't go into that cave. Oh, we don't go into the cave. Not not don't go into the that cave. cave. Okay, I see some OSL. Yeah, actually that's really cool yeah. because it, it's directionalized and it's actually captured really well because from here it, it's it's nicely angled, but on the backside it's it's very dark, which is really cool. You definitely like picked it. up on uh, on having your lighting. Yeah. The the water needs to be water. Yeah. Because it's just painted blue but it has no it has no there's highlights no definition. yeah there's no definition between like areas you know, highlighting areas and i'm not even talking about it being wet it's just it doesn't have any definition yeah for it skulls 
are hidden in the base. Loving that. The directionalized lighting on the on the plants. Those are those are really cool. Like overall, the basing here tells me a great story. Yeah. Um, the bat itself, I feel, needs a little more definition. Um, I'm going to get up close and personal. I'm guessing one. what you're going for is a very muted. Yeah. Like you're in the cave and it's very stylized. Um, but in doing so, in this circumstance, I see where you're going with it. But at the same time, a lot of the uh, definition is suffered because of it. Yeah, and I, I feel like I get that you're doing light versus dark on, on the model itself for, uh, and you've captured it really in the face and on like the belly. Yeah. You've captured that that look and feel for it being light versus dark. That I would say is your strength. On the back though, e either, I would say if you're gonna do that light source at the front, you need real to do dark, a, then. Yeah, real dark or do a blue. Yeah. Or purple. Something yeah. that contrasts against Match it. Match those can, rocks. Yeah, that you can paint against it so that you can you can contrast that color nicely. And then that way you don't lose out on, oh, what do I do about the back other than make it dark? Yeah. You get a different color tone. Um, or you give it a different look and, or a, a different feel for... for um, I'd filter. like to see the how you did with the rocks where it's like bright in the front, yep. dark in the back. Yep. It's almost it. like normal light in the back on the bat right in the front yep you know or have a two-tone where you're really you're really shoehorning that contrast of 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 volume of light yeah because you can play with a color rather than a brightness on on it um to try and help boost that oh, i suppose we're really far away we're talking about this model like it's really oh my close. god look at that god, we're terrible <laughs> at this. Screaming <laughs> sorry y'all uh sorry Joop. I just realized that the background tune right now is uh is Little Soldier Boy from uh from Avatar the Last Airbender and I do not like it. It's making me want to tear up. I don't even know what that is. <sighs> Kill me. <laughs> I don't watch I don't I've never seen Oh it's so good. I've never seen any oh anime. It's not an anime. Avatar The Last Airbender is not, not an anime? It's not an anime. I consider like Dragon Ball Z an anime. That is an anime. Oh, I thought that was what Avatar is. No. Same thing. <laughs> no. This is with like the blue guys on the land. On the... No. Are, are we sure we want to shop at the Forge anymore? We, it's that It's that is really that... good M. Night Shyamalan movie, right? <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan didn't do Avatar. Yeah, he did. No, he did Lady in the Water. Yep. Uh, James Andy's... Cameron did. No, James Cameron uh, did Avatar, yeah, Avatar. But M. Night Shyamalan oh. did it. No, he didn't. There's yeah, no movie. Right. There's no movie. There's a live action. No, there's not. <laughs> yeah. It'd be really cool if they made one. <laughs> Oof. Man, we just it, it we was just M night, I think. We just dropped halfway in viewers right now. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh good riddance. No. <laughs> oh, kidding aside. So we, we can kind of see this model here now. And you can kind of get a feel for what we were what we were talking about. So um, I, I really do think that doing a instead of doing light and light or um, bright versus dark, uh, having color versus color because you have that warm tone in the front, which is not quite yellow, which yeah. I really dig. I really dig that it's not quite yellow. Um, you could have a purple or a blue in the back. That would I would, really I would do the pop. exact same color as the rocks. You want to do the what? The back side of the rocks? Yeah. I would do the same blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm meaning. Yeah. Right up in there. Yeah. You're 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 playing with the two tone of the of yep. the color, uh, and then I think the stream is really where uh, you'll want to add more. Um, Either a literal like resin or wa like white yep. or something lighter on yep. top to give it that look that it's running water or yep. something. Yeah, you want it. You want to give it depth more than anything. So definitely not stagnant water. No, it's definitely it, it definitely has movement to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think this is this is really cool. It's a really cool model. Awesome job, Kelsey. Yeah, thank you, Kelsey for submitting it. You're a pretty cool person, I suppose. I that's I guess for that's it for monster. All right. Speaking of monster, I got a monster that I'm drinking. It's cool stuff. All right, we will be right back now with Titanic, and uh, shifting into that category. And we'll be back in a moment with that.
we're back with Titanic. My favorite this, movie. This thing. Titanic, really? No. I, okay. It's not a bad movie. <laughs> it's not a bad movie. Oh, we lost the last five viewers. Great. Um, oh, I thought you were serious. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> this thing is thick. Yeah. With so many extra C's and Q's, I can't even believe it. This yeah. thing is also, as as uh, Bert put it, is like balancing a, what do you say, a, a, a bowl of eggs? Yeah, it's like That's trying so to yeah trying to hold a handful of eggs, I've but never, like runny eggs. I've never felt more dangerous by moving something in my life. It's so scary because like we're we're pulling all of them out of the thing, and I'm like, all right, you got Luna's because <laughs> I don't want to mess with that yeah, thing. The, this thing like moves. all the legs move in a different yeah. way, and like that's the one unique thing that Gundam models have versus like GW models is everything moves. It is terrifying. I don't know how I feel about that. I really, actually, you know what I need to do is get like a perfect level of Gundam and just go ham on it. Yeah, and, and see how it feels because I've never actually painted one, which is a shame because they're such cool models. So this one, I believe, Luna, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you're still in chat, but I believe this was a repaint. Oh, okay. So I think the Gundam came painted and then mm -hmm. uh, Luna painted over it. Mm -hmm. It's either this one or the other one that's out there. Okay. I can't remember. Cool model, though. Yeah, I mean, it's a freaking sweet model. Yeah. Um, if the the decal work on is really good because I, I believe if memory serves the decals do not come standard on Gundam models. I, I believe I'm I believe so in the bank. dark here. I have no idea. Yeah, this is I see now it's really stretching me that I need to go and actually do a bit of bit of digging on the Gundam models. But I want to say that they're just kind of sprue. Um, I watched a couple of people put them together, mm -hmm. but I don't know how if it's like a click and put together or like a glue because there's a lot of jointage here. Yeah, so there's a I'm, lot of jointage. Um, I don't know. Yeah, uh, Luna, there's a couple of things I would probably do if you did paint this, um, which I think you did. I think you added some some elements to it. I think kind of the blocked in colors are there. You you have initially. you have detail on the sword and stuff. There's a lot of um, you know. I'm totally out of my element on this. I mean, if I if I don't know if it's supposed to be weathered, I don't know if that's what Gundam is. Well, and, and a lot of it, I would say, is You got your needs... propulsion with no soot, no weathering. Yeah. I don't know if you're supposed to weather this model. I would say you're, you're supposed to, you know, if we're treating it like any other model that we have in here, it, it needs more to it. Yeah. It's very, if we're going from this as a base point, say say she threw it together and, and just added decals on it, like that in and of itself looks great. Um, like, I'm guessing that the yellow here is probably put on afterwards, too. But... Something like this needs, you need to add more to it to um, pull definition to it. Because right yeah. now it feels very, very medium, very plain. There's no highlight, or there's no highlights, but there's no low lights. There's no um, edge highlighting. There's nothing that really makes it pop. It almost looks like it came stock. Yeah. Like this is a stock build. Yeah. We, it, it and it has a lot of, um, it has a lot to it. It has a lot of details but it doesn't have a lot of like extra things that make it pop. Like there's nothing in these um, up. I'm, I'm not even sure anyone can really see up here, but up near its neck, it has like these, these uh, um, like metal cords that are connecting things. And it doesn't have a lot of definition beyond it. it Same with the swords. The swords yeah, have the swords like, are, there's a lot of definition in there, but it's getting lost because it's just metal. It's just metal. Yeah. Which I don't know what a Gundam sword looks like. So maybe that's what it's supposed to look like. But I think uh, from that angle, though, you're supposed to add a bit more to give it more that That's your what I think, eye can look at. Based on Luna's past paint jobs, this doesn't mimic that your your other style. Yeah. So that's why I'm like I'm, I'm kind of lost on this because I don't know what it came stock. I don't know what it looked like originally if it was painted and mm -hmm. you, and you painted over it, or if because the way it's painted, it shines mm -hmm. like it's plastic. Yeah. So I don't know if you did paint it or not. I don't know. I just I, need I want to say I want to say that she put on the decals for sure. Yeah. I mean, but, it was probably built and yeah. decals for sure. And like you said, there's some yellow that looks like it was maybe mm -hmm. painted on there, but the rest of it looks like metallic or like a plastic. If if you did paint this, so so going on the angle that you did paint this, I think the color choices are actually really good. I really like the color choices that you have on this, like that that gun metal, like literal gun metal. Yeah. That dark kind of bronzish metalish color um with a really bright steel and black is just this, a really good mix. this too here there's like a blue 
and a blue or a purple. Yeah, there's like a that? purple there, yeah. It's like a weird, like, almost like a color changing. I wonder if she... <laughs> I need Luna in chat. Yeah, Luna, I need Luna. more information. Yeah, I need more information. But I, I, I think it's cool. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I think it's a cool model. Uh, I think that you need to add more highlight. Regardless of anything, I think you need to add more highlighting and more, just more of... Just everything more. in this yeah, yeah. It, it needs more definition and more highlights um you're definitely at a stage right now where it's it's a perfect point to start adding things to it okay she's back in chat oh. did did you paint this thing start to finish or what did it come like stock like this color i guess is the big question and welcome back by the way yes welcome because we're trying to figure out like what if it came stock because we're, we're out of our element when it comes to gundam models um, Everything here is completely repainted from the original. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, then then that kind of gives me a good good sense of scale on this. So the color choices, excellent. Yeah. Loving the color choices. I love how they're how they're portrayed, how they're put on. Uh, you definitely have an eye for that. The decal work is really good. It's very very um, clean. It's very clean. I um, I really want, like I stated to uh, to chat earlier, I really wish that we could uh, see some uh, highlighting some probably shadows because you can you can work in some of these some of these you know low lying areas that are like grooves and then you can add highlights edge highlighting and and dry brushing a bit more adding some weathering give it you know these boost areas uh having some soot in them make it feel like it's actually part of uh you know that's been being used um things like you've executed really well the paint job overall but it's at a state right now where it's it's very base coated. It's very done, but it's very base coated. Sort of look like original. Oh geez, it's red. So this is what Luna said it looked like originally. Holy crap! You changed a fair bit. <laughs> is what you're yeah. saying? You changed it. You changed a hot hot bit of this thing. Holy yeah, crap! Everything is. Like, Good lord. Is okay, this. I'll admit this thing looks way cooler than that. I do. I like the black and yeah. yellow. Yeah. What'd you, Luna, what did you do for the like the purple there? There's like some purple, like uh, almost like like turbo dork or something. Yeah, it kind of looks like a turbo dork paint. Yeah, when it comes back around, I'll show you. But yeah, this this is really. You cool. have some right here. Yeah. Well, you can't see my finger down there. No. Nope. And then some right here. Yeah, and some right here, and then on the other side too. It's kind of a purplish, but. Remember that translucent purple? I forgot that one night. <laughs> yes, that was the uh, it was, it, that no. was the power pro right. curl, uh, uh Oh my god! Pro transparent. Curl. Yeah, transparent the transparent purple. purple. Nice. Yeah. Okay. That that works really well. That's awesome. Yeah, that looks great. No, this is, okay. So putting that in this frame. That's a lot of work. You this did. thing's a lot of work. Yeah, you did awesome. But I would say that it, it's. Did it, you put the decals on? It's where it needs to. She would have had to, because it's repainted. Well, how'd you get the? Uh, I suppose. You just before you put the decals on. Oh, okay, I, I think that you need to add more uh, highlights and more lowlights to this thing to really make it pop more than what it is right now. It looks great. It looks cool. It's just you need to. You're at a stage right now where it's a, it's a good base coat. Yeah. So. Uh, awesome. All right. Sweet. You did great, Luna. Hey, after after seeing what you did the first time around versus this thing, this is a whole different world that you've stepped into. Holy crap. Oh my god, yeah. Gundam, I am so uh, so far out of my element when it comes to Gundam. It's ridiculous. So No, no, no. Luna, you're you're doing a great job because I want to be out of my element in some ways where I'm like, what the heck? You wanna grab that model here? for me? Sure. <laughs> no, Luna, you're doing great. I want to see more Gundam to be honest. Yeah, right. Shattered on cam on live camera. Spawn the baby. All right. I uh, I think that's funny. Yeah, treating treating a miniature like it's a like it has a story, but treating gunpla like it, it like it's a racing car. <laughs> that's that's fair. I, I appreciate that. All right. So, for those that don't know, I've painted like forty or fifty knights 
by now. I've assembled a ton of them. I've painted a ton of them. I know the models inside and out. Uh, so I can speak very intelligently to Knights overall. And this is, this is really, oh yeah, it's a really well done night. We, we found the hatch tool, the hatch tool. Yeah. Yeah. Which so is very cool. three, 3d printed hatch tool. It's really cool. Uh, I'm going to lower this down a bit and then, uh, I'm going to increase the brightness we got there. So that's really good. Um, it, so at first glance, just taking a good look at it, it looks really good. Like very, very clean. The decals are really well set on it. Um, it's not overtly glossy where some decals can go. Um, the shoulder pads are really well done. They're a little plain, like especially the black. I feel like there's a little bit of blue that's kind of mixed in, but not a lot. Not enough to really make it pop. And the white feels a little, a little dirty. Um, but it looks like it's just kept to the edges, so that's more of a stylistic choice specifically to it. There's uh, He drilled out his, his barrels. This is another David, another David special. Um, so he drilled out his barrels, which is cool, which is good to see. Um, and... Uh, you know, he actually put the heat weathering on them too. But you did, but you didn't do it on like the mufflers on the back. What do you mean the mufflers on the back? These things back here, or like the steam valves. Yeah. There's, uh, he has like the bluish, you know what I mean? Yep. Heat. Yeah. And these don't have it. No, they don't have it. That is correct. They don't have that nearly as much. They do have the soot aspect to them. Yep. Um, yep. There's definitely. So there, there's I, that. I would like to see something to break up this yes. back here. Yes. That is a difficult thing, especially for knights, is that a little bit of copper goes a long way because it's all silver and then black and then just kind of dry brushed uh, silver on top of it. What kind of weapon that, is that? That is. This is a perceptor. This is a knight perceptor, and that's a uh, Laz impulsor. Okay. It'd be nice to see some weathering on the tip or something. Yeah, just the tip. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it gets very hot. Yeah, I love the, the color choice. It's very blocked in. The The red is really executed well. It's got a good... Um, it has a mid-tone to it. It doesn't have a lot of highlights. There's a few spots, like up here. This is like a highlight here and a highlight here. This is really well done. Yeah. Uh, the hazard striping is cool. Um, this I, is a different color than the other one? Uh it might like, be. Like, this one's darker than that one. Oh, okay. But just by a little bit. Just by a hair. Yeah. Um, you actually took the care, and uh, because I, I know I don't, uh, all the time, and uh, actually painted the casement for the gun. You painted oh. the back of, back of the weapon here. But it is a different color than the front, just by a hair. It looks like it was just washed and then not, not looked at again, May, mayhaps. Um, you've got a decal on the front there. Uh, on the nameplate, the tubing is also like metal. I feel yeah. like that would be more of like a like well, a black or plastic. And the, or something the weird like thing that. is, is that it's that it's like that one. All the all the tubing is like this darkened black, and it has a dry brush on it. But it looks like it's the dry brush of the metal itself. Yeah, especially the the one on the last impulsor is is that way too. I do love oh, the gun barrel. Uh, I'm so getting there, David. Don't you worry. I'm getting there. Um. <laughs> Working with the hatch. He's pointing <laughs> out the hatch tool. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the tubing on the back, being this gold, uh, is is cool. It's good to see that he, he actually took the time to um, to kind of point those things out and yeah. work with them. And it's it's universal. If you flip it over, uh, it, it, it actually has them underneath, too. I would have liked to see some weathering on the feet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you're obviously in, on Mars or something. Yeah. There should be some reddish weathering now i know david i think you were saying earlier that that's your next step yep. is to get into more weathering i think that was i think that's what yeah that, yeah here. that's what he said with his he had a he had the repulsor yep so so i definitely would like to see that because this i mean the gun barrels are hot so this guy's definitely seen combat it'd be nice to just see like oh he's walked through yep. the red you know desert yep exactly having there's a tough though <laughs> the tough the tough win <laughs> things um, and decals also on the on the leg bits to help kind of, uh, I'd say, push it forward. Giving some extra love to some of the components on the legs would help, especially around like these these piston bits. Um, I personally like to do them where I have a little bit, uh, I make them a brighter silver and then put some gunk on them because they're oiled. Because they're constantly used and moved. Yeah. And they constantly move around. Same with the, the ball joint in here, uh, these piston points. Um, all get moved often and yeah. are oiled because they have to move. Oh, do they move up and down? Like, yeah, they move up and down. That again? 
shift. <laughs> you know how it goes. Um... You know, same same with like these ones right here. What's inside that helmet? Inside the helmet is a faceplate. It is okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's the knight face. But the really cool one, and um, is uh, the hatch tool here pulls the hatch off, and this is this is actually painted on the inside, which is awesome. Yeah, um, painted really well. It's painted really well. It is, and then extra care was given to the the um. I'm going to actually, I don't want to unplug that, but I'm going to pull it forward so people can see in here. The The night pilot is well painted inside and along with the, the night like um, throne is, is awesome. Do you think painted. there's a light in there and they call it the night light? <laughs> no, uh. but it might be. You can dream. So what comes off this bad boy? Is he magnetized? Should we find out? Pull that arm off. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, but yeah, this is a super cool. Well well done. Well executed. It's very clean. Um, you know, just like your uh, uh, repulsor, it's very clean done and, and done well. It's executed well on. Um, I think adding some extra little uh, some extra little texture on the, the shoulder pads would go a long way. Um it does look like there's a little bit of blue scrubbed on, but adding some extra blue scrubbed on, kind of like what you did over here with the white, where it's like a gray and a white scrubbed into it, um, would go a long way on the black, because right now it's kind of lost. Unless certain lighting conditions hit, on this one specifically I can see it, on the other one I can't. I don't know if it's just, if that's varnish, or if that's a blue, or whatnot. I can't tell off the top. Yeah. So I would like to see on the chain sword itself, maybe the teeth a little different color yeah. or something yep. that doesn't blend in. So you have a lot of metal on this guy, and a lot of the metal blends together. Yep, it's all the same sword you, of metal. You were there though, like you're you're breaking it up with the different colors on the metal, and the, mm -hmm. the top looks used, and the back looks like pristine. Mm -hmm. It's like you were talking about. You need that grease. You need that, yep. that 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 that. Dirt and grime where it builds up on those pistons and on the backside. I'm sure he's been shot a couple times, you know, mm -hmm. or at least shot at. You know, it'd be nice to see some damage or wear. Now, I'm not saying yep. damage your model up, but, you know. Throw it down some stairs. Yeah. Rocky ground. He did say that the ground. arms are magnetized. Okay. Well, I'm not willing to risk that. I'm, yeah. I, I mean, oh. careful. Careful. Oh, oh my oh. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Actually, so fun fact with he the also night, headbangs, too. With the night kits is that uh, the... The, the joint that matches the right here, yeah. you can actually cut the entire part off because he, yeah, he, uh, there's this like rim here. Yeah. You can actually shear that entire thing off um, and then plant the magnet into this, into this bit up here, up in the shoulder yeah. part. And then uh, you can then mount the, mount the magnet flush with this. And it'll go flat against it, and you can never tell that it was actually. You don't need to key it. Sure. You don't need to key it because they're typically so strong, or for the magnets that hold on these arms, they're so strong that you can actually. You you, you don't need to um, get finicky with those uh, with that sh uh, shoulder nice. joint in there, so you can just do it flat. I need to. What I actually need to do is I have a bunch of pictures from a night that I did actually magnetize, and I need to actually publish an article on how to do it. So that might come yeah, over the course, of, yeah, over the course of the Discord because nights I hear are hot these days. So, yeah. um, did you get your codex? No, I didn't. Actually. <laughs> so surprisingly, Trent uh, <laughs> sold every single one of them while twirling his mustache. <laughs> the gun arm, the barrel comes off. Yeah. So you're you're hitting a lot of the same points that I do. Oh, this this gun, this arm is not magnetized. No, oh, okay. So you can swap it. <laughs> like how his top yeah. is just moving around. As it? That doesn't come off too either. It seems nope. Um, you so can yeah. get it off if you pull hard enough. <laughs> I've magnetized a, a, a couple, a couple, three nights. I know where the joints are. Um, but yeah, this this is really cool. I I love it. It's well executed. Uh, it it needs a needs. Uh, a bit of weathering and and some like differentiating between the yeah, different yeah. metal pieces on there. Now, if you throw down like five of these or three to four of yeah. these things on a table, oh my god! Oh, table just, ready, definitely. Oh yeah, beautiful model. Oh for table well, ready. well above tabletop quality. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, I, the other thing too, I know, I don't know. I 
I'm not a huge fan of chipboard or like of uh, yeah chipboard for uh, basing. I know it's a very easy Martian landscape. You're, you mean um, uh, corkboard? Corkboard, sorry, corkboard. I'm not a huge fan of corkboard just because I think we talked about this last time. It's very noticeable, especially if you're if you're in the industry where you paint and you make things. Mm-hmm. It's immediate that you're like, oh, that's corkboard immediately. Yep. And I like to see a base where I'm like, how the hell did they do that? You know, like it it it, it just makes your mind wander. You know, you're like, oh, this is cool. How did they make that? And seeing corkboard is kind of disappointing in certain circumstances when you're like, because you, your model's so beautiful, and it seems like you just do corkboard and some crackle paint and painted it red, it, and it, and which is fine. It fits the motif of what you're going for. Yeah. But going that a little above and beyond, and not just corkboard and tufts. Corkboard is a good uh, tool, structural. Yeah. I was gonna say structure that you can build off of. <clears throat> But like use, yeah, use the, clay and stuff to build. The, the texture paint on top of the cork board and alongside the cork board would, help, cool. would help it. Or um, putting uh, some sand along the, the edges of the cork. Um, use it as a, as a structural bit um, to appease Bert. Because it is almost he's inst- very angry. It, it, <laughs> you can just, you can see it a mile away. You're like, yeah. that is cork board. That yep. is 100% cork board. Which is, like I said, it's fine. Now, it's, it's just... Saying that my first entire Eldar army was was based with corkboard. The reason I say that is because every single model when I first started was corkboard. It's but true. It, it's it, true. 100%. No, and it's like, it's, that's what you do. You start and then you're like, wow, corkboard looks just like rocks. Yeah. And then you paint it and you're like, holy cow. And, but then once you're in it and you see it a thousand times, you're like, I, I, what it is. I can't use corkboard anymore because it's like drinking Captain Morgan for a year and then you're like, I don't think I could ever drink Captain Morgan again. Same thing with corkboard. <laughs> and then the next weekend hits and you exactly drink more right. Captain yeah. Morgan. It's like, you know, I could try corkboard again. <laughs> Bert Bert in a in a desperate way to get his his models done for an army, I guarantee you that he's gonna slap down corkboard and he's gonna weep as he's like you know, like bringing it to the table. I'm sorry. Why have I done this? What have I done to myself? <laughs> so thank you, David. I hope thank that you, uh, our our nonsensical rants made a lot of sense. It looks and, great. Uh, and we love it. It's great. It's awesome. So thank you for submitting your models because they're cool. All right, next up, who do we got? Who do we got? Uh, we got our last Titanic. Ooh. We only have three Titanics, which is surprising. Typically, that category is just overflowing with things. Although Q3 might have a, uh, a touch more because nights are hot. <laughs> Should be up there. We forget it. Is this? this is Devin. Devin, all right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Ooh, another Gundam model. Is that, what is it, Gunpla? Yeah, Gunpla. The prototype. <laughs> Sweet. All right. I, so- the base right off the top is really cool. Um, it separates out having multiple different, uh, um, different types of rock. It's got the sand so that it's at, at scale. For, for nominal large scale rocks and then big boulders. Um, I love the the uh, Q-tip uh, smoke. smoke. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it, it portrays that it's been sh- it's been being shot at and there's you know craters in the ground and whatever. That's a really cool effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Devin Devin's been coming around for quite a while, saying he's super excited about the competition and getting you know it took forever to get this base made for him and everything oh, yeah. and finally got it all up for him he thought he missed the competition and then oh, he was like oh I'm, it's, it hasn't gone yet i'm like yeah so he signed in but sweet yeah this is his I'm first glad. i think it's one of his first miniatures he's done i'm glad that he submitted it it's really cool it like does it, look cool it's got a lot of thought put into it yep i like the colors that you know they, they're very complementary of each other the mm-hmm. blue and the gold mm-hmm. look good oh the blue, blue and gold gray. always look great yeah um that being said i would definitely add some more detail to it um you're on the right track. Your 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 painting looks pretty clean. Mm-hmm. I mean, for mm-hmm. one of your first models, and there's I from where I'm at, I don't see a lot of brush strokes. No, um, there's not a lot that I I've, I've been really seeing. It looks pretty pretty solid. Looks which means pretty like good. You, you 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 know he magnetized this too, so the legs are magnetized oh, to the cool. base. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it pops off entirely. That's yep. really cool. Okay. Scared the living hell out of me the first time I put it up there. I, I will say that the, the gray needs to be something more, uh, yeah. because I can tell it was painted, but it looks very much so like the ori- probably the original gray that it was used. 
I, I do would, like the scope though. Yeah. It has a little bit of color dif- mm-hmm. differentiation in there, some gradients. Yep. Make sure that you're you've got seam lines that are popped up throughout. Um, make sure that you're you're closing those out or filling in those gaps. Um, with either you can use liquid green stuff, milliput green stuff. There's a multitude of different Don't ways. Don't use to, liquid green stuff. Yeah, it's terrible. But <laughs> uh, I mention it because it's there. Um, the Vallejo makes a putty in a uh, like a modeling putty that you can buy. That stuff is actually really good. Um, I would say just you're at the point where it's base coating. You you, you base coated well. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's a solid base coat. Yeah, it's solid base coat. Don't be afraid. Also, I can tell from your golds that you probably put on like two or three layers of the gold to try and get that gold up from probably a blue or a black or something along those lines. Don't be afraid to do a, uh, a darker uh, gold color, like a bronze um, or a, uh, you know, and then build up to a, a bright gold because you'll get a lot more depth and complexity with less layers than you will with if you just do a straight gold. Yeah. Or the Monument Hobbies has a has like a it's like dark bronze and then they have a, a mid-tone gold and then a bright bright gold or something like that and you can kind of build up from there. Yep. The other thing too is uh I have probably said this a 100 times but uh, a cool tip somebody showed me was to use for gold Reckon's flesh shade gloss. Yeah. And it gives it a really cool, bright, shiny gold that kind of gives it, uh, I mean, it's a wash, so it gives it that little bit of extra detail yeah. and all that stuff. It's it's a quick way to make gold look good. Um, Absolutely. And then, it, obviously, you finish it up with a highlight and you know, clean up the edges. And, you know, it's not just, oh, I'm going to hit it with a Reckless Flesh Light Gloss and I'm done. It's like, you got to still finish the rest of it. Um You need highlighting, a lot yeah. of highlighting. Yeah, a lot of highlights. A lot what of I- recess shading. What I'm getting on this is that, like, like I initially said, it's it's a lot of um, initial base coat that yeah. looks good. Like it's a good start to the model. Yeah. You, you have a great, great starting spot, but you need to um, uh, start building up from there. Absolutely, it looks it looks great. It's a great start. Yeah, yeah. No, you you did great. So I, I'm excited to see more from you, yeah. Devin. I, I'm I'm excited to see what you come up with next. Or even just a just an evolution of this model here, I think you did a solid job getting it going. So I would also look into your poses too, kind of see mm-hmm. that it make sure it's like anatomically correct. Kind of seems like he's on his back heels. Yeah, um, I'd probably kind of try and pose him a little bit more forward. Uh, maybe he just shot his bazooka off and he's kind yeah, of knocked really back a little that. bit. Well, and what, what I think when he's kind of off kilter is like have the shield arm over here and like he just blocked the shot and yeah. you can even work in a, a you know a big bullet uh, blowout where it knocked him back on his back foot and like I love the gunpla models because they have a lot of mo- like movability that you don't have with like a GW model yeah. or a Reaper model. You can pose this thing and put it into a situation where this is exactly what's going on. He's in the middle of battle. And I'm going to portray that. Yep. And you can do it so easily uh, where it'll feel like, oh, you know, he's on his back foot and he's got his foot kind of elevated a bit like he's, you know, kicking off. And don't be afraid to. So this is going to sound weird, but it was a really good piece of advice that I got from a, from a, um, a sculptor, Peter Soderberg. He goes, a lot of times he would, uh, he'll like, whenever he's thinking about a sculpt, he would actually pose with like a towel. And like pose in a position where he wanted to, and then put a towel like, oh, I want a loincloth, and so he'll hold it across his his um his waist, and then stand there and look in the mirror and like, okay, how is the folds of the thing looking? How does the light catch on this angle? You know, it's, it, no, it's funny what you say because it's like, how are the folds of my thing looking? <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, how are the folds looking? His wife has looked at him weird multiple times. Yeah. Said, but you know, it's smart. Uh, it's but it is. It's really yeah. smart. Like using your yourself as a okay. If I'm going to, you know, I'm how's it going to feel nights. like to be sitting on my yeah. Like that. Can yeah. I can I can I hold up a sheet? You know, how, what do my arms do when I'm on my back foot? Like yeah. how does do, how do I naturally look? And, you know, how do I make it look like a heroic pose? Yep. You know, when when suddenly I got shot and I'm on my back heel and I'm re- oh I've reused my arm. Oh, the shield's here. Okay, cool. Yeah. So now he's going to come in for the swing. You can kind of build that in. Yeah. Um. Again, everything is is how do you portray a story? How do you portray um, what you're trying to convey to your viewer yeah. uh, on the model. So, Well, Devin, awesome. looks awesome, dude. Good job. Yeah, man. This is great. This is awesome. Can't wait to see more. All right, we're into open. Open now, huh? Whoa. This is the last, last category, folks. 
Last one. We got two entries. Two whole entries. This is uh, I Need Coca-Cola from Jim. <laughs> oh. Which... There we go. Look at that. Look at that. It's such a unique. So bizarre. How did you come up with this, Jim? Like, <laughs> uh, I, I want to know where you got those Coke bottles. I think they actually sell miniature Coke bottles like that. It fits. It's like a perfect size it's for that. So owl bear. cool. Is that an owl bear? Yeah, that's an owl bear. It's angry. So it's an owl bear. It's very angry. It's very angry. Uh, right at the top, blue eyes uh, against a black and white. Black and gray and white, awesome. Yeah, it, it looks it looks great. It, it definitely shines in that regard. Um, I feel like the the snow is what I want it to be. Like it really does portray the snow well. Um, so, uh, <laughs> do you see what Luna said? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. And and an all bear comes and attacks you if you throw uh, yeah. if you throw polar bears coke. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> It's really, really bad. Um, I, I, I think it's excellent. Like everything that's placed for this is is really cool. Um, the owl bear itself feels a little, little flat, but I think that's more because it is black and white. The eyes, if you're gonna do that, the eyes and mouth really have to shine. And I think that the eyes do a good job, but the, the mouth falls a little short on that. Yeah. Where, where it's, it's the touch of color that you need to be in there you can also make it a little bit dirty it can be a little bit like you can toss in some browns and then put whites over top of it yeah for the feathers come from? i think it was just made because uh because that feels like it feels like it's just like a yeah it's heavy plastic oh is it heavy might be might be rock the other thing is too i love the placement of the coke bottle yeah like the, the, the piece that all the coke bottles are in it's like Tilted forward, so yep. you're able to see into it. Yep, yep. And there's there's it's the coke. very creative. It's very creative. Yeah, it's very unique. Um, I'm I think guessing, you're right. Yeah, the owlbear blends in way too well with yep. the with the basing and all that. I mean, you can look at the side of the base and you look at the owlbear. It's very similar. Very similar. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's all I can really come up with for it. That that it's like I feel like it needs a bit more to break up that monotony. The so I will say one thing that I really like is the placement of the snow on the Coke yes. bottles. That feels very good. Yeah. You did a great job placing the snow to feel like, oh, these are chilled. These have been out for a while. These yep. have been out for a while. You know, uh, maybe this one right here, it has no snow on it. Um, you know, the only reason there's no the other one underneath him has snow yep. on it. Yep, and that, I think that's what pulls it apart. Also, yeah. this one has a lot of snow on it, and this one doesn't. So was the owlbear pulling them out? You know, oh. and or were they scattered on the ground already? Uh, I do like that some of them feel like they're in the midst of tipping. Yeah. So, yep. uh, it, it's definitely setting a scene uh, that I that I enjoy. So, it's very cool. It's such a unique feel. It really is. It really is. So. And you, honestly, you could have went. I see where you're going with it. I'm guessing the polar bear Coca Cola thing. Mm -hmm, the bear mm -hmm. said. Um, you could have went a little bit brown, like you're saying, like yep. give the owl bear a little bit more of a brown look to it, or something to, to just kind of break it up from being white and black, yep, and gray. Yep. And and the brown, it doesn't even have to be a, a strong brown. It can just be a a, a dim and in, yep. in certain areas, like you could make it closer to the claws or you could along wash those lines. it too, maybe and see yeah. what that would do. Well, and I'm thinking of like there there's uh, plenty of animals that are in the midst of losing fur or losing yeah. feathers and molting or whatever whatever it may be. And they are transitioning into having more of white fur, um, and and so you might have some brown, or like towards spring, you might have some brown, and then that way it, you know, especially in this situation, it can it can brighten up that model so it breaks up the monotony of just black and white, yeah, or gray, gray yeah. and white. So I agree. Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Jim. This is such a unique model. I, I saw the this whole in there, time I've been like, seeing this thing. I'm like, oh, what? I love this model. This is so weird. I love it. It's so cool. Oh, it's 3D printed. Oh, pieces. wow. It's a 3D printed, huh? Unique. That's cool. The owl bear is probably uh, uh, Peter, then. Okay. All right. Next up is the last one we got. Oh, we're done now? Oh, okay. All right, cool. Dun, 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 dun. Now, 
K10, so. Kelsey has been working on Cade for as long as I have known her. I mean, every freaking Tuesday for the last, like, two months I've seen her coming in here. She weeps every time. Yeah. It'll never be done. Uh, This is... I hope you guys like moving around a lot because I'm having a good time. Um, (laughs) I'm glad it's the last model, not the first. Apparently, I can't position the camera that I've been working with her. How many monsters have you had? (laughs) Drunk on power. power. So this is this is Kate Six. This is by Kelsey. Uh, This is our last uh, our last open category. Last model. Last model. Last open. Last everything. Last time we need to hear about it. Wow, we're throwing this model away as soon as we're done. <laughs> uh, so check this thing out. This is so cool. Um, I I know that Kelsey's worked hard on this one, and it's been it's been a long time coming for it to be in the competition. I know that's gone through a lot of reiterations, a lot of learning, a lot of growth, um, and I think that it really it really shows. Um, I've told her this, and I've told people that have been looking at it too. Like it, it has a lot of texture. You can tell that the yeah. model itself right here has a good amount of texture for leather. Uh, the areas that are cloth have a lot of cloth texture. They feel like they're cloth. Areas that feel like leather should feel like leather. Um, you know, it is a 3D print, so it has a lot of these unique kind of areas where it, you could have gotten a layering. But she took the time and really. Um, really filled them in or really worked them through so that it doesn't feel like it's it's a you know it it doesn't feel like it's a 3d printed model no uh the face is really well done um the non-metallic metal i know that she's uh again reiterated it several times but just she has really perfected the craft of having a a a non-metallic metal on it to try and capture that uh metallic feel especially at scale yeah because busts are such a unique feeling model and they they act very differently than normal sized miniatures even even a bigoture like a like a, a titan or a knight or something at that scale is it those you still have to act within the within the scale of 28 millimeter yeah and this is out out the window because you have to start focusing on details textures how does the cloth feel? How does the leather feel? How does the metal feel? You know, you have to portray those things in a, uh, you know, a modeled form, a painted form, and you don't always get the, it's not always easy to do that. Now, there are a couple downsides to this model. Oh, no. It's so, all good? Dang. Kelsey likes to transport it a lot, <laughs> and in doing so, likes to wipe off some of the paint. Yeah. And I've noticed it a couple of times since she came in. And on the back side, on yep. the uh, scarf, you can see some white yep. underneath. There's a little bit of white there. Yep. I, definitely, I definitely noticed that, too. Uh, there's uh, another thing that I've noticed. So every time she brings it in, I try not to look at it because I I'd like to. The I horror. wanted to kind of see it the here. Horror. Don't um, look at it, the horror. It's a horror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's a f- the, on the breastplate, there's a lot of shadow right here, and it's a very hard line. I would mm-hmm. like to see mm-hmm. more of a gradient yeah. and less of like a sharp line right there, which yep. I know you're going for that shadow in there. Yeah, the shadow, because I'm guessing that the light's coming from up here. Yeah. And but it, yeah, it, I see what you mean. It's just that those are my two biggest gripes about it. The rest, I I, I love it. I love yeah. what you did with it. I love the non-metallic metal that you did with it. I love the the red painted stuff on there and yep. the shadow in there with the with the bends of the, I, the cloth. It looks great. I wish it was a... I'm going to be that guy. I wish it was a little bit more blended than it is right now. Sure. I wish it was a little bit more blended. It had a little bit more of a step between. Um, I think that it, it captures a really nice, uh, like, uh, cartoon anime kind of feel Yeah. to it. But uh, Kind a of little, some cell shading kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I wish it had a little bit more blending in there where it, where it had a, a bit more of that, um, bit more of that vibe. So it, it had more steps between so that you could kind of smooth it out. And that could be just as easy as taking a mid-tone, making a glaze out of it and going between the two yeah. areas and working them back and forth. Same with like the face. The face has that that same kind of suffering too, is that you, you know, it's very blocked in, which I think is almost a stylistic choice because it's universal throughout the rest of the model. Yep, it's not exactly. like it's it's not like it's just in one area and you're like, why didn't you do it? it it's universal throughout. So yeah. Um, these are more of suggestions on that. I do like that right there. Yeah, it this this so brightness good. is so well done. That's 
that's your best part right there. So, those little wraps. Though I will say that over here, it's a little bit shadowed. She did catch yep. the shadow there, but not nearly as much as I think. Exactly. It should, it should be a, a bit darker up in there. Yeah. Um, the leather in the back is awesome. You know, going little, into the cloak. It's really those, cool. Those pieces, those yep. buttons, what those those buttons. Great. Yeah. The latch, so. the buttons, the scarf. I love this like shoulder piece right here. Yeah. Looks awesome. This leather is really well done because you can tell that this has been worn. Yeah. This is this area is like worn more than the rest of it. Yeah. You know, the rest of it's buttoned down, but it's never touched. It's never bent. Yeah. And you have like, oh, he's the same, he's the same height, he's the same size. So he's constantly putting in pressure into that point. Yeah. And it's it's weathering out. I would say adding some extra little notches and weathers and things things of that nature for how leather looks um, will help this model along. Where we're adding in a little notches and, and like worn areas will help leather uh, overall because then it feels like it's oh it's been worn it's been bent um, because worn leather feels different than like fresh leather yeah so it looks really good Kelsey this looks freaking I know amazing. you've been busting your butt on it and yeah. it looks really good um, minor gripes um, like I said the you know you you carrying it around with you quite a bit uh, it, it tumbles around in the box. And I can see some of the paint rubbed off. Yep. Um, I would say in that instance, just make sure that you're you're using a foam or you're using something where it's it's secure. It's not moving around. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it will it'll do that. It'll rub. You know, you'll have rub points that will you know cause issues for you. And whoever three D printed that for you, I mean, God bless them. They did a great yeah, they job. Did a fantastic job three D I mean, printing it. Honestly, like I don't think I've ever seen a better three D print of anything in my entire life. I 3D printed that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I heard tell, I heard tell that this was the Forge's first it 3D was. printed model. It was our like tester piece, and it Oof. turned out great. Yeah, and then you're thinking, well, I could actually do this for a living, and then yeah. we see how they went. Yeah, and then it breaks on me again. <laughs> oh, it's such a nightmare. no. It's it's such a cool model, Kelsey. You did a great job. Yeah. All right. Well, that is that's it. That's it. That is it for us. Um, that is the last model that we have to judge. So thank you all for submitting your models. Uh, I'm going to be bringing up this ending here. We got everyone to check out. Uh, make sure that you check out our up and coming events. The next uh, Dwarven Axe will be August 20th and 21st. That's quarter threes. Uh, and we have a monthly painting competition going on. And that's done by uh, popular vote. So make sure that you are coming in and grabbing those. We'll be also doing the one-hour painting competitions here and there, and there'll be more information on the Discord. Yeah, those uh, are more like pop-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we get time during the weekend or something like that. Yep, but the monthly painting competition is is a $5 buy-in at the beginning of the month, and you have a month to paint it, and then you have a single vote to vote on what you like. So that's always the best part is the voting. Um Please check out our website, uh, dorvanax.com. And uh, and also, please, uh, if you could do us a favor and scan that feedback uh, form there. Um, we'll probably send it on to the Discord as well. Yeah. But uh, if you could leave us uh, some feedback, uh, good or bad, we're, we're trying to improve on this. This is the technically the second one under the moniker of Dorvanax, the third one of these kind of painting competitions. And we want to try and make it better. Yeah. And improving on each time is, is really our goal. So if you could... Uh, leave us a uh, some feedback. We'd love that. So, thank you, everybody. Thank you again, everyone. Yes, it was uh, it was fantastic, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye. Take care.